All right. Thank you all so much for tuning on in. I know it's been several months. But I want to thank you all for tuning on in. Hit that like button. FDMG is coming. FDMG is coming. FDMG is coming. It's coming. FDMG is coming. It's coming, FDMG, it's coming, 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 it's coming. FDMG is coming, thought it's personality be twerking, it's twerking. Mm. All right, all right, all right. I hope everyone's doing all right. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Are you here in the building? I don't even know if this is working. It's been about eight long months, and uh, there's been some changes uh, taking place. There's some rough times, too, I, I have to admit. I, I got to tell you, I need y'all. I need y'all. Me and my wife, we were talking about that this, that, that this morning, and uh, it's true. I need y'all. I want to thank y'all so much for tuning on in. I want to thank y'all for being patient with me over the last eight months or so uh just things you know handling stuff and handling business there's been some changes going on and we've been blessed and god is good and i hope you guys have been really really good uh umar listen i i haven't watched the umar video in over eight month, months i haven't looked into him or any of that stuff but there's two things that, that has happened over the last week uh, that really compelled me to say, you know what, let's get back into the mix. Perhaps not like back in the back in the day, but uh, enough to be consistent uh, with you all here. And shout out to the Cookie Crush chat. It's a reunion. <laughs> it's a family affair. Two, two events. One thing that took place was uh, the stuff that's taking place happening right now with DJ Envy, there's a guy named Tony the Closer who's been on that. Uh, Pocket Watching with JT's been on that. Eli with what have happened to Common Sense has been on that. But uh, the other day, and this really solidified it for me, uh, Tony the Closer interviewed one of the alleged victim's parents. And what I'm talking about is the Cesar Pena real estate scam. And if you guys don't realize this, the Breakfast Club has a long history of promoting scam artists. Think about it. Let's think about this for a moment. Caesar Painter being the preeminent example, if there is a Mark Mount Rushmore of scammers, he would be on it and he would be number one because he's gotten people for tens of millions of dollars. Some are speculating saying 80 million, 90 million dollars. Can you all hear me? Is, is this working? I ain't even got to the chance of going crypto queen. <laughs> Vix is Candace. <laughs> I ain't seen y'all so long. Uh, Caesar Pena, everything that's happening with him. But of course, uh, DJ Envy promoted him heavily. He has, from what I've learned, uh, and I could be wrong because I haven't looked too deep in this, but, but the DJ Envy was a business partner. If you're a business partner, you're profiting, you're benefiting, right? And if you're promoting to benefit, well, that's part of the scam. So the Breakfast Club has a long history. You got Cesar Pena, who's gotten people for 60, 70, 80, 90. It's probably going to get over $100 million by the time. That's crazy. How are you going to take that amount of money? I don't understand. Where does the money go? 
You give me five bucks, I know where you're going. <laughs> okay, I know exactly what it's spent, where it's gone, what day, what time. And then the, look, who else? Brother Polite. What, what's happened with him since the last time we've gotten together? He's in jail, like he should be. I warned people about him a long time ago, and pe that people got mad at me and just, you know, so upset. Same thing with Umar, though, too. They got mad at me, and look where we're at now with Umar. Still no school. I know that for a fact. I didn't even have to look into him for over eight months, and I know for a fact that they ain't no school open. Polite's pro I would estimate that Polite's gotten people probably in the four, five, maybe six million dollar range, somewhere in around there. Uh, I don't think six. I, I would say, let's say four as a conservative figure, as an estimate. He's on the Mount Rushmore of scammers promoted by the Breakfast Club. One of the preeminent scammers that the Breakfast Club has promoted over and over and over again, and he gets the most amount of views, is who? Umar Johnson. He's gotten people for at least $2 million by now, at least. At least $2 million. And we're just talking specifically dealing with the school scam up there in Wilmington, Delaware, which prior to that was a St. Paul school scam. But this goes all the way back to 2010. I'm going to show the receipt. But who promoted Umar? The Breakfast Club. And every time they would have him on, we would do a show and I would say he's going to get a cash infusion and he get that cash infusion. And then that money gets spent on the thing. And then he's getting up here looking like he done drop off a railroad track with the, 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 the I don't know what his thing is. <laughs> I'm sorry. I tell myself I ain't going to be joking around today. I ain't joking around. No more joking. All right. He just fell off the back of the train with Hobo Earl. <laughs> I'm sorry. Or, uh, let me stop. I'm taking my time too. I'm I, I it's been eight months. So we have seizure pain Peña. I got answer with the ancestor with that last name. That's why I don't like him. <laughs> you got Brother Polite. You got Umar Johnson. All promoted on the breakfast. Up, there's probably more that that uh, we. Oh, uh, uh, Jay Morrison. He done got people for what? I think it was twelve million dollars at least. He be sniffing and blinking too. All promoted by the Breakfast Club. I'm sure there's other people that too that uh, you know that I because I don't watch the Breakfast Club. Okay? I liked Angela Yee, my Asian sister, Queen. He needs to quit messing with them thugs. That's a problem. Because the guys say, if I was single, we could we could have been fine. But you want to, you you know. Remember, she left. She stopped coming on the show when Umar would come up there. She wouldn't come on. Because she knew that he she he was shady. And he was talking mess about Asian. She's part Asian. He ain't got no kind of Umar never had any sensibilities about him to think, wait a minute, maybe I shouldn't be saying this on the Breakfast Club because one of the hosts is part Asian. I'm talking all this mess about Chinese people. Then, then you notice after they had him on a couple of times, she stopped coming up. Then when I remember one time he was on there, where's Angela Yee? Oh, well, she had some. No, she ain't dealing with you. Big Bubba. <laughs> Let me stop. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. She didn't want to deal with that. She has more ethics than uh DJ Envy and uh Charlemagne. We know that for, for a fact. Look, look at boy, we ain't even got to get into that. But but you see how these things turn out. The point is that all of these scammers were promoted by the Breakfast Club. So there's been major fallout dealing with DJ Envy because this guy, Caesar Pinion, got people for almost a hundred million dollars. That's crazy. Looking looking just about as goofy as a goofball. I was <laughs> up here just like a like he's 15. He about five five. I don't know. I get this. This guy, he admitted that he learns real estate. Then we're gonna we're gonna get to uh Tony to close in just a moment. He admits live on air that he's a, he's a felon. It's on it's on the Breakfast Club. I'm gonna bring this around too. It, it's, it, he's on the Breakfast Club and he admits that he's a felon and that he learned 
how to do real estate while in prison. Someone in prison showed him how to do real estate. Probably was Jay Morrison. I don't understand what it is that people, what black folk don't, why are you giving money to criminals? Zaza Ali. Now, if they're reformed, they're reformed. But if they're not, they're going to get right back up here on the Internet streets and keep on scamming. Like that one lady over there selling prayer claws. What's her name? She uh, she used to uh, she be, hey, family. Coogee Chagalia. Habari Ghani. Hot sauce and corn chips, family. I can't remember her name right now. Don't give your money to these people. So the question becomes, why did people send Caesar Pena, Pena, uh, uh, tens of millions of dollars, close to $100 million? Yeah, Vicky Dillard, that's her name. And I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean or nothing. I'm, I'm stating facts. She, she's, she's a criminal. Saz Ali is too. Fraudsters, okay? And because they can't, Make it in the real world because they got that criminal record. They can't go get a regular old job. What they do is they get onto these internet streets, and what do they do? They get to scamming. See your opinion. What would he have done if if he wasn't getting on the Breakfast Club? His office is right next to DJ MV. At a certain point, they're business partners because what 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 uh, DJ MV would do is say, "Listen, I'm gonna blow y'all up. I'm gonna promote you. But can I get a cut?" And in my opinion, his cut is his percentage into that so-called company. But I want to ask the question, who in their right mind would give 50,000, 60,000, 100,000, 500,000, 400,000, a million dollars to Caesar Pena, who's a criminal? Unless they've been manipulated. They've been conned. See, con, a con man is a confidence man. That confidence man has taken your confidence and you believe in him. Did they believe in, in Caesar Pena? No, goofball, look at him. Look like he just got off the school bus. <laughs> Let me stop. So why they give him the money? Well, they gave him the money because, senior, uh, because DJ Envy promoted him. And that opens up a whole new audience for Caesar Pena to scam, just like they did with Umar Johnson. Much there's been so much going on since the last time we got, but that's the that's the Mount uh, Mount Rushmore on there right there. Senior Pena, he's at the top at this point. He just didn't get black people. He got everybody. He just, he, you know, Latinos, give me the dinero. Necesitamos tu dinero. Apurate. Run in donation, my friend. <laughs> so that's one of the events that took place because they got, they said, you know, I got to get back into this because Tony the Closer has been on Cesar Pena and, and DJ NB and Tragically, one of the alleged victims, I think he, I'm gonna, off the top of my head, uh, one of the alleged victims has passed away and his father's now trying to get justice. And I believe the, the alleged victim sent, say, sent the Caesar Fina some, somewhere between two hundred and three hundred fifty thousand dollars something like that. But he has children, young children. And so the father's now take care of the children. And Tony Closer interviewed this man a couple of days ago. I was at work and I was sitting in, I was having my lunch and I was sitting in my car and I just, it brought me to tears. Anyone see that by the way? I mean, Tony the Closer was crying, but when I see people in pain like that, I lose it. That's why I don't like going to funerals and I like that because I can't, I can't control myself. I, I can go to a funeral with someone I don't know and just because I see people crying and so I lose it. It had me in tears. Just to say, anyone in, in here, 325,000. Yeah, uh, thanks, Randy. I'm going to get into the chat room in just a minute. We're we going to take our time. But the brother who sent them the money had two kids, and he passed away tragically in a car accident. 
and his father's trying to get justice and his father is torn up about it and he talks about it and it is one of the saddest things that i've ever seen online i've seen some sad some some sad stuff online and see i thought about it and i said to myself you know that's why i was trying to warn people about umar for many years but at a certain point, I, I, just, I had to step away, get clear perspective, had to focus on some other things and, and get things going in a different direction, as you all can see behind me. And it's not a green screen. You know, some people had a green screen, they put things in the back. But I saw that video and I said, uh, that's what it's really all about. That's really what this has, has been about. And uh, that's one of the events that has taken place more recently. They said, you know, go ahead. And that was confirmation. I said, because I've been thinking about it before. I said, go ahead and, and do this. Um, but the other thing is that the what I would call the network that has been set up online, where these types of people, Cesar Pena, Umar Johnson, Jay Morrison, et cetera, where they're given platforms to open them up to more victims, primarily in the black African-American community. You see it so, I, I start to see it so clearly. And there's people still getting these, giving these people platforms. Same thing with Jay Morris. I saw he was, he was this goofy, uh, he was given a, a preacher ceremony and he gets on his knees and I said, you need to get, stop, don't do that. How, how low can you sink? Now you got to go to doing that to the God. Don't don't do that. Have some respect. That's the other thing that they, they, they have no conscience about them. Umar, no conscience because you can't do this for 13 years and keep doing it and still talking about run donations and send me the cash apps and the PayPal and the Queens and the pina colada and the hot fudge. I need the five pie pick of the pies and all. You can't do that. For, for, for 13 years and be conscious about what you're doing to the point where you can say ethically or morally that is, you know, something, something wrong. You know, you, there's something wrong with you. Jay Morris, did he? Now he up here, he was playing with people's money to the tune of $12 million and tricked it off. He done benefited himself. You got, I don't know if y'all want to do a video on this thing. That's what I want to do. We might have to just expand it instead of doing just while we get into Jay Morris and some of these other clowns. But Jay Morrison, because there was this other brother online that's been on him who was one of his primary donors that go back from like the beginning, a very intelligent, very bright young man, too. And he was doing these videos and he uh, Jay Morrison sent him a cease and desist. But what he did was because of what this young man was talking about, showing receipts. Anybody know what this young man's name is? Post in the chat. I'll say it. So people go check him out. Preemptively, well, it's not even preemptively. It was a it was a. PR move on Jay Morrison's part. He had to come out and start spilling the beans about what he's been, some of the things that he's been doing with this money. Looking all buggy eyed and he's such a liar too. He just be getting on the microphone and yeah, family, we and he keep running his mouth. Like, what are you talking about, Craig? Don't even make no sense. <laughs> but he came up big time. He done tipped that, tricked that money off. He done got the laddies. So I'm going to give y'all the exclusive price. I'm going to give 25 acres. I'm going to give you three. It, even though it's your money, I'm going to buy it, but my family going to own the property, my family going to own the house, but it's going to benefit y'all So because when you got the property rights and the exclusive, but you're going to have to pay for the property. You're going to have to pay to, to, to build on that property. Who are you going to pay? You're going to have to pay him. He took y'all money to buy some land, give you some chunk change. <laughs> it's in his name now. And then he's going to say, you can, you can build on it now. We're going to do another crowdfunding thing. And then you send your money and then we're going to use that to build it up, family. But you're going to have to pay me because I'm going to be the owner. He didn't say that, but that's really what this is. The, 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 the machinings that have to take place in a person's mind to get to, to thinking like that, it's called criminal mindedness. Umar Johnson. And you don't have to have a criminal record to have be criminal minded either. And it don't mean that if you have a criminal record that you're going to be criminal minded the rest of your life either. That's not what I'm saying. But in these case instances, all these individuals. But to concoct that type of... But anyway, he, he comes out and he tries to... We're going to get to Umar this moment, but he tries to kind of explain all of this away, but it really doesn't make any sense.
Anyone put that brother's name in here? And then let me get to some of these super chats. And then we we gonna we gonna get into this. Julian Gordon is 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 the young man's name. Go check him out. He's on on YouTube. I, I can't remember what his YouTube page is is called. Maybe Julian Gordon. Very bright, very highly intelligent, and he has his receipts and what he shares. And once that got out, that's when Jay said, "Hold on, let me." I got to do something. So he has his town hall meeting and he's explaining this stuff away, trying to explain it. But I'm sitting back like you ain't fooling nobody but the dummies. Any rational thinking person, intelligent person says, no, this, what are you talking about, Craig? This is nothing more. You just building upon the scam. That's all. And see, he's desperate because that money's running out. So at this point, he has to figure out something. So what he do is say, okay, but we're gonna have to. It's crash and burn. We got to get as much money into my hands, whether that is in property, and whether that is in cash. We know about the properties though, because there's receipts on that. That he, he he says his family owns with other people's money, but the fund itself, it's it. It's, it's, remember, he said something. It's less than a half a million. So you go from twelve million to less than a half a million. I mean, that could be forty thousand dollars left in that bad boy. But what he did, recognizing that this particular scam, the timeline on this was running out, he had to do something. So what he did was he made sure that he put himself in a position wherein properties were in his name or, or land was in his name and his family benefited. So that once the once the uh, the fund becomes bankrupt, well, he can still have he can still have something to hold on to. So well, he's something else. Julian Gordon, by the way, went to and I wanted to do a review of that. But see, if I do it, I know, Jay, you probably end up sent, trying to send me a cease and desist letter, but I don't really give it. I don't care, bro. I really don't care because you're going to end up in jail eventually. Cesar Pena, okay? okay? They got him because he's up there close to 100 million. Now, you're at 12 right now. Mm -hmm. But if enough people put in that paperwork on you, you're going to end right back up where you was before. And maybe this time you'll get some kind of, but see, he, you ain't, you ain't even thinking right. Cause you're, I can tell how you think you're criminal, you're criminal minded. And then you will justify your criminality. Well, I'm trying to do this, start yelling. And I'm no, this is for the family, family. <laughs> no, no, Kang. I'm, I'm not trying to scam you. I'm not. I just didn't know what I was doing. Ignorance is not an excuse because in the beginning you was talking like you was big papa. Let me stop. Let me stop. This ain't about Jay Morris. I'm just giving y'all another example. Jay Morris is definitely on, on, on the, uh, the the Mount Rushmore of scammers in the black community. He's definitely up there. So real quick, the Tony DeCloser, I saw that video and, and everything that's been going on with, with Cesar Pena uh, and just looking at the network that promote these different individuals like Jay Morris and, and, and uh, uh, at a point, Zaza Ali. Um, people like Umar Johnson, et cetera, and recognizing that uh, what they're really doing is they're promoting these scammers and putting more people in harm's way. And you can look at what's taking place with the Breakfast Club. But see, the truth is that this has been going on for years. All right. So today, uh, well, like we got already have 215 people in the building. If you don't have the like button, I appreciate it. Okay. What I like to do today is is I want to get to kind of get an idea of where Umar is at with this school scam. Now it's been going on since they all, as most of y'all know, since 2010. I'm going to give provide a receipt to that. But what I want to get to uh, tonight or today, this evening, is I want to get to this the one of the more recent videos, and, and there's a couple people who sent them to sent it to me. And I said this might be a good time to, to get back into the mix. Uh, I want to get into this video where Umar's talking about this the status, I guess you can say, of the renovations. Okay, remember there were three phases. Okay? There was acquisition, there was uh renovations, or something he called also called a restoration, and then there's operations. All right. So what I like to do in this video is kind of uh, uh put a little bit of a timeline together, then we're gonna look at a couple of videos. Uh, and then uh, we'll be done for today. And if this goes well, then you guys, if you guys want to, I do have some time in the next couple of days. We can come back tomorrow if, if we need to do part two on this or we can do a different video. People have been telling me, let's do the video about him being on the plane or something when he was flying with the snow bunny situation. I don't know. Uh, we can do that as well. All right. 
let me get into the chat room give some shout outs and, and thank people as well black anonymous is in the but what's happening it says did you see where e and j where uh, e and j went up to f you know what i i've been in communication with e and j and i have the video and they gave me permission to play it to this evening so if, if y'all haven't seen it then i meant to i meant to contact them today and, and tell them if they want to come on to the show I could, if, if they happen to come up here today y'all let me know and, and then i can i can email them a link and we can, i can get them up on here uh but we'll we'll play that uh today as well okay uh thanks again uh black and Orange. thanks for being here uh brian tisdale's in the building uh, as well thanks for being here bro uh, Sector J says J for over 12 million. Lennon, uh, Lennon got over 12k. What's the difference? Well, the difference is that all the money that I collected went towards what I said that it was that I collected the money for. And I didn't make promises to people like that I was going to give them a 30% return on a donation, just like now these days. Uh, when people send money, it's not like I'm telling them I'm promising them anything. Uh, so yeah, there is a, a huge difference. Okay. Um, another way you can look at this, too, is that Jay Morrison, uh, we're talking $12 million roughly over the last, I don't even know what, it's been about six years. It's been about six years. And none of the money has gone towards what he said he was going to do with the money. You can't say that with me. Furthermore, I haven't asked uh, for uh, money from anyone for like a half a decade. See, it's one thing if you ask for money when you're in dire straits and you need help. That's fine. It's another thing where you ask for money and you're just trying to get money and you promise people certain things based on the money that they send you, but you never deliver on that. That's that's another one of the differences. OK. All right. Uh, Varobis says, Lennon, have you been watching the downfall of young Pharaoh? That is the worst fall from grace that I've seen in a long time. He's homeless now. Wow. I didn't know that he was homeless. But, yeah, I've been I've been watching uh, for premium for premium or, or members here on my YouTube page. I've talked about young Pharaoh, And I remember when I first started to notice uh, things really going uh, south from here, uh, south for, for him. There was a whole situation with, with gunplay and his one of his baby mamas and the children inside of the apartment when he, you know, all this stuff he shot up to something like it was crazy. But the thing is that even back then, this was years ago, I was telling people that the trajectory and see, I, I have uh, sympathy for him because I know I know where he's what he's gone through, especially because he's he went through the conspiracy theory paradigm and that will mess you up. It'll mess you up mentally and emotionally. And it messed me up mentally and emotionally. I've, I've talked and I've spoken openly about that. It messed me up, lost my mind in that mess. So I can sympathize and empathize with him because and he's so he's still relatively young and I still believe that he can get things turned around just like to a degree. I've kind of gotten things turned around, you see. It, it, but it's sad because if you look at look at the trajectory, it wasn't that long ago where he was doing live streams on YouTube and he was getting I mean, it was crazy numbers. I mean, he, he was getting like 7,000, 10,000, 15,000 people inside of his his chat room during live streams and the videos would get like 100,000 views, that type of thing. But to see where he's at now, I didn't know that he was homeless, but I can tell that he was going in that direction. You know, I pray, I've prayed for that young man. You know, I pray, I've prayed for him. Okay, thank you for Super Chat. If y'all don't mind, let me get to all of the, uh, let me get to all of the, um, the Super Chats, and then we'll get to the video uh, here. We also have some new members. Big Audius in the building uh, became a member today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. If you all want to join memberships, I'll, I'm getting back into the swing of doing those uh, uh, member videos as well. Uh, please go ahead and subscribe. You can join. There's a join button below this video. Texas Diva, how's it going? Uh, thanks for becoming a member. And 78 Vet says, welcome back, Lynn. Thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat. I hope you've been doing all right. Okay. I hope everything's been well. All right. I appreciate it. Uh, viral bit, uh, bits. It's a member comment says, I'm so glad to see you, Lennon, and congrats on the new house. Uh, you have gotten a degree and moved before Umar has opened the trap banner. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. Um, and just to piggyback on some of the things that I've said in, uh, uh, pre earlier, um, I'm not happy. And I, I mean, I, I'm going to tell you, also, even this morning, I was apologizing to my wife about um, just not having my, my stuff together uh, in life to where yeah, I did. I, I I had to ask for donations for different things and not just for projects, 
you know, and all the projects that I asked money for, I did I actually completed those projects, but also for personal stuff too, at a certain point in my life, not proud about it. In fact, I have a lot of shame about that too. But one thing that you, that, that, uh, you know, you, you have to, everyone, you have to come to grips with in life is that ultimately you have to stand on your two feet and you have to make decisions and you have to do things differently and you have to put in the hard, it took a lot of work to get that degree. Got to pick up a better job. I'm still not happy with that job. I want to, I'm, you know, you know, I, I, I want to get into it. Uh, my job, I'm dealing with computers every single day, but it's, it's, it, it's a lot better than the job that I had before, but it's not what, I want in terms of career path. But the point is that I went through that process. And during that process, did I ask for anyone for any money? No. No. Uh, we're in a different place these days. Literally and figuratively. Did I ask any money, uh, people for money for that? No. So I, th I think we need to be clear about that. Uh, the measure of a man is not simply where he's been. I think you do have to look at that too, but it's also the progressions that he's been able to make in life. And even though I have, still have a long way to go, uh, I'm, I'm happy and I have a lot of regrets and a, and a, a lot of uh, guilt, you know, about like what I've, you know, at certain points, how we were living as a family, all that type of stuff. I, I do. I, 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 again, like I said this morning, I asked my wife, I said, if you can forgive me, she says, I forgive you. I said, yeah, you know, but it's just been hard thinking about that you know, and trying to figure out why it was that I was where I was. And it's clearer to me why these days, but it's, it wasn't clear to me during at that time period. The difference is, is that I've, I've taken a proactive approach to getting my life turned around uh, and being a better service to my family. That's what, what all this has been about. So I want us to be clear about that too. Uh, you know, I picked up a degree uh, and I, I did it before we want to open up these trap bandos. Uh, but there's other uh, uh, changes that I, that uh, and maneuver maneuverings, if you will, that I've engaged in uh, to better myself. But that's quite different than looking at Jay Morris and collecting twelve million dollars. And not benefiting anyone but himself. And see, the crazy part about it, if you really look at it, it's not as if him doing those things elevated him. And he hasn't elevated himself. Same thing with Umar. All of this stuff dealing with the school scam, if we looked at it and said, well, if we go back 10 years ago and compare it to where Umar Johnson is at today, has it really benefited him? Has he really progressed in life? And the answer is no. So that's the huge difference. See? And it doesn't matter who you look at, you know, because there, there are people who collect money for different things. And, and like I said, I, I haven't asked for a dime. It's been like over five, just like a half decade. Okay, now I don't plan on asking for no money either. But if people want to send a super chat here or cash up PayPal, that's fine. I'm just not going to ask for it. Okay, but that's a very different orientation than, uh, you know, towards support than someone like Umar, who has been doing this now for 13 years and not one black boy has been educated inside of his so called school. Okay, all right. Thanks for our viral bits for being a member. I appreciate it. What's up, uh, Brian? I appreciate y'all you being here. What's up, OG? <laughs> Do I need to turn on some more lights? Y'all let me know too, because this is my first time live streaming here. Uh, my my daughters when they look out their window, there it's like a there's a beautiful lake. I say God is good. But faith without works. Okay. So people, y'all can criticize me and, and hold on to my path, but I can't hold on to it. I can't. I had to get up off of my, my knees and I had to get busy and I worked my ass off to get to where we're at today. So yeah, give me the criticism. Yeah, I get it. But you also want to give me some, some respect too. Put some respect on my name. Hmm? All right. Uh, Dion, what's up, man? Says, good to see you again, Lennon. I'm taking my cybersecurity plus certificate. <laughs> Boy, you're making me feel bad because I know I need to myself. <laughs> Test one week from the day. We work and thank, thank for your uh, help again. You're so welcome, bro. You're so welcome. Hey, want to give a shout out to Dion. You know, I, I, I got certifications I need to do. I've just been so busy with other stuff, man. I, but I got to do it. <laughs> you did it before I did. You know, that's a shame. <laughs> 
but at least you get the dunk and update us too. Once you get it and, and you pass, let us know and, and we'll uh, we'll all congratulate you. I'm, that makes me very happy to hear, bro. Just just stay on the path. All right. And thanks for the super chat, Dion. I appreciate it. Uh, Viral Bits, it doesn't have a message. It's, it's it just uh, there's a super chat. Thank you so much, uh, Viral Bits. I appreciate it. Uh, on Trey says, Lennon, you're correct. They all have the same pattern, but, and then it cuts off. I don't see the rest of it. Andre, if, if you want, you can just type it in the chat room and I'll, I'll uh, see if I can, I can see the rest of your, um, your message and I'll read it here. Uh, thank you for the super chat again. Enterprise says, Lino, are you back for good? Umar still school. Yeah, allegedly. I, I don't know where everything is at. We're going to get into the video shortly. How are we doing on time? We're already 35 minutes. Man, this is going by so quick already. I don't forgot. I ain't done this in so long. <laughs> Thanks, Enterprise Entertainment, for the super chat. And also, Vixa says, welcome back, Leonor. We've missed you. Shout out to the cookie crush. Yeah, I miss y'all, too. I need y'all. I, I have to. I must admit. So thank y'all so much for tuning on in here tonight. Thanks for the super chat, Vixa. I appreciate it. Geo Scott says, I, I think some of us are so desperate for leadership that we fall for any scammer. I think that's part of it, too. Because because the idea is with, with uh, people like uh, uh, Jay Morris and Umar Johnson, Cesar, Cesar Pena, uh, or any of the, the people that we've mentioned uh, thus far, they always make uh, promises. And the thing is that if you collect money, you make a promise and then you fulfill your obligation. See, that's one of the criticisms that people have about uh, Tariq Nasheed is they say, no, he's a scammer. But the thing is that from what I've seen, he's always delivered on what he said. Now, it may not be what exactly he said. You know, for instance, he said the museum was going to be like two stories and it was going to have two floors and it was going to all of this. It was kind of like grandiose, but he ultimately getting a smaller, much smaller venue building in this one floor. I, I get people's criticisms of that. But at the end of the day, he did produce what he said he was going to produce, not to the same scale that he said he was going to do it. But he did. Same thing when he collected money for uh, his documentaries. He always produced the documentaries. of. Uh, again, people could say, well, he's collecting more money than he needed. Well, perhaps. But if people want to give him the money, that's fine. The thing is that he all he has from what I've seen, he's produced what he's he's uh, said he was going to produce. OK, I've, I've collected money for a documentary. Uh, I'll, I'll finish the documentary. Okay, It took a lot longer than what I had, had, had hoped. It took a lot more money. By the time I got uh, close to being done with it, I was like, I can't wait to just be done with this, you know. Uh, but I got it done. See, but the difference is, is that uh, when you're dealing with someone like Umar, he's promised to open up a school for over. 13 years now. I'm going I'm to I'm show the receipt in just a moment. And there's still no school. Uh, Jay Morrison was talking about you're going to have a certain amount uh, of dividend paid out or, or, and, and you're going to have a certain uh, return on investment. None of that happened. And, and at this point, the fund has gone from 12, over uh, $12 million all the way down to less than half a million dollars in a number of, what, four or five years or something like that. So what he said that he was going to do, he did not do. Obviously, with says opinion, the outlandish what he was telling people i don't understand why people would believe that the type of roi that people are getting in a short period of time period time period it's just going to be that, that quick of a turnaround and people believe that but why because dj Embry promoted that's why but they always make a promise but then they don't fulfill what their their promise was okay now i can say uh, from back in the day the money that i collected went towards what i said it was gonna uh, was supposed to go to and i uh, go towards and i fulfilled those obligations to people Right, like with the documentary, et cetera. Uh, the documentary is here. There's a YouTube version here, too, uh, by the way. It's, it's Beyond Gangster Blackface, a critical analysis of gangster rap. But this stuff goes back. Uh, that, I think I started that project like seven, eight years ago. OK, uh, thanks for the Super Chat. Your scholar Viral Bits says, Lennon, have you been watching the downfall? Oh, yeah, okay, I already got that one. Uh, Brother Jose is in the building. <laughs> What's up, Brother Jose? Let me do this real quick. We got to get busy now. We already have 30 minutes. Have 800 people in the building. Go ahead the like button. Lucy Goosey's in the building. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Thanks for the super chat. Do I need to turn on? It looks kind of dark on here. I mean, it kind of looks kind of cool. Y'all let me know if I need to turn on some more lights because I can't. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nikki says, how come you don't do gifted memberships? It would help you gain more people to join. Just Oh, I don't even know about that. I've heard about that. I'll look into that, Nikki. Okay. And I think that's where like other people who are already members can gift a membership to someone else in the chat room, something like that. I'll look into it. Okay, Nikki, thanks so much for mentioning it. Matter of fact, I'll, let me go ahead and, and write that down. Gifting membership. And and uh, I know that on, uh, I think it's Tasha K. She, that, that I've seen people do that on her show. I think it was her show. Uh, thanks, Nikki, for Super Chat. 
Eric says, uh, DJ Envy uh, about to be fired. I think so, too. I think so. Umar still sniffing and blinking. Zaza Ali don't know what's going on with <laughs> I don't know either. And Young Pharaoh is homeless. I don't know about it. Someone said that he's homeless. Now, that's sad. If, if it's true. I don't know. You know, and I've, had, I've like I said before, I've prayed for that young man. I have because he's still relatively young. Get things turned around in life. You can. At least you can get the, the process started. It's never too late. Uh, and, and, you know, you may have been in a bad spot. I'm, I'm a perfect example of that. But you can claw your way out of things. You know, and you get things turned around, you know. And I, I think I, I think and I've always felt that young Pharaoh could do that. He's got to get the right type of help. He got to get the right type of people around him. Uh, and if he is homeless, you know, that it's just it's it's sad. It really is. Uh, but in terms of DJ Envy, I think he will get fired you know, just because of the, the negative press, because more as more news uh, network or a, uh, news outlets starts picking this up because there's been all these news reports and stuff. Uh, as more uh, and more cases are filed against Caesar Pena, and who knows, they it's funny flipping in Jay, they might flip on each other, and then now you got them going. Okay, ain't no telling where this could be. I don't think DJ Envy gonna end up in jail though. Uh, I think Caesar will, uh, but uh, I think inevitably he will be fired. But maybe not though, you know, because it's not as if iHeartRadio is. You know, it's not like they have people on there that are of high ethic and morals anyway. Y'all catch my drift, right? And I'm referring to uh, uh, Charlemagne. All right, thanks, Eric. Uh, Miss Con, what's up, man? Says Lenor, be careful. Caesar's brother, Luis Luchi Pina, is threatening to kill people on. <laughs> is he really? <laughs> is he really? Is his name Luchi? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> that ain't gonna help nothing. Nut. <laughs> it reminds me of Umar and his Goonie Goons. You remember his Goonie Goons? <laughs> All right. Thanks for the super chat, Miss Contra. What are your thoughts on Keith D's arrest? Man, I mean, it's just it's self snitching. That's all that was. He had been snitching on himself for so long. But I thought about this, Miss Contra. I, I thought about this that sometimes when people do things and they get away with it, they they want credit. But see, if in getting credit, they have to self expose. It reminds me of this movie called Wag the Dog, and it's a really good movie. One of my favorite movies, especially when I was in the conspiracy theory. There. I'm telling you, is it too? I mean, it looks nice. Damn, it looks look nice up in here. I said, I'll turn on some more lights. <laughs> it's a long ways away from six, seven years ago. Thank God. God is good. <laughs> uh, there's a movie called Wag the Dog, and I, I, I think... Uh, not Robert De Niro. Who's the other guy? I can't think of his name, but he's, he's in that movie. But it's about uh, media manipulation, and there's this one guy who basically he, it's gets into the political arena and all the stuff that's taking place politically, you know, around the world and different things. But his job is as a movie producer to create this script that is played out uh, through mass media to, for people to buy into to kind of divert attention away from certain things. And this really, really good. But at the tour, and I want to give the movie away, but at towards the end of the movie, the guy that does all of this scheming and they, they put together all of this propaganda and stuff. And he's supposed going into it. He's not supposed to tell anyone that he's part of this or that this is all fake or any of that stuff. But at towards the end, his ego gets so heavy that he feels as if he he deserves credit and he needs people to know that he's the one. He's the mastermind. I mean, I'm not going to say nothing else about it. But that's no different than than Keith D getting up on there and telling all this business for all these years. And he kept running his mouth and running his mouth. And he thought that he was exempt from getting from prosecution. And at a certain point, they pulled up on him and we'll see where it goes from there. Just running his mouth. But I think he wanted credit. That's that's what I thought. And his ego. He wanted he wanted credit. Uh, uh, Ty Boogie says DJ Envy just imploded the scammers platform, aka the Breakfast Club. iHeartRadio has instructed the staff, to, uh, the staff to avoid the likes of Umar Johnson and only have vetted guests. Well, if that is true, that would be great. But it should have been done a long time, Ty Boogie, because they've had so many people up on there, including Umar Johnson. Scammers. And a lot of the people, they, they knew. They knew that they weren't, but they would get the views. Umar gets the most amount of views on there. That's why they had him up there. But see, what it did was it exposed more people to his school scam. He's collected millions of dollars at this point. But I, I'm hoping that uh, this, is, this is the case, that the, 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 uh, you know, the 
the, the people who are running our iHeart Radio saying, hey, wait a minute, from now on, you guys are going to have to do, do this. Who knows what's going to happen to DJ Envy, though? They may end up firing him. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, it's it's fascinating everything that's taken place over the last eight months. Cause I haven't been live streaming on any of this stuff for about eight months, but all the different things that have happened, you know, with all this. Look, look at uh, uh, Polite. He was on the Breakfast Club. Look at what's happened with him. See? Mix your smile says, We missed you, Lenore, in the Cookie Crush chat room. I heard Brother Jose lost money. <laughs> he probably did because you know, Caesar was, he was trying to get the Latinos. He said, well, I get some of that black money too, but I want that Latino money, family. The carne con huevos. We need that money, my friend. <laughs> he was getting that money. I feel bad too. I feel bad for the Latinos. They got, they got, got. But they wouldn't have gotten got if it wasn't for DJ Envy. Thanks, Mistress Monica. How's it going, Pam? Says, welcome back. Thank you so much, uh, Pam, for the super chat. Thanks everyone for the super chat. And also thanks for uh, and welcome back as well. Okay, I appreciate it. Can we got it? We got to get into it. Let me real quick, real quick. Uh, honeycomb sent in a super sticky. Thank you so much. Big brother Barry says, Hey Lennon, sorry I'm late. Just uh, watched all oh, they lost. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't I don't watch baseball though. The basketball season starts tomorrow. Okay, I'm, I'm waiting for it. the Lakers. They playing the Nuggets, so I got to get, I got to be on there to watch. I may live stream instead. We're gonna have to wait and see. Okay, we have 45 minutes. We're doing good. We almost had 900 uh, views, which is good because for the first time getting back, I appreciate everybody. Uh, if y'all hit the like button, I appreciate that. Uh, thanks, Barry. I appreciate it. All right, so the Phillies lost. Yeah, uh, I remember I used to uh, the Phillies back, way back in the day. They had a one guy uh, I can't remember his name right now, but he used to hit home runs uh, a lot. But he used to strike out all the time. <laughs> He's like one of the, the all time strikeout leaders. I can't remember his name right. It was a brother too. Thanks, Barry. Tata, how's it going? Tata says, "Did you see the Indeed open job post for the Breakfast Club co-host? Uh, it looked real, but it's probably a meme." No, I did. I've heard people talk about that, but the thing is that it it may have been for a co-host because they were trying to find a third co-host since Angela Lee, uh, Yee left. So it might have been for that. But we'll just have to wait, uh, wait and see, Tata. I think, uh, uh, in my opinion, if this really gets to the point where any charges are brought to DJ Envy. That they're going to end up uh, firing him. That's what I would think is going to happen. And who knows how deep this goes? I think that they we're just scratching the surface. Because every time uh, I look into this, there's uh, uh, Tony the Closer. He's been reporting on this. Uh, every time I, I, I go over to his Instagram or something, he'll have a new person up there that's that you know they allegedly uh, was scammed by season. We're not talking about a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or five thousand dollars. We're talking about people giving up sixty. 70, 80, a hundred thousand dollars, two hundred fifty thousand dollars, five hundred thousand dollars. So who knows how deep this goes? And the idea that DJ didn't know any of this, I I highly doubt that. And the reason why is because if you're a business partner, allegedly, you're gonna know what kind of money is coming in. In fact, someone today posted a video where they show a video of DJ Envy talking about the money that he's collected and he's in there and he has and he's trying you know he it's a damn shame i don't get that i really don't get that what what, what it has to be greed it, it, there, there's no other explanation in my mind it, when is enough enough caesar Payne, if you call you don't know, taking them close to 100 million dollars i mean i figured out that me and uh listen if, if 50 bucks. Shit. If you don't, if you don't need that, wait, what is that? I don't get it. And with DJ Envy and, and what, with his platform and everything that he had, you would think that that would have been enough. I just don't get that. I just don't get it. So we're gonna have to wait and see, Tata. We it ain't no telling where this where this because I think this is just scratching the surface right now. There's no telling where this will end up. And who else may be brought into the loop in all of this? There's no telling. Pocket watching with JT Walk. Man, I, I gotta tell you something, man. What you have accomplished on your channel in such a short period of time is admirable i don't think you realize it because you're relatively new here on youtube but as someone who's been on youtube for a very long time 
what you have achieved and accomplished on your channel, it is astounding. So keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> I mean, there's people who now who I mean, I've seen this uh, people. There's this one guy. I can't remember his name right now. He's a white guy. He he has a I don't know, he has a gang of, of subscribers. Uh, it's over 100,000. I think it's I don't know. It's it's, it's a lot. And he he does videos. He's taught and he's talked about uh, Jay Morrison. Uh, he's talked about different people, but and he's talked about the DJ Envy thing, too. But he was talking uh, about the work that you've done and also the work. And I haven't had time. I haven't had time to watch people's. Uh, it's just my life has been a lot different uh, over the last couple of years, especially once I started school. But at a certain point uh, in February, I, I had to take a step back. But if you all remember going back to last year, I, I had taken a break around this time last year. If you guys remember. So I haven't really been online. I haven't been watching people's stuff, but I, I was watching his video and he, he was talking about you and uh, 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 Eli. And I, me and Eli, we go back uh, for, 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 for some years now. And then I went over to your page and I saw the numbers and I saw the engagement and I said, wow. So congratulations, man. Just keep it up. Keep doing what you're doing. All right. And thanks for Super Chat as well. Uh, and, uh, M Imja, Umar Johnson is allegedly dead. <laughs> Don't say that. No, no. Uh, so people told me about that. I, I I think the I, back in February, I think I don't know, and and I don't I didn't know who she was or nothing like that. And I looked it up, and I said, "Oh my goodness, we can't, we got to get Umar Queen. Can we get Umar Queen? <laughs> we got to get Umar Queen, okay? That's who behind him. My good, I said, Lord Jesus. All right, <laughs> okay. Uh, have I gotten to all the super chats? I think I've got to all. If I missed any, I'm gonna get back into the the. Uh, the regular chat room and I'll scroll up and I'll, I'll see because there's a, been a whole lot of comments that I've missed. There are like 300 comments. Um, thanks again, uh, MJ, for the super chat. And everyone else who sent the super chat, thanks for all the new members as well. Okay, so let's get into the, get into the show. <laughs> let's get into it uh, now. What I like to start with, and I have these in order. Instead of going back to watch the videos and bring it forward, I, and we're going to specifically be dealing with uh, the, the school and the so-called progress or lack thereof 13 years later dealing with FDMG. All right. And here is the thumbnail for today's live stream 13 years later. And it has been 13 years, still no school. The school is actually 10 years late. And I'm going to show you all that right here. So for many uh, people, and there's people who still don't know about this, but here is the receipt. This is from Umar's original Facebook page. Uh, this Facebook page is still up. It's not active. Uh, the only difference is that the the thumb, not the thumbnail, I guess, you or, or the, is that the, the, the thumbnail for his, his little graphic over there? That has changed. But other than that, I don't think he's actively on this, but it was uh, Umar Abdullah Johnson. And this goes back to January 6, 2010. I want y'all to think about this. January 6, 2010, that's 13 years ago. It says promises in 2010 to begin laying the groundwork for the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Pan-African School for Black Boys specializing in learning disabilities and disruptive behavior disorders. This will be a private school. And yes, you will pay in order for your son to attend. Look at what it says here next. It says the grand opening is September 11, 2013. We are now in October of 2023. The school itself is a decade late and he's still collecting money for it y'all see the difference now if he collected money and he made the promise that the school was going to open in 2013 and then the school opened in 2013 fine maybe the school's not as what what people thought it would be or what he promised but at least something open okay fine maybe he needs a cut an extra year maybe two okay fine but a decade nah you see the difference? If I say I'm gonna I'm gonna do a documentary and I, I start raising funds for the documentary, I get into the process, I set up another uh, uh, GoFundMe and another one, and to get everything done, and it gets done, but it takes a lot longer, but it does get done. Okay, it got done. But that's different than someone taking 13 years and it's still not open. And it's already a decade too late and still asking money for it. 
You also need to see that one more time. Look, the receipt is right here. See, you Umar Johnson followers too, and, and this video is not about you, but you have to look at this and you got to be honest about this because there are still people who say, well, he has a school. No, he doesn't have a school. I'm going to show you video recently of Ian e Jay going up there uh, and, sh and showing the conditions of th those uh, buildings up there. They're not schools. A school is a place of education where children, or in some cases it could be adults, are being educated. Is that what we're seeing? No, what we're going to see in the video I ain't gonna say it. When, when, when I show it to y'all, y'all gonna be like, what? So let's be clear about this. This has been going on for 13 years. And we can't say, well, listen, it's gonna take a little bit longer. No, it was supposed to open a decade ago. That's not a little bit longer. And it's still going with no end in sight. See, it's called it's what is called a long con. It's a long con, okay? Caesar still got money somewhere. He posted a million dollar bond. I think he posted 10 percent of that bond. That's 100,000. But that's still a significant amount of money. Right. Especially if the if he owes people money for them. It's, it's I'm definitely for sure. I'm sure that that father who's trying to get money back for his son who passed away in a, in a car crash, who has two children, his the, the daddy and the, uh, the children's great uh, uh, grandfather's trying to take care of them kids. I'm sure he would like to get that that two hundred fifty three hundred thousand dollars back. Yeah, he got money. And his wife is in that, too. She's all mixed up into it with the changing of things into her name and back and forth and all this type of stuff, just like Jay Morrison. I don't want to go here. I don't I don't I do not. But you guys have to understand this. They will do everything to justify their behavior. And I don't get it. For what? It can't just be for the money, because once you get a certain amount of money, you should be content. There has to be something else going. I just don't get that. See, I, I'm I'm very frugal. My wife would tell you, it's, it's like, you know, I. I I got two pairs of pants that I wear <laughs> that, that are that are that are, are, are younger than one year old. Uh, I got pants that, that I, I had for six or seven years. When's what's enough enough? I don't I just do that's something I cannot wrap my mind around. I just cannot. I don't get it. I'm sorry. Now, when the kids leave, I'm like, don't tell nobody because you don't know. But I bought my daughter a guitar order. It's going to get her on Wednesdays. You want to do the guitar at her school and all this kind of thing. And OK, that's fine. Right, so, yeah, you need money to get the baby a guitar or whatever. Yeah, OK. But fancy cars and, and all of this bling bling, you ain't going. It's just it's, I don't get that. I just don't get it. And at a certain point, I just said to Caesar, when when when, when you're sitting up there eating the burger, I'm sorry. I just can't. I just can't do it. I can't. It, I don't understand it. At some point when you're eating a hog and dog, she should have said, you know, enough is enough. You know, I, let me stop this. Anyway. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just can't. I gotta stop it. All right. Let's get to the first video. All right. Let me pull this. <laughs> I'm sorry. The guy is a criminal. All right. Allegedly, he went to jail the first time for credit card fraud. I, I, why would you send the money? I don't get that. All right. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's a DJ in me. If he wasn't on the breakfast club, there ain't nobody know about Caesar Pena. <laughs> Jay Morrison, too. He ain't no nothing. He <laughs> looking bug eyed. I didn't tell him to stop. <laughs> let, me, let me stop. All right. Let's get to this. So I want to go back to this is from let's see, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. And so this is from August of uh, August of 2023. And this is Umar Johnson talking about the process of, you know what? Wait a minute. Before we do this, let, let me let me just lay this groundwork. Let me pull this up. Most of you have already seen this, uh, but I'm going to put this up again. And what I want to do is uh, play a couple of uh, segments. You know, I feel like it's too dark in here. Y'all, y'all, uh, should I should I turn on the lights? Uh, uh, turn on some more lights. I'm so behind this chat. I don't, I don't missed everything in this chat. I'm so sorry. I'm, I, I mean, there's like literally I'm scrolling down trying to get to the bottom. I'll get to the super chat in just a moment. But I apologize, everybody. Uh, and I got to give shout outs to people in here, too, at a certain point. We got new members signing up and everything. Uh, let me just get to the bottom. You good? Okay, the lights are okay. All right. All right. Yeah, you want Barnes says turn on, turn the lights on, family. 
Let me see. It, it does look kind of cozy. Don't it seem like we that the fire? Let me not even bring that up. Talking about who wants it. He's talking about the fire and fireplace. So I said, oh, Lord, you talking about we're going to have it. Uh. Let me see if I can at least. Is that a little better? So I can move this over too a little bit. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. I can scoot a little closer to these lights. I haven't live streamed here uh, before. Okay. It's very romantic. <laughs> Let me go ahead and turn, go ahead and turn this one back off. Then. <laughs> go ahead and, you know, for the queen. You feel me? <laughs> You know, I like to please the queen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Y'all gonna have me sleep on this couch tonight, messing me up. No, uh, 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 don't do it to me. Okay, <laughs> that's right for the queen. <laughs> I said. I told myself when I come back, I ain't gonna be goofing off, and I can't help it. I love y'all. I, I really do. Thank y'all so much. All right. Nope. No pajamas tonight. <laughs> Next time. I'm... <laughs> let me stop. And let me not. Let me not do it. I'm gonna let that go. <laughs> I'm going to have some Alice Day on the counter and a couple of candle lit on the side. <laughs> All right, let's, let's get a second. The candlelight tuned. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll try to pray, said, so don't. Lord, can't let me keep my strength. Let me not let's stop it. <laughs> I, got, I don't want to be joking around. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna go back. To, we're gonna go back in time. <laughs> someone, someone, someone said maybe one more life. <laughs> The house is huge. I, I told my kids, y'all turn these lights off. Sometimes I get up in the morning, I walk through, and all, all light, ain't nobody in there. Lights are all on. It, it, the living room got what six lights in here? That it'll be all, nobody in here, six lights on. The kitchen got seven of them. So it's all those are on. And then the dining room, I don't know how many got over there. Dining, all that's on, and, and no, no kid in sight. They don't care. That's how you know I don't. I'm frugal. I, I'll be thinking about that electric. <laughs> <laughs> I said we got to get a handle on this electric bill immediately. All right. Okay. Listen. <laughs> Some of y'all don't understand, but I'm serious. I, I, you want to run the water too long? Hot water? That's fine. Go and do that. But the electricity? No. Uh -uh. Don't 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 do that. <laughs> okay let's get to it so i want to go back in time we're going to go back to february of, of 2019 when umar made the announcement the school announcement and i was going to pick out uh three specific points or, or uh, time stamps in that particular video to set the stage for the most one of the more recent videos umar talking about the progress of the so-called renovations okay extraordinary so you so the first, uh, let's see, the first one is at 2520. And this is what I mean by this is a long con. Because we have the school, but the school has to be renovated. So there's three stages in this process. Oh, Naples, this right Naples, New York, excuse me, Central Islip, New York, a $275 check. We have Peggy from Anderson, South Carolina. Okay, we have Amanda Smith with a $100 check. I'm only going to read a few of these. I just want to show you the type of love 
that we have gotten over the past four years. And brothers and sisters, we can't stop now. Yeah, We have to keep going on, on going because we have the school, but the school has to be renovated. So there's three stages in this process. There is acquisition, there is restoration, there's operations. There is acquisition, there's restoration, there is operations. There is acquisition, okay? There is restoration and there is operation. We have acquired the building. We have succeeded in our first goal. It took us four and a half years, but everything is in divine timing, brothers and sisters. We have acquired the Okay, a couple of things here. He said it took them four and a half years, but that's not true. This video is in 2019. Remember, he said in 2010, he said it was going to open in 2013. So no, if if we're in two, at that point, it was 2000, this has been going on for so long. If, if at that point, it was 2019 when he's doing that video. No, it took him nine years, close to a decade to, to get the properties. You, but you see those, those subtle types of lies that, that he, he, uh, he's telling there. But if you don't have the receipts, you don't have, see, let me, let me say something else too. It's one thing if, if you take what people say and you spin it and you misrepresent things. So I've had people do that even to me. I, and I got, that's why when people say things, there's some people who said things about Umar that I know aren't true. And I'm like, no, you, you shouldn't do that. Don't do that. Just stick with the facts, stick with the receipts. Don't bend or twist things. You know, don't do that. Everything is, is, is right there uh, with, with Umar. And if you listen to what he said, he says, we've been, you know, we've been trying to do this. And it's, it's I don't know what he said. It took us four years. No, no, no. Th this has been going on since 2010. The video was recorded in 2019. At that point, it took him nine, almost a decade, nine years, almost a decade to get to the first stage, which was what? First stage was acquisition. So I, I want to just make a quick point here before we move forward, that it takes Umar Johnson a decade, close to a decade. Let's be more specific. Uh, it takes him nine years to acquire these buildings in Wilmington, Delaware. From the time that he said that he was going to start this project, it takes him nine years, which is in fact six years later than when the school was supposed to open. The school was supposed to open in 2013, but he doesn't acquire properties until 2019, February of 2019. Okay. It takes him nine years to acquire. And now think, get, get this, the next stage is restoration or renovation. And here we are now for over four and a half years in this so-called restoration renovation process. So you got nine years plus four years, that's 13 years altogether. And who knows where things are at with the restoration renovation process. But even after that, at certain, this is what I mean by it's a long con, con. Even after that, how long is it going to take for him to actually get this project operating? Where there's children enrolled. Another thing is that he already admitted that it's not going to be accredited. So it doesn't even matter. It's a mute point. Because even if you send your children there into this drug infested, crime infested community, uh, and, and they're they're taught at this so-called school that's not accredited, when they get their diploma, their diploma means absolutely nothing. Meaning that they can't say they can't have an official diploma that they take and to show for employment or to take to, to get into community college, or to get into college, or get to university, et cetera. And I just think about all of the 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 and not just the, the single mothers, but all of the, the women who believe in Umar. Who thought that he was going to be the answer for one of their major problems, which was or even challenges, which was the fact that their, their children did not have their fathers there or did not have male positive male role models in their lives. So the women said, well, maybe if I can just get. My son into this school. See, that's why when Tony the Closer had that the brother up there talking about his son who had passed away and it got gotten scammed by Caesar Feeney, it really touched. I was I was in tears by that. And I said, Well, you know what? U Umar been doing people like this, you know, for now over 13 years. And there's so many people who put their faith in them, but that's the confidence, that's the con man. And this is a long con. Acquisition, restoration, and operation. We've got over 900 people, but we either like one, I appreciate it. So Let me play that part one time, brothers and sisters. Do not Keep send on on Naples, New York, excuse me, Central Islip, New York, a $275 check. We have Peggy from Anderson, South Carolina. Okay, we have Amanda Smith with a $100 check. I'm only going to read a few of these. I just want to show you the type of love that we have gotten over the past four years. And brothers and sisters, we can't stop now. We have to keep on going 
because we have the school, but the school has to be renovated. So there's three stages in this process. There is acquisition, there is restoration, there's operations. There is acquisition, there's restoration, there is operations. There is acquisition, okay? There is restoration and there is operation. We have acquired the building. We have succeeded in our first goal. It took us four and a half years, but everything is in divine timing, brother. See, see, see him lying? It didn't take him no four, four and a half years. It took him nine years. Yeah, yeah, he is. He, he just, he, he is. He's a habitual liar. And someone also mentioned uh, crypto roots. I know it, uh, how that brought it to It was very sad. I did. It was really, really sad how um, a light did crypto roots. In fact, at some point, I'm going to go back and revisit all of that in light of what's taking place uh, with uh, Polite more recently. He's in jail now. Right? He took a plea deal. But the thing is that if, if you guys, some of you guys may remember, some of you guys may not. But Crypto Roots, uh, in his personal account in dealing with Polite, he noticed things while he was dealing with Polite, okay, firsthand, that were very sketchy in terms of Polite dealing with underage girls. That at the time he called his daughter but wasn't his daughter see but he but that that and that well i don't, I don't want to get into that here but i do want to go back and revisit those videos of, of crypto roots it's it's just it was so sad rest in peace to him so sad oh, okay uh so let me get to the next uh, part here. So let, what I'm going to do is I want to get through the, the other two here on this video. I'm going to do super chats, and then we're going to get into the more recent video, Umar, talking about the renovations and where things are at uh, this month in 2023, October. All right, so let me pull this back up. Okay, the next clip is at the one hour and seven minute mark. So let me scroll to that. always give our offerings of honey to orisha oshun because the school is between two go. rivers that's probably why orisha oshun is the presiding orisha okay not only that the school is the color of orisha oshun the school is the color of gold and honey and it's situated geographically between two lakes so we could go down to the lake and do our offerings we could go down to the lake and offer our airball this is going to be beautiful brothers yeah, uh, the damages are different. Yeah, absolutely right. I, I think that's underestimated in all of this. The impact that this has on people, not just the people who have been taken advantage of, whether you're looking at Caesar Fainier, Jay Morrison, or Umar Johnson, or Polite. But it's also, if you think about it in terms of the Black community, the, the damage that it causes in terms of trust, and I've talked about this in the past, that, that, that there are people who, because of their experience with Umar Johnson and trying to support him with this school scam, that, and they were taken advantage of, that they lose trust on, a trust with this idea of supporting other black people who may be legitimately trying to achieve these types of goals that would benefit the black community. This makes sense. That's underestimated in all of this. Yeah, people are hurt. Children are, are hurt. Uh, families are damaged. Uh, yeah, this, this is true. But there's also this other element in terms of how the damage that, that is caused in terms of trust amongst black people. If you have people like Umo who claim to be a black leader and he has all the answers and yet he's scheming and scamming with the school scam now for 13 years. With nothing to show for it. That there's damage that that causes too. And then the optics of it all. You know, other people who see this who are may not be black, but they okay, here's another black guy doing doing what he's doing. Oh, here we go. They're all hustlers. Talking about I want two wives and all this type of stuff. Now, listen, I've been getting uh, uh, researching into this stuff, dealing with this polygamy stuff. And one of the things that that I remember this one lady, she had uh, many years, it was about eight years ago. She had sent me email says, well, you know, what? did you and your wife are you open to polygamy? And I was like, what the f what? I'm a one woman man. Uh -uh. I don't know what y'all think. I don't know what you talking about. That's just pimp culture up over here. That's all that is. There's no infrastructure in place to support polygamy amongst African-American and black people. It's not what we do have in place is after two fathers. You got boys growing up watching porn all the time. You got uh, boys growing up uh, living sexually promiscuous lifestyles that is promoted in the rap music 
and being a pimp and a player. You got my the previous generation, but my, before my generation, with all the pimp and the black sport taste films and all this type of thing. Umar, stop texting me. I told you I'm going to do one live stream tonight. Leave me alone. So, so where is the where, where is the social uh, support system for polygamy for black people? There is none. It ain't nothing but conscious pimpism. That's what I called it many years ago. I call it the same thing today. But what I found in my research uh, uh, dealing with different uh, uh, cult, cults and cult personalities, an excellent documentary on, on Netflix that came out recently dealing with cults. I think it's something like how to start a cult or something like that. That a lot of the males, part of it is power and control, and that power and control transfers over to the idea of sexually dominating women, and not just one, but as many as possible. And it's not even about the sex component. It's about using sex as a, as a means of control. Well, that's Umar Johnson. Because you can't claim that you want polygamy and yet you can't commit to one, let alone two, let alone three, four, five, six women. So it's not about commitment. It's not about a relationship. It's not about a marriage. It's not, I want two wives. It's not about any of that. It's about dominating sexually and otherwise black women as many as possible under the guise of polygamy. And yet this is the person people talk to send money to to think that they're they, 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 they going to educate your sons? You, you got to be out your mind. But it's not about you people who support Umar. I just want to be clear about that. But let's be real about this. This whole polygamy thing in black community ain't nothing but conscious pimpism. And not one of y'all men who, who promote or, or support that. Not one of y'all. Well, let me stop. Yeah, a lot of it. Well, I'm, I'm, I, I got to leave it at that because I'm going to end up going off and it's going gonna, it's gonna to get out of control. All right, let's get back to uh, this here. And sisters. This is going to be heaven on earth, but y'all got to keep donating. Okay, y'all got to keep donating. How much is it going to cost to restore the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy? How much is it going to cost? The restoration costs is $1 million for complete restoration if I want to go through a regular contractor and building company remember okay to be clear about this he's saying one million for everything this was in 2019 he says one million for everything but then instead of doing the whole campus then he started talking about how he's just going to do the gym and i'm going to just do the small school well guess what umar's collected close to two million dollars the purchase price for these properties is was four hundred thousand dollars where's the rest of the money go didn't he have the money anyway Huh? Again, it's one thing to collect money and say you're going to do something and you do what you did. You said you're going to do with the money. It's another thing to collect money and you don't do what you said you were going to do with the money. Well, what Umar did was in 2019 was purchase these properties for $400,000. That's the online records. He's never showed any receipts. I, I'm the one who had to go and find that. Okay. No accounting whatsoever, no accounting, no ledger, nothing, no bookkeeping whatsoever. Didn't show anything to anybody. We have to take him at his word that he actually purchased it, you know, and that everything was on the up and up. But online records show four hundred thousand dollars. Where's the rest of the money? Just on GoFundMe alone, he raised over four hundred thousand dollars. And over the course of what, three years, I believe it was two and a half, three years. That's just on GoFundMe. Where's the rest of the money? And if it only gonna cost a million dollars to get everything renovated, you spend four hundred thousand dollars to acquire the property. Well, then this should be a one point four million dollar project altogether, be all done, ready to go, excluding operation costs. Well, he's raised well over two million dollars by now. You see. All right. But we got four buildings. We have two schools. Let me be clear. We have two schools. We have the Frederick Douglass building and we have the Marcus Garvey building. We have the Frederick Douglass building and we have the Marcus Garvey building. We have two schools. And then we have another building that I'm going to turn into the Pan-African Research Center and another building, which is going to be the community center. Okay. <laughs> He's just such a liar. It's, it's only two buildings. No, no, let's be let's even give them it. There's one large, larger school, which is actually quite small because uh, E and J, I'll show you the video later. And then there's a smaller building, the smaller school, and then there's a gym. 
So really, there's technically there's three billion, but he also exaggerated. We got 15 billions and 15 billion schools, and he just everything's exaggeration. But guess what? I'm hoping somebody is watching this today. I'm hoping we have an electrician or someone who knows an electrician. I'm hoping we have a carpenter or someone who knows a carpenter. I'm hoping we have a licensed plumber or someone who knows a plumber. I'm hoping we have a roofer or someone who knows a roofer. I hope we have a painter or someone who knows a painter who's watching this in their we have we have an MC Hammer building family. <laughs> All right, don't even get it started, Key Lagger. Here we go. I'm going to say, hit up Dr. Umar and tell him <laughs> that you are a licensed plumber. Tell him you are a licensed electrician. <laughs> that's what I thought it was a long time ago. We did a live stream. That's that's not, it's somebody else. I don't, I can't remember who people said. I can't. <laughs> All right. By the way, I remember I did a video many years ago where I talked about this guy who had contacted me. I think it was HVAC technician or something like that. I think it was HVAC. I can't remember. No, I was in plumbing. I can't remember. I could pull out the emails. But he had a reached out to Umar. And there's plenty of people who reached out to Umar to offer free services, like to get things painted, to get renovation, help with the renovation stuff. And Umar uh, just did stop responding. But that just goes to show he was never serious. He was never serious about this so-called uh, school project. There's been plenty of black people who said, listen, I'll help you to get that done free of charge. Um, some of you guys may re remember that, but but uh, that's just another example of Umar was never serious. This is the longer he can keep this going, the longer he can collect money. Same thing with Jay Morris, the longer he could keep that Tulsa real estate fraud scheme going, the longer he can manage money to, to use however he wanted. Now he purchased this, this black house, but the, the idea was uh, for him, that's just optics. Let me sh let me show them something just like Umar. Let me just get these abandoned buildings. Let me show them something. But in terms of substance, there's no substance to that whatsoever. See, the, 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 the black house does not provide uh, dividends, doesn't help to pay out dividends. In fact, it's, it's just a it's a money pit. That's why when Jay Morrison is in there, he don't like turning on the heat. He don't like turning on the air conditioning because it's too expensive. He's in there sweating. It's just. He be playing game shows and all this kind of thing. One time he had a show he was called, I kid you not, called Money Church. That's what he called it. Money Church. You want to say it really? Just wow. All right, let's get back to it. Tell him you are a licensed carpenter. Tell him you are a licensed painter. Tell him you are a licensed roofer and that you're going to come and fix the roof for free as long as he paid for the materials. Tell Dr. Umar you're going to come and rewire mm -hmm. the whole school. He just got to pay for the material. Tell Dr. Umar you're going to come and do the whole plumbing system. You're going to fix anything wrong with the plumbing system. He just got to pay for the material. I'm hoping HVAC. I need HVAC. I need HVAC. I'm hoping somebody with HVAC will text me and say, Doc, I live in Philly. I live in Chester. I live in Delaware. I live in Maryland. I live in New York. I live in Connecticut, brother. I'm licensed. <laughs> I will come down there and do your HVAC work. When can we get in the building, Doc? I got the keys. I got the keys. Yeah, he talked about the keys. That's, that's direct response to us clowning him about not having the keys. Uh, if y'all don't, some of y'all may remember this a long time ago. Um, Catherine says it has been said that Umar Johnson was gifted these building schools. Yeah, it, people have said that. That that, and I don't really want to get into all, all too deep into this, but the, the company that owned, owned it before, and not even owned it, really, really like the steward of it, because it's a bit complex. But that they, it was more to get rid of it for so they can hand off the tax liability associated with this property. Thing. And and people have speculated that it was given to him for free. Now listen, I, like I've said before, I can't prove that, so I can't state that. Is it possible? Yes. But online records that I found, that's what I've gone with over the years is, is $400,000 was paid. That's that. And so that's what I stick with. And it, this just goes to show you guys another thing. I'm not getting up here lying on Umar or any of that type of thing. Just people who have lied on Umar that I actually used to believe like, OK, yeah, you know, there may be truth to that. But that's cause, simply because I believe in them, not because they provided uh, clear receipts. But at a certain point, I realized, wait a minute. Uh -uh. No, no. It, it has to be factual and has to be you have to be able to back it up with some sort of evidence. And I and to uh, to this day, Captain, I have not been able to to come up with any evidence that would prove that Umar Johnson, that these these buildings were gifted. To him. And, and this does happen from time to time where a company will say, no, we'll just give it to you. But you have to take on a liability, a tax liability moving forward. Or if there's any old taxes that are that are old that we haven't paid, then you take on those taxes, too. That happens, too, in real estate. OK, 
But I haven't been able to prove that, therefore I can't state that as a fact. Okay. But again, this this speaks to, to integrity that I'm not on up here and I never have been up here to, to lie about Umar, about anybody else. Right is right, wrong is wrong, you know. All right, and someone sent me a cash app too. Thank you so much. My cash app information is listed in the description for this uh, video as well as my PayPal. All right, thanks everyone too who sent in super chats and also thanks everyone uh, here inside the Cookie Crush chat. I know it's been a long, long time. Okay, let's continue here. I got the keys. What they say? They said, uh, <laughs> okay, let's go to the next one. And this is at the uh, one hour and 13 minute mark. I think this is perfect going into the most recent Umar video or one of the more recent Umar videos where he's talking about the, the progress with this restoration. We've got a thousand people in the building. Y'all hit the like button. I'd appreciate that. Yeah, my son's playing his music. I don't know if y'all can hear. If y'all can hear, let me know. I'll tell him to turn it down. From now. August the 21st of 2019 is only six months from now. August the 21st of 2019 is only six months from now. It is impossible for me to have the building restored and to have the school opened in six months. It is impossible. So the start date is being pushed back one summer to August the 20th of 1920. We celebrate one. He means to say 2020. 100 years of the red, black, and green flag. August of 2020. What's that, August honey? of 1920. That's when <laughs> the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey <laughs> chose the red, black, and green. August of 2020, the red, black, and green flag turned. Yeah, that's why I respect Lenin, but he ain't putting uh, no extras, just fact. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, I know I, I know I goof off. And I clam, but that's more the comedy relief part because you know I, I, I like to to make people laugh uh, at least online and and uh, no, in normal circumstances I'm real laid back and reserved, but the online I like goofing off and having a good time and we laugh and all that stuff. I'm trying to hold back tonight, um, but that but you can be you can do the humor thing, but then also uh, stick with the facts and not get over the top crazy and and making false allegations. And I've seen so many people do that. Yeah, it's just um, I'll, I'll give you another example. Um, there were people who who stated they would state that Umar has a criminal record, and they promoted that. But see, I looked that that up, uh, and I knew that information, the possibility at least that he had a criminal record long before they did. But I never talked about it because I couldn't verify that that was him. And what I did find finally find out was that that person was not Umar Johnson. But can you imagine if, if I'm saying those things and then it's not true and I'm saying it for the sensationalism or just putting extras on the hot sauce on it and all this type of stuff. That, that's not right. I, I don't believe in that. But see, there's another component to this, too, and that is that do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. And there's been people who've been totally unfair with me, you know, and, and saying all kind of crazy stuff, and making up all kind of lies. I, I didn't appreciate that. And I still don't appreciate that. So why would I do that to Umar? I'm not going to do that to Umar. I wouldn't do that to anybody. You see, I just I don't think that that's the right thing to do. And someone said earlier in the chat, I didn't get to pull it up, but someone said in the chat room, they said there's an Umar, there's enough on Umar to where you don't have to make up stuff. You don't have to twist stuff. You don't have to, you know, cut one little segment out and then put that out and twist so that it tells a narrative, but you take it out of context. You don't got to do that with Umar. That just let him run his mouth. And there's people who've done that with me. I, I don't like. It. I think it's wrong. I think they're gonna. Everyone has people have paid price. They don't realize that, that it's just the way that it is. But if you do stuff like that, there's always a price to pay. It ain't got nothing to do with me. See, you will pay a price. It always happens that way. That you, but you have to conduct yourself with some level of integrity, and you gotta you gotta do right by people, including I have to do right by Umar. Same thing. Listen, there's times I, I've prayed for Umar, but but in particular, young Pharaoh, I pray for that young man. So no, I ain't got You ain't got to do all this extra stuff, you know, to, to to cause harm. That's the big difference. My intention was never to cause harm to Umar. My intention was was to tell the truth so they protect people from Umar harming them. Amen. But there have been people online. They done Umar talk about Umar, but their whole intent was to cause harm to Umar. That's all. It ain't got nothing to do with with justice or or being uh, uh, honest and sincere. It was simply to cause harm to. Him. I don't believe in that. Yeah, I never believed in that. That's why I can get up here and we can joke and we can have fun and laugh. But if I was coming from a malicious place, a place wouldn't be able to do that. See? It's the spirit behind which 
uh, uh, you know, I've done Umar Johnson. I've gotten frustrated with him because he said some things online. He's docked my personal information. I didn't appreciate that. He said that I was gay. I didn't appreciate that. He said that I was he said that I was a child. Uh, if you guys know the word. Okay? I don't appreciate that. Okay? But I'm not going to get up here. And because he's done that, then I'm going to get up here and lie on the guy. I'm not going to do it. Mm -mm. I, don't, I just don't believe in that. turns 100 years old that's when we're going to open the school that's when we're going to open the school yeah when you're 100 years old no i'm just playing. but this is what i want to do i want to open the building for you to come and see it a grand opening on the quadricentennial of african struggle in america on august the 21st of 2019 this summer on august the 21st of 2019 this summer on August the 21st of 2019, this summer, I want to have a grand opening of the FDMG building, Team Pan-African headquarters. I want to have a conference. I want music. I want fashion show. I want seminar. I want yoga class. I want African language. I want a musical concert right across the street. We got a big park. We want to rent that out and do a big park, a big celebration with food and festivals and activities for the children with over one. 100 vendors <laughs> sincere how's it going sincere russ i gotta give shout outs over 100 vendors mike <laughs> this summer would have been 2019 did he have that no he didn't have that all right <laughs> you uh, what's up dom this is the homie right here what's up dominique says yo i remember lennon said archaeologists is gonna uh, dig up fmg and find umar sitting <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. That was years ago, man. Yeah, yeah. I was saying this is gonna take so long. A hundred years from now, <laughs> hey, Mark, the archaeologist is going. Hey, there's a man in here sitting in a chair. <laughs> ain't no books, though. Ain't no books, family. Ain't no laptops. Nothing. Ain't none of that. <laughs> there's a man sitting in a chair. <laughs> There's some Debbie food cakes and a cheese, old cheesecake sitting over here on, on the side. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, that was hilarious, man. We got so many wonderful memories. <laughs> oh, but they also have security team. <laughs> it's, the it's the granny archers. <laughs> it's, it's the granny archers. All right, that's my thing. Tell the door talk. <laughs> we got one of them smart homes. I, I think that's my wife. Baby, is that you? <laughs> she was like, Is it okay? Because I'm hungry. Can I get tacos when I get home? <laughs> I said, Yeah, don't worry about it. All right, <laughs> All right baby, I'm going to take the, the video off so you can come in and do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh? Yeah, I took it off. Cutie pie. Get your to go and get your tacos. <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> my daughter made tacos. <laughs> it was some stale tacos. <laughs> oh boy, no, no. <laughs> those archaeologists said, What are these? I think those. Well, back in tw back in the two thousands, they <laughs> they had Twizzlers. Hey, that's what they call Twizzlers. They don't have them anymore these days. Okay, <laughs> what you got on? <laughs> I'm sorry. I said, "Quick crush chat is hot." <laughs> <laughs> the man can hit the one. The quick crush chat is hot tonight. <laughs> What's up, I did with hell? We need the cartoon kids. I gotta find it. I gotta find it though. What's up, Black Odito? All the OGs in the building tonight. <laughs> All right, we got about a thousand people. Y'all hit the like button. Okay, let me let me do this. Uh, did we get to the? We got to, okay. <laughs> we ain't made no progress. We got an hour and a half. 
So let me pull up the, the more recent um, Umar video. We're going to do that. And then we're going to go back in time and look at the, the, the trepidation. And then we're going to come back to, we may do part two tomorrow. We'll come back uh, to uh, a video that was posted a couple of days ago where he's talking about the, the restoration process, renovation process, and where he's at with that. But before I do that, let me um, let me get to any more Super Chats in here that I may have uh, missed here. So Pocket Pocket T, JT was here earlier. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, MJ, yeah, we talked about the Supihana. Uh, is the is that bump? I don't know. I have no idea. Tata. I haven't uh, seen any more videos since February. And those February videos, we, it was mainly older videos that we were watching, if my memory serves me. It's been so long. It's been eight months. But we we sh I don't know if he goes into the gym. In the, the more recent videos, but if he does, we'll be able to. We'll take a look and we'll see, and we'll do some investigation on that. Thank you for the super chat, Tata. I hope you're doing all uh, all right. Aisha says, first off, congrats on everything, Lennon, and welcome back. I just wanted to ask, unrelated, did you see Umar's rant on Jada Pickett Smith? Is I haven't seen it, but uh, someone uh, emailed me about it today. Someone's coming. Hold on a second. Okay, I'll take myself off unless you want to be on here. No. Okay. <laughs> I just took it. I just took it. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, you got on them short shorts too. Mm -hmm. you, know what? you think you ain't pulling down body? You ain't pulling out. You ain't. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, no, I haven't seen it, but someone told me about it, Aisha, and um, maybe we'll cover that. Um, maybe we can do that on Wednesday. We'll probably have to do part two of this tomorrow, and then maybe on Wednesday we can cover that. Y'all, let me know what y'all want to do. If y'all want to do that, hit the one. We have we can have three straight days of hanging out. Mr. Controversy says, Lennon, have you seen anything from Baba Thick Throat when it comes, <laughs> it comes to Uber? I haven't. Or is he still trying to get the FDN <laughs> to ride? <laughs> that was uh, Father David. I have not heard anything from Father David. I have. I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know if he's had Umar on anything like that. I have absolutely no idea. Maybe someone in the cook chat, if you have any uh, idea, let us know. <laughs> but yeah, ba ba Father David was, he was, boy, he was something else. He said, I want to get the people on Take picture of FDMG rock. I want to put the rock on top of me. And I said, okay, <laughs> you want to get that rock to get on top of me. <laughs> Painful soup chat, Mr. Scott Mercy. Fal says, mm, I think I just saw Umar peeking through your window in the but no, he didn't. He not that window, at least. He would have to have a ladder. <laughs> For the, uh, yeah, that's fine. For the second or the third floor. Yeah, uh, no, he he uh well, he. He, would, he wouldn't do that. Remember that song? Who's that peeking in my window? Uh, thanks for uh, Super Chat. Chat. Let me Sal, let me get to these real quick. I, I apologize, but Mr. Monica says, uh, Tony the Closer needs to get with you and expose Umar in his fake 20 degrees. No more money collecting for the trap banner. I don't know if Tony the Closer has been following Umar, though. I, don't, I have no idea. But he's his main focus has been um, DJ Envy, Cesar Pena, and Jay Morrison. That's been his main focus. But, uh, you know, if, if you wanted to get into Umar, that would be awesome. The more people, the better. Uh, thanks for the Super Chat Mixer Smile. That's a nice picture, too. Uh, the Geo Scholar says, why would anyone want Umar educating their kids? In addition to being a scammer, he also said he was going to pound kids chest. In. Yeah, but Geo Scholar, and we all know this, that uh, Umar has said a lot of things that were way off over the top uh, dealing with children. You know, uh, he's, he's talked about uh, murdering uh, black boys, uh, the thugs on the corner. He's doubled down. I remember he doubled down on that. I thought he would, would backtrack and not say that type of stuff anymore. But he back he actually doubled down and tripled down on that. And he was talking about how 10 percent. Um, he's talked about uh, children who have been uh, uh, raped and molested. They go on to become thoughts because of the holes over there. Um, I mean, all types of things. I remember the, the one and some of y'all may remember this hit the one, but it was we were watching, listening to it. And it's one of the most it's one of the <clears throat> excuse me, craziest things. He was talking about how he would have these the children at the school come on certain days, uh, you know, like in the evening time <clears throat> and dressed up in suits and they would come and uh, he would have these fireside chats. That's I guess that's what he called them. And they would sit uh, by a fireside or whatever. And he would cuddle with them. And I said, what? Like, why? Are, what, what, that's it's just great. So there's a lot of things that he said uh, dealing with children that if, if any other person, if, if your child's teacher, or child's counselor, or child's principal said that, it, it would be, okay, lawsuit time. What's going on here? Somebody's getting fired, but somehow Umar gets a pass. So he, he said a lot of questionable things about children that, that it would lead me to believe that any caring parent would be like, no, there's no way that I would want to put my uh, children in his care. You know, so therefore, why would you donate to a school where children would ultimately be put in his, in his care, right? 
It's never going to happen anyway. But the point, I hope you all see my point. Thanks for Super Chat, Geo Scholar. <clears throat> Excuse me, excuse me. This controversy says, I don't know, Leonard, you sweating a little yourself. Yeah, I know, I am. It's a little warm in here. Uh, I got these lights on too, these uh, lights for when I do live streams. Uh, I reflect my destiny. Says, much respect. Are you for herbs uh, to help uh, body pain? Yeah, if they actually help, you know, as long as they help, you know, as long as they're good, they're quality. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff out there, people selling herbs and making these, you know, uh, claims that it's going to do this and do that, but it, it, but they don't. You know, so you just have to be clear about that. Make sure that, that whatever it is you're getting that is good quality and that they actually work for whatever it is your ailment may be. Right? I know I'll, I'll uh, since we moved here, I've taken probably about four baths. You know, lived uh, at the previous residence, I probably took about four baths over the course of six years. Uh, that's what I, I tend to do. I'll, I'll put some um, some salts in in the bathtub. I mean, you know how we do. <clears throat> put some salts in the bathtub. Light some candle. Put on some the Luther Vandross. <laughs> I'm, I'm just playing. All right, thanks for soup chat, everybody. Okay, so now I want to get to the video uh, where Umar begins to talk about um, renovations, uh, the restoration renovation process, and where they're at uh, currently or more recently. Let me see. I think this is the video right here. Oh no, that's not it. Okay, we're not done yet. We got room for over one hundred vendors. We have 20 classrooms in one building. We got another 16 classrooms in the other building. We got 20 classrooms in one building. We got over 16 classrooms in the other building. Please stop saying where, because I told you, I'm uploading <laughs> a video once I'm done talking. He getting mad. Okay, so this particular video is a more recent video uh, that Umar posted. Boy, man, he looking bad. I, I haven't seen any of this. This is from August 12th, so about 12, uh, 11 days ago. And the title of it was FMG Academy Process Complete All Systems. Really? All Systems Renovated? Is that really? Okay, well, we're going to see. Okay, let, let's go ahead and play this. Uh, and I'll be back on here in just a moment. Here we go. Peace and Pan Africanism, peace and Pan Africanism. Peace and Pan Africanism, peace and Pan Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my continental Africans. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my Africans in Asia. Man, he looking bad. I, I just, I, you know, I, I, I feel so bad for this guy. I, I, it's just not worth it. None of this is worth it. Jay Morrison, it's not. Caesar Binion, look where you're at. Uh, polite, look where you're at. None of it is worth it. You know, my, my best advice is, is to focus on what you need to do to change your life for the better and get busy. You know, get busy. This this is not it. And, and you can just look. I can look at him and look in his eyes and tell, you know. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my South Pacific Africans. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my Australian Africans. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my French Africans, my British Africans, my Irish Africans, my German Africans, my Russian Africans, go. my Austrian Africans, my Slovenian Africans. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my Africans in the Middle East. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my West Africans. Peace and Pan-Africanism to my Ghanaian Africans, Liberian Africans. Cameroonian Africans, oh, no, okay. Nigerian Africans, Togolese Africans, Benin, Gambia, Zambia, Botswana, Lesotho, South Africa, the DRC, Congo, Tanzania, Mali, Niger, <laughs> Guinea, peace and Pan-Africanism to my Burkina Faso Africans, my Malawi Africans, my Nubian Africans, my Ethiopian Africans, my Texas Africans, <laughs> my Georgia Africans, my Carolina Africans, my Maryland Africans, DC Africans, Philly Africans, Detroit, Phoenix, Chicago, oh, Milwaukee Africans, Little Rock Africans, <laughs> Jackson, Mississippi Africans, New Orleans, Shreveport Africans. It's your big brother King Kong consciousness. It's your big brother, King Kong Consciousness, Whoa, coming tripping. to you live and direct with the announcement we all been waiting for. <laughs> with the announcement we all been waiting for. Peace out. Crenshaw. You're Crenshaw Africans. Michael, you know, yeah. Boy, I've been trying my best to stay out this chat room. <laughs> I'm frosty. He started talking about Stereos, <laughs> all right, all right. 
Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me get out this chat room because we're going to be here for the rest of the month. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, Mike. Ain't no stop the cook crush chat. We can take a break for eight months, come back, and everything is right back to where it was at when we left. Wow. Shout out to all y'all. Love y'all. We got a thousand people. Y'all hit the like button. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, let me get out of here. I, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> Y'all crazy. Here we go. Pan Africanism to my South American Africans, my Central American Africans. Peace and Pan Africanism to my Jamaican Africans, my Haitian Africans, my Aruba, Carasa Africans, Bahamas, Bermuda Africans, Saint Croix, Saint Thomas, Saint Lucia, Saint Martin, <laughs> Saint Vincent, Guadeloupe Africans, Martinique Africans. All my Africans from around the world, it's your brother King Kong Consciousness, the most requested, the most relevant, and the most revolutionary scholar on the planet. I said the most requested, the most revolutionary, and the most relevant yeah, black scholar in the world today. I said the most requested, the most revolutionary, no, he's not doing well. and the most relevant black scholar in the world today, brothers and sisters. I'm coming to you with the announcement we've been waiting for since we bought this school on February the 7th of 2019. That was four years, six months, and four days ago, brothers and sisters. Four years, six months, and four days. Four years ago, six months, and four days we bought this school. Yeah, it does. Y'all know what we've been through. We've been through the vandalism. We've been through the hate. We've been through the slander, the sabotage. The scamming of the black contractors. We've been. I told y'all a long time ago. That. What's going to happen is as the years progress after he purchases these after he purchases these properties that he will ultimately blame black people for why things aren't completed. I told y'all hit the one. Remember we were talking about Wag the Dog, the guy wanted his, he, he wanted credit. Well, I want credit right now, Cook Crush Chat. I told y'all that that was exactly what was going to happen. And look. Yeah. That's it. I told y'all. And here we are. See, I can step away for eight months and come back and everything just plays itself out perfectly to a T. I called it. Yeah, as he said, vandalism. Some some of y'all forget. I remember he was claiming that there, there was a car that had caught on fire over there. Y'all y'all remember this? Hit right, uh, type in car if you remember this. One, okay, you remember this? Hit car. Just type in car. But there was a car that had caught on fire over there. It had nothing to do with with them abandoned buildings and nothing. It ain't nothing to do with him. And he tried to play it off like it was some sort of sabotage. The fence caught on fire and all this kind of stuff. I said no, 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 no. That that whole area is drug infested. It's crime infested. It's hood hood. It's not just hood. It's hood hood. I wouldn't be up over there, and I'm not scary like that. But I, I got some street smarts though. But I'm not scary like that. But I wouldn't go up over there because uh, I have enough sense to say, uh uh uh, uh I'll be able to tell. Uh uh, nope nope nope. So even this idea of vandalism, that's just all contrived to make excuses. And yeah, they threw a. He said a boulder rock. How they? What what is a boulder rock? That's a contradiction. This was many years ago. And then remember he, he took the, the things, the boards off of some of the windows. They went, yeah, look at yeah. the haters, yeah, look at he could make it progress. And he put them back on because someone threw a rock. But I told people he met years ago, I said, what's gonna happen is we take them them boards off, people gonna start vandalizing them windows. And that's exactly what happened. I told y'all, just like I told y'all, but what this thing right here, right now, right here. All right. Blame, he gonna blame the black con, and he says they're scamming. Isn't that interesting? through all of it the youtube being distractors we've been through all of it but that would be me <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
let's be real about it. He's talking he, mainly. He's talking. There's other people too, but he's mainly talking about me, family. <laughs> I'm the YouTube distractor, I guess. But I haven't told one lie. <laughs> exactly, they're vacant. And you know what happens? You, you leave the window. You, the, the, if the building is vacant, what what happens? Especially in a high crime, high drug infested area, what happens? Well, people start, they start vandalizing because they, in many cases, they're trying to get in and see what they can steal or they try to live in there. Huh? I remember one time many years ago, many years ago, he was walking through this early on and there's no electrician, nothing. He was walking through it and he walked by this, it was a couch and it was like a, it looked like a sleeping bag and then cans of food. And I said, people been, people been living in there. Anybody remember that? Hit the one. Today. Black August. Today, Black August. Where my Leos at one time? Where my Leos at one time? Where my lions and my lionesses right now? Here we go. If you was born in August, whether you a Leo or whether you are a Virgo, make some noise right now. Whether you a Leo or, or Black August birthday, this is for us yeah, right now. now. But you know what? I want to. Yeah, y'all remember that? Well, how's it going, Novella? And Mercy Teams and Mercy Teams. And see, cool. How's it going? A lot of old, old school people. Thank y'all so much for being here. I appreciate. It. I know I've been gone. Y'all been, y'all ain't been been around. Crystal Green. Y'all ain't been around. <laughs> y'all just ain't the guy. They been around. I don't know what y'all been doing. I've been waiting for y'all. How's it going, job the kid? Nice dress, man. I always thought uh, because my children, they got their hair is nice. You know, my daughter's real uh, hair is real. Uh, you know, the, the the strong thick stuff. I wish I had things. If I had it, I would wear it. You know, but my stuff is that's a long time ago, family. It's... <laughs> but if I could, I would. I'd probably have dreads all the way down my back. You know, they ain't gonna happen. They ain't gonna never happen. Anyway, I say thank you to all my donors. Where are my donors at? How Here many of y'all been donating since the first fundraiser? April the 14th, St. Louis, 2014. Hi. Dang. If it, going by what you're saying, Umar, 2014, that's almost a decade ago. So now you're finally admitting that you've been raising money for nine years. And I can actually pull up the video where he's sitting in the suit and he's talking about, but he said, what did I, this, I think this is the first time where he gave the, well, well, let, me, let me, let me, hear. I got to hear this again. I, I'm sorry, I have to. Born in August, whether you a Leo or whether you are a Virgo, make some noise right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my wife, she love that. <laughs> Put on some Bob Marley or some Inca Mouse. I'll put on Inca Mouse. I like the old stuff. I'll put on some Inca Mouse. Lie a little sage. <laughs> uh, you ain't nothing but a teaser. That's my wife be saying to me. But she ought to talk patois. I like it when she's talking to her. I did activate my sack when she's talking like that. But that's why she don't like talking like that. But she talk like I'll be like, you ain't nothing but a teaser. Whether you a Leo or Black August birthday, this is for us right now. But you know what? I want to say thank you to all my donors. Where are my donors at? How many of y'all been donating since the first fundraiser? April the 14th, St. Louis, 2014. How many been done? He, he said that before, uh, many, many years ago. But this 2014, well, well, that would mean, Umar, that at this point, we're talking nine years, over nine years. But there are people who've talked about how they donated to you back in 2009. Okay, But we'll go by what you said. We're all, almost a decade now of you collecting money, and they're still in school. And I'm going to go reiterate, going back, uh, there's been times where I've asked for money from people. I'm not proud about it. In fact, I have a lot of a shame about it, just, you know. Uh, but th there's something different. Okay? And that is to say that if you collect money because you need, you're in, in need it, it, and you put it towards what you said, you, that's one thing. But it's another thing to be collecting money by his own admission for like nine years now. But by, based upon what I know, we're talking 13, 14 years. And there's still, st he still hasn't delivered on what he said. And he's not even close. Okay. 
Donating since 2015. How many been donating since 16, 17? Who been donating since 18 and 19? Who been donating since 2020 COVID and 2021 and 2022? Where are my donors at from around the world? We wouldn't be here without the donors right now. We would not be. <laughs> man, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> if you're a man, you know what I'm talking about. Hit the war. It's totally unfair, too, because, you know, because God made it that way. It's, but it's unfair. We're at, we're at a disadvantage. And you women, you know it, too. You guys know that. So, you just, you know, man, it's, it's hard. It's not fair. <laughs> Here without the donors, my African donors, thank you. South American donors, thank you. Central America. Hold on. Let's give a shout out to the brothers tonight, okay? Because y'all know what I'm talking about. God made it that way, though. Ain't my fault. I tell, I say, ain't my fault. Hey, no. Y'all women know it too. Y'all, we uh, just y'all. Y'all necks be smelling good too. <laughs> Something about them neck. I don't know what it is. And y'all know it too. Y'all be getting up and coming all close to put your neck right there. And <laughs> we just. <laughs> It's just our brains short circuit. All right. <laughs> All right. Let me get to some of these super chats because I'm I'm behind. <laughs> okay. Let me let me do this real quick. <laughs> real, just real quick. Uh, uh, the most disturbing thing he said he wanted to and let me, yeah 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 we talked about that earlier Barry. it was, that was very disturbing he's but he said a lot of disturbing things but that right there i think that that's one of the because if, if he talk if umar is talking about how he wants to save black boys but then he makes comments about it that, that black boys need to be eliminated that, i mean it's genocide in essence that you're just going to uh indiscriminately murder uh a black boys on the corner uh, if anyone else says something like that, that's not uh, Umar or maybe not black, all of their white supremacists and there's everyone's in the uproar. But Umar says something like that, he gets a pass. But that's very disturbing to say. Very disturbing. Okay. Uh, Perry says, uh, R, let's see, uh, RJTP Academy, <laughs> Rick James Teddy Pendergrass Academy will open its doors in 2030. Run me that money. Mama Grifter in the answer. Yeah. Um, Perry, to, to this, all joking aside, at this rate, and I'm talking about the trajectory of all of this, that if it takes Umar nine years to acquire the building, and then it takes him at this point four and a half years to get to wherever he's at right now in renovations, what would you say is a likely projected opening date? Because like I put it up earlier, it's not just the acquisition. It's not just the restoration and renovation. And he's only renovating half of the uh, half of these uh, half of the, one half of the uh, street. Because there's on the other half of the street, that's where the big building is. Most of the work needs to be done over there. He hasn't even, Barry, he hasn't even shown that, been in there and shown that other side in years. I don't know why that is the case. I have no idea. Well, maybe I do. Maybe it, I, I'm, I'm going to speculate here. Okay. And, I, and again, I don't want people to chop this. We don't just use this part and say, this is what Lennon's saying. No, I'm not saying this as a fact. I'm, I'm speculating here because I've thought about this. There's two possibilities that the condition of the larger building is so horrible after four and a half years probably worse than what it was when he initially purchased the property because he's been sitting over there. he hasn't done anything over there that he doesn't want to show it because if he shows it people are going to really figure out that he's not doing anything of consequence okay because that was at one point he said i'm just focusing on the gym which is the smallest of the three buildings then he then he started talking about the smaller school which is the second smallest of all the three buildings and, and less than half the size of the large building Okay, which is a huge, which is relatively larger, plus it has a gym attached to it, the, the larger gym, which is what he really sold people on his initial videos. Remember, y'all remember in his initial videos, he talked a lot about that larger building. In fact, when he was in that penguin suit, that's the, he was inside the larger building. He's showing the larger gym. And, oh, wow. I was like, wow. Yeah, he did it. He did it. Haters, haters. Yeah. But it, it has been literally years. I can't even, I, I don't know how many years. It's been over three years. He hasn't even gone in there and shown people what's the, now he may do it now if he watches this video. But the point being is, that if if he hasn't even done anything on the other side of the street, Perry, what do you think would be a reasonable projection for when this school would open? And I would say, uh, Perry, with all due respect, that 2030, that that would be an estimate, a, a very kind estimate. <laughs> In other words, 
you're being nice. You're giving him the benefit of the doubt because at this point, he still has to get the restoration and renovation process on one half of the street. And he's still got to do the other side of the street, let alone operation, getting operation. How are you going to pay for that? Getting back from staff, getting all the insurances in place, passing all the different inspections, getting children enrolled. I remember Umar years ago was saying that, yeah, the line for enrollment is out the door. Here we are years later, and he ain't even done renovating yet. Let's be lying. He's a habitual liar. But Perry, what would be, seriously, 20, 30? I think that that would be, I mean, is it possible? Yeah. You know, I, I want to be kind too, but is it probable? I don't think so. It's just strictly speaking on, on the trajectory of all of this, that if it takes him 13 years to get to this point, I would think that it would probably take him at least half of that. So that, well, you know, yeah, maybe 20, 30, if he keeps with this trajectory. But see, by that time, we're talking 20 years. Umar won't be a senior citizen by then. Thanks for the super chat, uh, super chat Perry. And anybody else, what do you think would be, <laughs> let, me, let me not do that, because y'all won't clown him. What would you think, at this rate, what do you think it's going to be? I would think it would have to be at least half of how long it's taken so far. And it's taken him 13 years. So I'm saying 6.5, let's say seven years. We're in 2023. I would say 2030 if he stayed on this trajectory. But see, if you guys think about it, that would be 20 years. The, the boys that were five years old when their, their mamas first donated or their daddies first do donated, now they're 25. The boys that were 10, now they're 30. At the, you know, Looking into the future, they'll be 30 years old. The ones that was 15, now they're 35. This is what you call a long con, okay? And, and with no end in sight either, because he's going to continue to try to get money out of people with this school scam indefinitely. My scam, my scammer Africans. <laughs> yeah, he'd be going off on talking about my Africans from Europe and Madagascar. He'd be saying all kind of crazy stuff. Roblox Africans. What's the game I've been playing? I've been playing this game called, game called Starfield. I absolutely love it because I love sci-fi. And it's, it's I'm on the Xbox X. I got the big TV and all that stuff. I got a mountain. I got it right here, but I need to put it on the wall. It's been negligent. My, my household duties. How's it going, Kiara? D Ski Valley says, I'm going to donate to you just because I don't like <laughs> No, you, ain't, you don't have to do that. Don't do it just because you don't. Do it because you enjoy the show. Okay. I, I, I want to say something too, D, real quick. It's not that I don't like Umar. In fact, I think he's hilarious. I think Umar's funny. And I, I was talking with someone who's very close to me. She knows who she is. Love you. And uh, she said, I miss Umar. I said, you know, I miss him. And I do. I miss because he's funny. The dude is hilarious. I don't like what he's doing, but I, I ain't going to say that I don't like him. Okay, Would I ever uh, you know, want him to meet my family? No. Well, you know, but if he was on the side of the road in a rental car, <laughs> in his rental car, and I have to be driving by, he had a flat tire, and I said he was struggling to get the flat tire. Would I help him? I would help him, man. Would you, D, would you help him? Now, I'm not saying everybody got to be like that, especially you women. I recommend that you not. But but if I saw him, I'd say, what's up, Umar? I see you struggling with that. Man, listen, I know you don't like me. I get it, bro. But I can, can I help you, bro? No, no, you hate it. I said, listen, man, I'm going to give you a donation. <laughs> he said, okay, come on. <laughs> Can I pay you to help you? He said, okay, come on. Come on in. <laughs> he probably called me the N-word. Come on in. <laughs> Let's get on over here. Get your hell over here. I will help him. I would. You know? I'm, I'm going to be real, uh, Adi. If, if Umar put up a, a campaign, a donation campaign, so that and i don't know if he still lived with his mama so that he can get his own place he don't have to live with his mama but i knew for a fact that he's gonna get it to spend on his own place. i would donate because as a man i would want to see him progress in that way so i just want to be clear it's not that i don't like the guy i don't like what he's doing i don't like what he has done in particular with scamming black people for now it's been over 13 years i think that that's it's just a horrible thing to do it and when i think about it it's one thing I don't get it. I don't get it because if if you look at the trajectory of his life, you it, at some point it should click. Wait, this ain't working. I've been in horrible situations, have my family living in horrible uh, living conditions, and and at some point I said, well, this ain't working. 
you know, what, and I have to do something different. I, I got to get things moving in the right direction, you know, it, it, but it takes a point in our life as men. Some of us, we do it later. Some of us, we do it earlier. Thank God. But but we have to say, OK, this has I got to do and I, something different. I got to move in this direction and, and I have to make some serious changes. And that, that's what I've done. And I want the same for Umar. So that's what, that's what I'm saying. It's not like I hate the guy. because If I hate the guy, I wouldn't want better for him. But I do. I want better for him. I want him to get his own place. You know, I want him to, to be able to get it, get himself cleaned up. You know, I want him to take better care of himself because it would be a wonderful story to, to show uh, people, uh, you know, how we can get our lives turned around. You know, in a lesser, in a, to a lesser degree, that's what I'm trying to show people uh, with, with my progressions in life. I mean, the fact that we're even here at, at this spot. I mean, there's a lake right outside the window. My, my uh, daughter, they look outside their window and there's a, it's just, you can see it out this window too, but uh, on, on the third floor, they look out their window and it, it, it's, and it's so beautiful. We get it in the master bedroom. I mean, we always been like that, my wife and I. If we, we would have took that master bedroom, we probably have about five more kids. Okay. Uh, things don't happen like that unless you do what needs to be done and you make changes. And that's what I want for Umar. And there were people who, who've been rooting for me. Thank y'all. God bless y'all. You know, I still got a long way to go. Did y'all was rooting for me? You've been rooting for me. That's like ENJ. They've been they've been uh with me and, and uh, my journey, even when I was in the most horrible types of situations going back over a decade ago, and they, they were there then and they're still uh, rocking with me today. That's so why I love those two. You know, I, I, I love them, you know, and, I, and they've inspired me. You know, they they got a even how their house is all set up and all this. Oh, wow, that's awesome. They do their live streams and all that. So they're, they've been very inspirational, you know. But well, the point that I want to get, I don't mean to be, uh, you know, uh, blabbing my mouth. But D, I, I just want to be clear. I want to be clear to everybody. It's not that I dislike him. I just dislike what he's doing. And there's been times where he's, he's said things about me that were absolutely false and, and there were horrible things to say about another man. Um, uh, there's 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 things that he's done doxing my personal information and talking about how he wanted his pull up team to come and, and quote unquote, have a conversation with me and that type of thing. I didn't like that either. But as a man, it, it's not like I hate him for it. It was the wrong thing for him to do. But I still would like for him to get his life together. I think it would would show it would it would it would really be a wonderful storyline for people to see because none of us as men were perfect and none of us have have been in our best situations and I'm living proof of that. But what I can say is that over the last I would say half of a decade, I've really put forth my best effort. Again, this morning I told I was apologizing to my wife. She'll tell you. Okay. And I, I mean, I had tears in my eyes crying and all that stuff. Just apologize. He said, no, I, I forgive you. Don't, don't, you know, worry about it. Look where we're at now. And I said, you know, you're right about that. I thank God. And I thank you all for being supportive and all that stuff. I still got a long way to go. I want the same thing for Umar. I want the same thing for, for, um, uh, young Pharaoh. Jay Morrison. I, I don't, I don't think of Jay Morrison that way because he's so criminal minded that it's way over the top, way out there. Same thing with Pena. I don't see that. Same thing for Polite. I don't see that for him. Uh, same thing for DJ Envy. To whatever degree he's involved and wrapped up in this, I don't see that for him either. But I do see it for Young Pharaoh, and I do see it for Umar. So a lot of people are like, what? No, no, I, I think he could. And it would be a wonderful story of a black man getting things turned around. And he could, he could, he could do it. He would just have to stop. In the first place, he would have to stop the school scam, which has been going on for 13 years. And see, if you really, if he really thought about it, if, I'm, if Umar really thought about this critically, he would come to the conclusion that the thing that has held him up the most in life, more recently in his life, has been this school scam for the last 13 years. Just like for me, for a long time, the whole conspiracy theory paradigm held me up big time, messed me up. I lost my mind in that stuff. Got, got this out there, way out there. Then I got to the spiritual I metaphysics, lost my mind in that stuff. Crap. But that was because I was already messed up from the, the conspiracy theory paradigm. But that doesn't mean that I can't I couldn't get back on track and start moving in a more uh, positive direction and be uh, more productive for my family. And that's precisely what I've done. Still got a long way to go. Well, I see the same thing. With Umar. I see that for any black man who's willing to make change. But Umar doesn't realize it. The, the thing that is the, that is he always talking about sabotage. But the thing that is sabotaging his life the most is this school scam and everything. All of the energy that he puts in to draw from people and pull out from people. Money access to women, cookies, as he calls them, all of that. There's a consequence for all that, and it doesn't benefit him in, law, in, in his life. In fact, if you look at the director of his life, 
it's only gone down. What we want to see for, for, for everyone, but for black men, we want to see the trajectory rise. And that's what, what, I, what I want to see for Umar. But it's not going to happen until he gives this, this school scam up in the first place. Is he going to do it? I doubt it. But he would have to start there. That's one thing I want to say, D, and that's one of the reasons why I was on Umar for so long, because there was a part of me that felt like if I stayed on him long enough, not only could I protect people from being exploited by him, but perhaps he would finally figure it out that, hey, wait a minute, this brother actually is trying to hit me to some game to where, wait a minute, I can get some things changed around and it would actually benefit me a long time. Because this school's thing, it ain't benefited him. I'm talking about in a real uh, uh, human way. What, what we've seen is the degradation of Umar. You go back and look at when he first started the school, Sam dressed in ties and looking sharp, had his hair cut nice, and then look at him now. Oh, Lord Jesus. I mean, I've prayed for this guy. I have. I'm, I'm sorry, D, I don't mean to be uh, going off on tangents, but I, I just want to say this. I, it's not that I don't like Umar. I, uh, I, I want him to do better. All right? Thanks for Super Chat. I appreciate it. Ross said, Lino, the rent in plain of Africa. Yeah, we're going to cover that. We're going to do, let's do this. Tomorrow we're going to do part two because we already had two hours. We're going to do part two tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to be on time. Probably start at, at six, my time. Okay, so uh, I'll try to do 5.30 my time, but I'll take a shower. I had to wait for the kids to get off the Roblox. <laughs> no, they weren't on Roblox. They was on Scratch, making Scratch things. Oh, that's the coding for children. Um, we'll come back tomorrow and we'll finish this up. And then on, on Wednesday, we'll come back and we'll do the the africa africa plane rant with the snow bunny okay <laughs> all right thanks rod and thanks everybody too i appreciate it the money got good the dope got better and he started saying everything <laughs> Just, <laughs> well listen th this is true uh because if you guys go back and listen to umar early school scam he wasn't repeating things over and over like this and he wasn't out there looking like this or none of this stuff go back i could pull up the video right now but for time's sake i ain't gonna do it there was a time where he kept himself nice. He dressed in suits and ties. And and, and again, it's, it's a persona because it's not like he was really about that. That's just his way of gaining access. Now, not to get sidetracked again, D, but someone someone had said something. I think it was a member because I made I, I did this video to talk about the I can compare a uh, comparative analysis between Jay Morris and Umar Johnson. And there are some striking similarities. I start off kind of joking. One of the similarities is they're both named Jermaine. Right. Jay Morris's name is Jermaine. Umar Johnson's name is Jermaine. Okay. But the thing is that uh, uh, Umar, uh, uh, what's his name? Now I'm thinking Jermaine. Um, Jay Morrison, um, there was a time where he, the way he carried himself early on was suits and ties. Okay. And that's when he was talking about how he was a real estate guru. Okay. Any, anybody remember this? Hit the one. But see, when the money started coming in, that's when he started getting in. Wow, this is deep. He started getting into the bling bling. You guys remember this? Hit the one. And it was all flashy and all this. Okay, And then every once in a while, he'll go back to the suit, this and that. But I, you, if you guys remember, there was a time where he really dressed apart and he presented himself in a certain way. Now, think about Wow, get this. There was a time when young Pharaoh, when he before he really uh, caught on where he dressed a particular way. He talked about the black woman was God and this type of thing. But then when the money started coming in, everything began to shift. He started wearing, wearing more jewelry and the bling bling and the medallions and all this stuff. Then he started calling women bitches and all this type of every other time, every other word. Okay. Polite. When he first came in onto the scene, he really was coming from the vantage point of a pseudo Nuwabian and he dressed apart, but he also used to dress in African attire because he talked about how he was, uh, I can't remember, I, mean, I could pull up the video, but he talked about the percentage of, of uh, Nigerian that he was. Now, I'll say this too, that uh, me and my wife, we did DNA tests and I actually have a significant percentage of my DNA that is Nigerian in the West Coast of Africa, Nigerian mainly, okay? I'm not related to him, no, okay? I know that for a fact. Okay, I don't know that for, but I'm just gonna say it anyway. <laughs> But the point being is that if you if you notice that what happened with with this is interesting, what happened with polite? As more money came in, more scamming and he's on Mount Rushmore. Him, Umar, Jay Morrison and Fania, those are the top four right there. I wish someone would, would do a meme for me. If y'all do one, we, I'll start a series and we can get it all four of those guys. But we already get in Umar. Okay? But if someone wants to do like a, a, you know, like a graphic. I'll send you a cash app, OK? Just let me know in advance. If I want to have three people do it, then all y'all want. Uh -uh. <laughs> I'm, I'm frugal. But if you guys remember, 
um, with um, young Pharaoh, you see that transition. And then with Polite, you see the same thing. At first, he came in with the dashikis, and he's talking about how his wife is in their Nigeria, and she would dress. I think even when they had their wedding or so-called wedding, that he was dressing in, in the Nigerian attire, which was nice, not really nice fits, but he would dress in all that stuff stuff. But then it began to change. When he started New Covenant, it became more militarized to a degree, not to an extreme degree, but you start to see this transition. His rhetoric began to change. Then he went straight black conscious where he's talking about white man, this and white man that y'all remember this. And then he that's when he came into his militancy. But what was happening was a transition, not only in, in terms of his rhetoric, but it was fueled. The money was fueling this. And what happens for people is that as the money comes, it actually fuels what their desires happen to be. Now, what's my desire? It's this. I want my family to be comfortable. Do I want myself to be comfortable? Not necessarily. I was talking to my wife about that this morning. Bought my daughter a guitar. Don't tell nobody because it's gonna come on Wednesday. Because she want to play guitar. I said, okay, that's what that's what I do. You ain't gonna see me up with jewelry and, and a fancy car. It's just not going to happen because I, I don't believe in that. Okay. Now, and I'm no in no shade, if, in no disrespect to anybody who if that's what you're into, that's fine. But what I'm saying is for these individuals, if they're getting money out of the community and, and siphoning money out of the black community and scamming to get the money. What you see is that the money begins to reinforce and give them the opportunity to, to pursue what their true desires happen to be. When, when they didn't have the money, they didn't have the money and the resources to do it. Well, look at what happened with Polite. Think about this. So that they're, they're you know, New Wabi and all this kind of stuff. He has New Covenant, which is spinoff. And then he has people marching and standing around looking goofy and black men looking up there, standing on stage. Looking, where are they at now? But then he started to get into selling products and, and services and books and you know, paper to, to, to get your, uh, to fix your status and all status correction and all this stuff. That's all scam, but more money was coming in. Then the mentorship program, look at crypto roots, rest in peace, more money coming in. But the whole time you see the transition, then he, be, he goes to the bling bling. Then his wife start to so-called wives, they start to dress more hoochified and, and got their stuff all out and all this and the things all out and all tight, 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 tight. Well, if you're the man, why are your woman dressing like that? And if you're all so-called, look, we're all about the black conscience. Well, why are they dressing like that? Then? Unless that is part of what you want them to be. And I'm going to tell you right now, most women ain't trying to dress like that. And if, if you are, and I'm not knocking you. Now, you want to put something on for your man, you going out? I get it. But if you out here talking about black power, your woman up here looking for like a Jezebel. <laughs> and you cool with it. Something wrong, in my opinion, unless that's what you always wanted. See? So the money comes in and he has the resources now to do these type things. Then I remember he moved over to the West Coast. He got up there in the Hollywood and he started really flipping out. Hmm? And at one point he's at the six wives, back down to four, back down to three, then back up to five, back and forth, just running through them, just running through them. Huh? But what enabled him to do that? It was the money. But see, what these scammers don't realize is that the money that they desire so they can fulfill their desires, because the money provides them with the resources and the power to fulfill their desires is exactly what's destroying them in the first place. Look at where Umar's at today. Look, look, look at where look at where Polite is at today. He's in jail. And guess what? All of that sexual deviancy and polite that he was able to keep under wraps for all of them years because it was there a long time ago okay he was able to keep it under wraps but because he had resources to to begin to manipulate people because he had money and funds to do it it ultimately led him to the point where he could fulfill those twisted oh i was gonna say it but i ain't gonna say that deviant sexual behaviors and desires and he's able to fulfill it but now look where he's at he's in jail now and he's gonna be in there for I think he got a seven year sentence, six or seven years, uh, and he has to serve a per certain percentage of that. Uh, so he's going to be in there for at least six and a half, something like that. He should have been there for 25, in my opinion. But the, but the point is that that wouldn't have happened if he had not had access to resources and the resources gained, gained, gained him more access to women and, and the women that had children. And guess what? All of that. All of this was foreshadowed anyway because he had already had the other little girl and groomed her. And guess what? His so-called wife, the main one, whatever, Aminette or whatever, she's in on all of this. 
they groomed this young lady when she was a young child in in uh, uh what's his name house of consciousness i can't remember uh, saw netter knew about all this back then because he talked about it and how one of his relatives his wife's relatives had a had a daughter uh and that uh the daughter ended up running away with polite and the mama she probably used to deal with the mama of the daughter but the mama left and, and he didn't say why but I, I we can kind of figure it out now but the little girl goes on and then she calls him daddy and 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 then anyway this is crazy so what i'm getting at d is the money got good for all of these individuals but ultimately it led them to self-destructive behavior because it enabled them to do those things and to fulfill those desires that were self-destructive in the process. Okay. Now, let me say one other thing, we, because we got to get going. We, we're going to go for another, uh, let's see, we're going to go for another 20 minutes. We're going to do part two tomorrow. I'm grateful to everyone. I'm grateful for, for to everyone for being here, uh, everyone who stuck with me over the years, even going back to when, when I was in a really bad place in life and i'm still not where i want to be okay i have regrets every day i wake up and have to deal with this trust me it's not easy but the idea is that as a man you figure out where you're at at that moment and you start to make progressions it's that's it's that simple it's not easy but it's really that simple i'm talking about philosophically speaking it's that easy i'm appreciative of all y'all thank y'all for coming here and i'm also thankful uh, thankful to people who supported me in the past whether it was for a project for personal reasons what have you but there was a point where where i i realized that that i had to figure out a way to move beyond that. Otherwise, I wouldn't get to my next level, my next level, my next level. See? And so what has happened is that over the last, I would say over the last five years now, th th that things have changed for in, in a positive direction. And in the meantime, the money that has come in, I have not used that to self-destruct. See, that's another huge difference. Is that that's why I don't get it. I don't see why Umar continues to do what he's doing. I get it. The money's coming in. But look where he's at in life. Polite. Yeah, the money was coming in. But look where he's at in life. Jay Morrison. Yeah, the money's coming in. But look where he's at in life. Caesar Fania, the money's coming in. But look where he's at in life. And all the way across the board, including young Pharaoh. You know, I'll pray for young Pharaoh. I do. Because he's still relatively young. But look where he's at in life. See, so what I'm getting at is that the, that money will bring out the best in you or the worst in you or both. But the idea is that if you have good intentions from the beginning, no amount of money is going to corrupt you. See, but what has happened is that Umar was corrupt before the money started coming in. So the money just enhances his, his corruptness, if you will. Jay Morrison, same thing. Polite, same thing. And Caesar Fania, same thing. Right, but I still don't get it. At some point, they would it should click in their mind. Wait, this ain't working, and it's not going to work long time, a long term. But I think the greed plays a point, a part in it. Uh, you know, uh, the the sense of power and control. You know that they feel like they have over people. See, I can walk away from YouTube for eight months, and I'm good. You know, I'm, I'm good. I don't have, but but I miss you all. You see, but it just goes to show you that that I'm not on here, uh, you know, to just consume. No, I want to give something to people. And if people enjoy it, then they enjoy it and they reciprocate. That's fine. I appreciate that, too. If not, that's fine, too. I still love you. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Deesky. I'm sorry. I've been I've been ranting. We, we got to get going here. So we're going to go for another. Uh, let's see. We'll go for another 20 minutes. We'll come back tomorrow to do uh, part two. And then probably on Wednesday, we'll come back and, and we'll get into the, to the, cause people been talking about it. We'll get into the airplane video. And then I, at some point I want to get to the Jada Pickett uh, Smith uh, video as well. Uh, reaction to Umar. Okay. Uh, let me get back in here. Let me get to these super chats real quick. Then we get back uh, to, to watching these videos. Cecil, how's it going, Cecil? Uh, Cecil says, greetings. KKC showed a clip of Umar asking for $500 from a woman to have a date with him. Is it a more recent clip? I'm, I'm not surprised because I listen. Some of y'all may remember this. Some of y'all may not. Some of you may not even uh, know about this. But there was a time where Umar was talking about um, doing uh, having women pay to go out on dates with him. Is that what he's saying? Women? Yeah. Well, no, they had date. But the way that he was saying it was like an, an auction type of thing. <laughs> Boy, this brings back. There's so many stories with this guy. There's such so much history. This was long. This was years ago. But 
He was talking, you know how they have these auction date auction things, but that's what he was talking about. He was going to do. So that's no different than this. And, and KKC may be talking about the same thing I'm talking about. But if this is a more recent video, then it's, it's probably something different. All right. But th this was many years ago. And he was talking about how the women were going to pay a certain amount of money and they go out on dates. <laughs> Real quick, Cecil, I, I meant to say this earlier, but I forgot. There, there was a member who mentioned this because when I did the video to talk about in comparing Jay Morrison and Umar Johnson, they said one of the big differences is that Jay Morrison, his motivation was money. OK, he's already has a wife, and he, you know, and by, by all accounts, I, I don't see him as a person who's trying to go after women and all. Now, it may be possible, but I don't have no proof. Ever, but for, from what I see, I don't see him as if that's his motivation, that he's just trying to gain access to women uh, because he wants to, to get in them draws. No, it's about the money. Whereas with Umar, it's about the money and it's about them draws. So that's one of the differences between the two. And I think different people have different motivations. See, uh, some people, it, it's not even about the money. It's, it's about um, the, uh, the fame or at least what they perceive to be Internet fame. But some people, uh, and it's mainly these men, uh, it's mainly males. I mean, there are some females. I, I gave the example of, of Zaza Ali. We can also, the other lady I talked about earlier that, some of the motivations may be just the money. Some people, it's, it's, they just want the attention. I get it. But with Umar, it, it's, it's about the money. It's about the women. And it's also about the attention because he, he, that's just one of his, his personality traits where he needs that attention. Jay Morrison, it's more about the money more than anything else. Okay. Thanks, Cecil, for the Super Chat. I appreciate it. Everyone else, too, sit in the Super Chat. Let me get to the rest of these, and then we're going to get back to this. Uh, Perry says, I wasted away the biggest real estate growth opportunity in history right into a recession. 235, if he's lucky, the, the cost of repair is way higher. Now, um, he wasted away the biggest real estate growth opportunity. Yeah, I, You know, this is interesting because we can look at Umar and the acquisition of these properties back in 2019. and then, But you can also look at Jay Morrison when he started this real estate fund and the amount of money. How is it possible that with what has happened uh it was really like what about maybe a two year period with real estate and, and just it just skyrocketing. How, how is it possible that they weren't unable to maximize on that? Even with Umar with, with the property that he, he purchased, how, how is it possible he wasn't able to maximize on that? You know, now that I'm thinking about a pair, even with uh, Caesar Pena, if you're collecting millions of dollars, close to $100 million, why weren't you able to capitalize on the housing market or, or the property? You know, because stuff has, well, it's crazy. Now, things have simmered down more recently, but just think about this for a moment. It, it's absolutely phenomenal. In particular with Jay Morris, you would think that if you such real estate guru and all this stuff, which is fake anyway, all that was fake. That's just persona. You come up on $12 million, shouldn't you be able to turn some sort of a profit? And the black house don't count. That's a liability. That ain't, that ain't making no money. Yeah, this, this is a good point. 2035, if he's like, yeah, I think that I think that that's a more realistic projection for Umar in terms of getting this whole thing done. You know, 2035. But then if it's 2035, we're talking about 25 years since he started. What's the point? I mean, he's going to be a senior citizen by then. <laughs> Thank for the super chat, Perry. Okay. Self-made, how's it going? Says, I wouldn't be surprised if the neighborhood would be gentrif uh, gentrified by 2030. Would someone buy the property, pay uh, the liens and take over? That's possible too. That's possible. Or he can flip it. He could do that too. I don't want to give him any ideas, but it's possible that, that that's something that he's considered that, okay, I'm just holding. And I've talked about this before, that it may have been his strategy anyway. Okay, let me not worry about this other side of the street. I'm just going to flip it anyway. I'm, but let me give the illusion of progress on the other side and make people believe, and they keep sending me money, I'll keep collecting money, just tricking it off, ain't no real problem, school ain't gonna open at a certain point, I just say, you know, it's just too much to sabotage, blah, 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 he'll blame something, somebody, could correct that, it's y'all's fault, and then he just, he sells them. Takes the money, re-ups, says, we're gonna buy another property, and we're gonna do it over here, because this property is better, it's in a better neighborhood, blah, 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 and he keeps, it's a long con, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. This is a really good point, though, uh, right quick, right here, that it's amazing that, that he was unable to, and, and not just Umar, but, you know, you're going to look at Jay Morrison, too, or even Cesar Pena, that, hey, but how is it possible that you're going to trick off all this money in that with the housing market being how it had, it was for about two years, for almost three years? Uh, Linux, did you also? No, I didn't learn Linux. I mean, I took uh, classes that where they, they talked about Linux, but it wasn't something. We mainly did uh, Mac and PC, uh, but, of course, it's something that I've, I've I should have done, but it wasn't part of the coursework, you know. Um, there were modules that used Linux, but in terms of like knowing it, it's just it's just not something that that I was uh, I ever had to do. Uh, I got through it, you know. 
Um, but there were modules where we'd have to go to run these programs. We would run them through a PC platform. I mean, it's all online, but it was to be a PC platform. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It, or to be a Mac or to be a Linux. And, and, but they'll give you instructions on, on what to do. It's just, it's a lot different. Yeah, you know that. But it's not something that uh, that I, I learned outright. Uh, thanks uh, for the super chat as well. Everyone else too, uh, thanks for all the super chats. I appreciate it. What's up, Des Des Karma says, what's good with your brother? Good, I'm good, man. Good to see you too, man. Thanks for, for tuning on in. It's, it, I mean, some of y'all ain't seen in such a long time. It's good, good, to, good to see you. Thanks for being here. We almost done too. Genghis Khan says, can you close out with the biggie video? <laughs> Wait, which one are you talking about? You talking about the Tupac video? Let me know which one because I, I can find it. If I if I if I forget or if I can't find it, we can always come. Um, we can come back up tomorrow. I'll, I'll have it up uh, for you all. Uh, somebody asked if I'm in the IT field. No, I'm, I'm not in the IT field yet. The closest I've gotten, I got to the third interview for this one IT related job, and it wasn't outright in IT, but it's it was close enough. Uh, I would have been a foot in the door, and I got to the third interview, and I just I wasn't hired. And I was like, ah, you know, it, it could be it can be um discouraging, um. But uh, I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at right now with my current job because the, the schedule is good for what's taking place in the household. There's a lot of changes, a lot of changes. Um, and um, I also have, uh, there's three certifications that I want to pick up too um, over the, I want to do them over the next year, but we'll just have to wait until, I'm, I'll, I'll see, I'm taking my time with it. I'm just thankful that I was able to get to school. I got the degree of sitting over there um, and things are going a lot better in life, okay? Yeah, we've been really blessed. And, and I'll talk more about that for y'all members. I don't tend to talk about personal stuff here, um, just, just for the audience in general, because uh, I found that, uh, you know, people have used it against me and, and uh, twisted things up. And I just, I just I, I, it's just something that's it's really left a, it's just, it's, it's, I just don't, I just don't like it. You know, so what I tend to do is for members, I'll talk more about what's going on with the family and all that stuff. Things, things have been uh, going well. Okay, that's use one button. All right. Okay, if I'm missing any super chats, y'all let me know. Uh, I'll get back into the chat. Let's get back to this, man. But let's at least get to do this video right here, and then uh, we'll come back tomorrow. Here we go. Can so African thanks, uh, donors, Don. Caribbean donors, my donors in Asia, my donors in Australia, and of course, all my donors from across the United States, Los Angeles. Oakland brothers and sisters, my Georgia, my Carolina, my Maryland, my DC, my Philly, my Jersey, my Boston okay, I, donors, I'll pull it up. my Kentucky I'll pull it up. donors, my Tennessee donors, my Minnesota donors, my Illinois donors, my Michigan, where are my Ohio donors at right now? He's still going. brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am yes, proud exactly I and said. I am pleased yeah. to announce to you at this How moment, doing, Black August 11th of 2023 i'm live king black august 11th of 2023 <laughs> he said i'm live king mind your business don't come up over here messing up my vibe king i'm live don't say nothing don't don't <laughs> no, just, what's up erica and Kel's in the building too. What's up, Avera? My non I never got through that whole movie. I need to watch it. <laughs> watch that too. Rivendell. What's up, Brandon? <laughs> I would I would love to live in Rivendell. That's that's the one place I love to live in Rivendell. <laughs> All right. Let me stop. It was, yeah, I know. I know. And there's still no schools. <laughs> this guy looked like my cousin. And he's still no, there's still no schools. Here we go. I'm on a live stream, King. <laughs> I'm here for a minute, though. Swing back around. Okay, mm -hmm. I got you. He ain't fooling me, family. You are not fooling me, King. He said, swing back around. <laughs> he said, come on back through on the flip side. <laughs> he said, you know what? I'm live through right now, so I can't uh, come on back through in a minute. <laughs> Boy, this house is it got echoes all over because the ceilings are real high. That's one thing. I, I don't because that means more stairs. <laughs> Sometimes I'll be like, I don't want to go up these stairs. Right? Did these children drink all the juice? Oh, they drank the juice I wanted. These kids they ain't got no respect. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got to give me a little. He said, come on back through, family. <laughs> he, he said, bust a U in about 20 or 30 minutes, family. We can go on and 
Yeah. <laughs> he ain't fooling nobody. All right. Well, I want that juice. Them kids, they don't care. They don't care. They say, uh-uh. They say, you know what? I'm drinking all <laughs> I'm drinking all that juice. Kids love juice. They love them some juice. All right. That we have finally completed <laughs> all of the renovations for the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey RBG international leadership academy for pan-african excellence i'ma say it again today august 11th 2023 black august we have completed all of the renovations for the frederick douglas marcus garvey rbg international leadership academy for pan-african excellence i gotta say it one more time I got to say it one more time because it feels good to finally say that after everything we've been through the past four years and six months. It feels good to finally say that after everything we've been through the past nine years and six months since we began the fundraiser. I am proud to report to all my African family around the world because this is a pan-African school, a pan-African mission. Yeah, family, and this school came said. together by all members of the African family around the world. So Africa is celebrating with us. The Caribbean is celebrating with us. Our European African brothers and sisters, the ones in Asia, in Australia, Canada, and the South Pacific, my Brazilian Africans, my Honduran Africans. Yeah, I know it's more than nine years. That's what he said, though. He's re no, Brandon, he's reporting that the renovations are done. Isn't that what he's saying? I think that's what he's saying. Hit the one. I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to figure it out myself. Yeah, I know, not one student. Uh, no, seriously, isn't that what he's saying? Hit the one if that's what, if he's not saying it, hit the two. How's it going, uh, career out your hair? You got your glasses on tonight, huh? <laughs> he's, I'm going out tonight. I gotta see them kings. I gotta see them. <laughs> do your thing. Say, do your thing. Say, say it one more time. <laughs> the car. Don't call him a wildebeest. Come on now. <laughs> okay. Good to see you, sis. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. What's up, Jesus Christ? That's what it sounds like he's saying is that it's all done. Did he really say that? We got Cuban Africans and Rican Africans who are celebrating with us. We did Rican. it, brothers and sisters. They finished the HVAC today. We did it, brothers and sisters. We did it, brothers and sisters. Electric <laughs> is done. HVAC is done. Plumbing is done. Sprinklers is done. Fire is done. Burglar is done. All systems are done. Burglar's done. <laughs> you can't make this up we ain't gonna get to no other video tonight we just gonna finish this one <laughs> i know yeah i know i know that's what i'm saying ain't nobody forgot he said reekin <laughs> honey pot he said it's a reekin we the reekins is my reekin african family <laughs> <laughs> this guy is crazy. <laughs> it's the same. I could walk away for eight months and come back, and it's the same thing. So, what do we got to do next? Listen up, brothers and sisters. Oh, I can't wait to get to Harlem, New York on Thursday, August the 17th. I'm going to talk my shit. I said when I get to Harlem, New York on Thursday, August the 17th, I want them New York City haters. I want them New York City haters to be in the Alhambra ballroom. 99% of New York City ride with Dr. Umar. 99% of New York City ride with Dr. Anybody here from New York, let me know. Let me, you ride with one? Dr. Umar. 99% of New York City ride with Dr. Umar, but I got a 1%. 1% conscious haters up there. Conscious haters up there, so-called conscious oh, community haters Lord, in New God. York City who was talking a lot of crap, saying I was stealing the money, I was scamming, wasn't going to be no school. Make sure y'all are inside the Alhambra ballroom. Make sure you in Harlem 
on Thursday, <laughs> August the 17th, the 136th solar return of the greatest of the great. I said the 136th solar return of the greatest of the great. I'm talking about his I'm excellence. Uh, uh, 1% is still a lot. How many people are in New York? What's 1% of New York? That's still a lot of people. Anyway. See, the prophet of Pan-Africanism, the most honorable Marcus Garvey. When we celebrate Garvey Thursday, I'm coming to New York, mission accomplished. I said, when we celebrate Garvey at the Alhambra Ballroom yeah, cute, yeah, on Thursday, cute, August the 17th you like you, in Harlem, New York at 7 <laughs> p.m., I'm going to talk my talk. And I want all you conscious haters who was running your trap for the past four years, who ain't done nothing for the people, ain't built nothing for the people. All you do is sell your scams to the people. Make sure you in the Alhambra ballroom, please. Look who's talking. This whole school is a scam. Boy, this is crazy. Please make sure you in the Alhambra ballroom. And then we go on to Frederick Douglass grave site. The next day, Friday, August the 17th, we're in Rochester. Eight months later, he's still talking about grave sites. We have to stop this. We have to stop. It has to stop, Umar. Listen, I I, I, had, I stopped. I'd stop for eight months, but you got to stop too. Okay, it's, it don't work. I can't just stop and you keep going. If you stop, I'll stop. Okay, if I stop, you should stop. This makes sense to people. Hit the one. You can't, this can't, how long does this go? I mean, come on, man. You And you're still going, ne next thing I'm going to see, you're going to be in your mama closet. Uh, still in your mama closet. It has to stop. You have to stop with the school scam. You got to stop with the grave digging and the, <laughs> the grave robbing. It has to stop. You got to stop with the living in the mama closet. That poor, I feel bad for that closet. Leave it at the closet. Leave it alone. Mama closets have rights, okay? Mama closets lives matter too, Mark. It has to stop. I don't know. He probably not move now, but anyway. The New York Frederick Douglass grave site, the libation will be from 10 until 11. All my Rochester Africans, join me at the namesake grave site of this school. Join me at the namesake gravesite. Namesake gravesite. <laughs> namesake gravesite. Wow. <laughs> I got to change my thumbnail. Names, because I don't look like that anymore, okay? Beard all grayed out. <laughs> The only thing that's the same is the bald. But other than that, <laughs> that bit is from like 10, 15 years ago. <laughs> that's what he said. I know. I know it don't make no sense. He's funny. <laughs> he said spooky. He know how the week coming up. He going to have them haunted houses ready to I, I, I propose that that's what he talking about. He talk about these bad boys, these trials renovated for Halloween. <laughs> Everything ready to go, Phil. He got the goons and the goblins. We, we didn't have to put up no decorations. <laughs> There's plenty of cobwebs. <laughs> I saw the ghost last week, man. We ready, we ready to go, family. <laughs> now I got it. I don't. We don't figure it out. He said, he said the rid of faces are done. No, he's talking about he, he's been prepared. There's been prepped. The buildings are prepped for the Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't gonna have no candy, though, family. The kids got to bring their own candy. We we not we worked it. It's for kids. This is the only haunted house where you got to bring your own candy, kids. We ain't playing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's almost saying I'm cloud chasing. <laughs> I'm cloud chasing every eight months. <laughs> <laughs> hey.
Every eight bucks on the side of the cloud chase. <laughs> Y'all funny. That's fine. <laughs> I got haters too, I guess. I love y'all too, though. Okay. <laughs> Boy, let me get up out of it. I got to get up out this chat room tonight. <laughs> G Hunter House 2023. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna have he gonna have Freddie Douglas up in there. Freddie Douglas, Marcus Garvey. <laughs> All right, let, let, let's <laughs> Binky the Bando <band> Burby, <laughs> dead in the corner and shit. <laughs> All right, <laughs> okay. Let me get up out of here. <laughs> this is gonna go forever. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, KKC? He texted me earlier. Hope you're doing all right, bro. Woo. All right. I know that mural, that's part of it, Big Sis. That mural scared them kids off real quick. I can show it to y'all right now. Whew. I know I said we only gonna go for 20 more minutes. We're gonna go for 16 more minutes now. So I want to get through this video. I want to show y'all the ENJ video just so y'all can see what the thing looked like from the outside. <laughs> Won't you come on down? <laughs> Who am I going to start promoting that haunted house in the next couple of days? <laughs> we ain't going to have no candy for your family, but we got plenty of plenty of tricks. <laughs> we got a place for the kids to run through or the band. No, we ain't got no furniture up in there. They lights, because some of the lights are on, but we're going to turn all of them off. Won't you come on down? <laughs> Two for 99, family. To get in is two for 99. All right. <laughs> I know. I know. Good crush that is ruthless. I'll tell you that right now. Whew, okay. <laughs> okay, we're gonna, yeah, I I'll, I gotta remember. We're gonna get the big big biggie video. Somebody gotta remind me again, though. It's not it's not biggie, it's uh it's isn't it the Tupac, right? I don't think there's a video. Yeah, here's a Tupac one. I'll, I'll find it. Okay. Uh, Umar and Trump should do a comedy tour called The Best of Both Worlds. <laughs> no, seriously, though, uh, to love myself, I, I think Umar is hilarious. I, I think he's absolutely hilarious. I think he's one of the funniest people. Uh, and I, I've missed him because of the, the laughter that he brings. You know, it, it, it's the, the thing is that it's not... Uh, that's why I'm saying it's not that I, I don't like the guy. I don't like what he's doing. But the, the truth is that a lot of this, it, it is funny. Let, let me give an example to love myself. So it, it's wrong. It's tragic. But there's humor. And I think that's part of black humor, though, too, is that we tend to find humor in things that, you know, other people are like that. But that's why is that funny? Well, that's that's our coping mechanism. And if, if you look at uh, Umar, even how he promotes and how he has promoted this idea, this project. And again, if he fulfilled his obligations, it'd be no big deal. But, but he, he has it and he could still collect money. But if you look at how he's promoted it, it's comedy. It's hilarious. From the jump, when he talked about how he was going to buy a college campus, St. Paul's, and how it was going to be a boarding school. That's, huh? Who are you? He don't know nothing about none of that. He talking about how he's going to teach the boys how to float ships and all this type of thing. Teach them how to fly airplanes and helicopters. I kid you not. I don't have the video, but a long time ago, he said that, that they were going to teach the boys how to fly helicopters. And when you enroll your child, it's a boarding school. So when you come to see your child, the child's going to pick you up from the airport on the helicopter. I'm paraphrasing and drive and fly you back to the school. So what? They're going to have a helipad at the school, too. I mean, some of it is so out there and outlandish that it's it's hilarious because it's it's just it's so far it's far beyond what's reasonable or rational, and it's just overselling. And con artists often do that; they'll oversell uh, to what they're promising to you. They'll say it's going to be this, it's going to be this, and we're going to have, uh, uh, you know, it's going to be all vegan and raw food for the kids, and and they're going to be able to stay on campus and and uh, all. But none of that's, you know, anyway. Yeah, he, he's hilarious. He's one of the funniest people I've seen online ever, okay? including comics, you know, but, but just in general as, as a person, he's, he's hilarious. Okay, 
Uh, yeah, the FMG helipad. Thanks for a super chat uh, uh, to love myself. I appreciate it. Okay, let me let, let's get back to this video. I'm gonna go find that that uh, the Tupac video we so we can close out with that. But I want to play finish with this one, and I want to play you E and J's video, and then uh, we'll close out with the Tupac. All right, here we go. Of this great institution, we are going to Frederick Douglass's gravesite. My four times great grand cousin Frederick Douglass. My four times great grand cousin. Okay, that's a lie. He's still running with that lie. It's, it's absolutely crazy. His daddy took a DNA test, and, and the DNA test came back and showed conclusively that they're not related to uh, to by DNA uh, to Frederick Douglass. But Umar still uh, talks about this, still continues with this lie. But his daddy told him the lie in the first place. Listen, Frederick Douglass, we going. How's it going, that agent? Yeah, I, I, I would like to, but I want to do a series to go back and do polite and go back to uh, videos uh, from. Um, Crypto Roots, rest in peace, but then bring it forward to more recent videos with Polite and then bring it all the way to where Polite is at. I want to do that. I also want to get into Jay Morrison a bit. I think other people have covered him enough, but I would like to get into him a bit too. Um, but I, I plan on um, doing uh, consistently live streaming here on YouTube. Okay. And I think, thank, again, thank you all for being also. Thanks for all the support. You know, people send me cash apps and the, the PayPal. I appreciate it in the super chats. Um, that does help and I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, so let's get back to this. I'm, I want to get through this real quick. So it, it's not a long video. Here we go. Went to his grave site on Friday, August the 18th. If you are in upstate yeah, I, I New York, too. join us at the Frederick Douglass grave site, Mount Hope Cemetery. I hear you on that. Mount Hope Cemetery right. in Rochester, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. I'm going to do a libation. And before today, I didn't know that this would be a victory libation in the name of Frederick Douglass. I didn't know that I was going to Rochester to deliver the good news to the great ancestor. I didn't know I was going to Rochester to deliver the good news to the great ancestor. Yeah, what's up? But that's going to be sure a did. victory libation well, at the Frederick Douglass gravesite. I'm going to let the great ancestor know we did it and we did it in your name. We did it and we did it in your name. We did it oh, and we did it in your name. What what is this? In their name? Now I, I you know it, I could say if someone says in God's name or Jesus' name, I get that, but come on, man. Y'all don't think that that's a little spooky? It, it's just it's just not necessary. It only it, to me personally. I, I I well that's just me. I, I've. Uh, I tried to, to get more, uh, you know, my relationship with God and more secure. I, I, part of me being away to getting that together. We've been blessed accordingly. Thank, thank the Lord. Okay. I'm not religious, but I just want to be clear about that. But it just, it, it, Frederick Douglass has nothing to do with these abandoned buildings up there in Wilmington. And when I played a video before we close out of, of ENJ showing more, re they went up there recently with the conditions of the outside. Frederick Douglass ain't got nothing to do with it. Marcus Garvey ain't got nothing to do with it. Nothing. So what are you, what is Umar talking about? Your analytical critique is needed to balance out, out the lies. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I, I try to be analytical. I try to be humorous though too, because I think it makes it easier, you know, to digest. But yeah, I think critical thinking is important in all of this. Just asking critical questions. I think if that's another critical question. What what is his fascination with Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey to where he's deifying them in this way? And and he has a school named after them, but their their philosophies are in total contradiction to each other. Did y'all know that? See, Marcus Garvey was talking about going back to Africa, even though he never went to Africa. Uh, whereas Frederick Douglass was an integrationist. Huh? Anyway. And then we go into Atlanta, Georgia. And then we go into Atlanta, Georgia. Where my Georgia Africans at? Here we go. Where my Georgia Africans at? State of my paternal ancestors. Where my Georgia Africans at? I'm going to see y'all at the Shrine of the Black Madonna, 3 o'clock on Saturday, August the 19th. No I'm going to see y'all at the Shrine of the Black Madonna, 3 o'clock on Saturday, August the 19th. I'm going to see you at the Shrine of the Black Madonna, Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard at 3 o'clock on August the 19th and i'ma talk my speech 99 percent of atlanta loves dr umar 
99% of Atlanta loves Dr. Umar. 99% of Atlanta loves Dr. Umar, but we got that 1%. Just like in New York, Atlanta is a Dr. Umar city. New York is a... Is that sniffing again? Boy, he looking bad. Dr. Umar city, but we got that 1% in Atlanta who don't like me. So you haters in Georgia who had all that crap to say about what I was doing with the school money, will you please pull up to the shrine of the black man? Who is he talking about? Y'all don't have any idea of someone in Atlanta. Madonna at three o'clock on Saturday. Will you please pull up to the shrine of the black Madonna on Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard at three o'clock next Saturday, August the 19th, as we celebrate his excellency, as we celebrate his excellency, the father of modern Pan-Africanism and the father of modern black nationalism, the most honorable Marcus Garvey. Brothers and sisters, then we go into Petersburg, Virginia. Where my Petersburg, Virginia <laughs> Africans at? Virginia, where What's you at one time? Virginia, where you at one time? We in Petersburg, Virginia for- Does he show that the renovations are done? the Gabriel Prosser lecture in Petersburg, brothers and sisters. Four o'clock, Sunday, <laughs> August the 20th. Four o'clock, Sunday, August the 20th. Petersburg. Boy, you guys are, you guys are mean. <laughs> Captain's orc. That's funny right there. I'm going to have to use that next time we had a grave site. <laughs> it's a Catholic over cookies family. <laughs> Catholic saw the opposite of the cookies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Diametrically opposed. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Cookies give life, casket take them. <laughs> Cookies give pleasure, caskets take it away. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> this is, is wild. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. I, I, I'm wondering if he's going to actually show that they had the renovation. Virginia, there. 4 o'clock, Sunday, August the 20th. Uh, this video is from, um, the let's see, the 12th. Yeah, this video is from the 12th, uh, October 12th. So this is about um, 11 days ago. And then the next day, and then the next day, solar return for King Kong consciousness. <laughs> the next day, solar return for the Prince of Pan-Africanism. The next he day. He's going to start asking for gifts. Why? Solar return for Intercontinental Ifa Tune Day. We will be celebrating the greatest revolutionary in American history. I'm talking about the prophet Nat Turner. If you ain't reserved your ticket. He's a prophet. What is going on? For Nat Turner, this is a historic Nat Turner because I'm coming with the good news. I'm coming to let my Virginia brothers and sisters know. I'm coming to Petersburg and Drewryville to let my Virginia brothers and sisters know the Frederick Douglass you and sure Marcus Garvey Academy renovation. And this is something I, I don't want to get into this, but real quick, this is something that that I noticed with, with him is, is when when the, the people pull up and he talk about I'm blocked from it, but come on back through. He start getting, he starts getting like this. This ain't the first time, you know what I mean? Oh, uh, 724 likes. You got the oh, yeah. This is thank y'all so much. I that's, that's really good. We got still have about 870 people here, so that's really good. Anyone if you haven't like hit the like button, if you can hit it, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, I know it is. It's crazy. It's it's amazing that he's still doing because I ain't I ain't looked into no Umar stuff for like eight months. This has been over eight months. And then before that, I think I did a, a series of videos, but then before that, before that was probably like a three-month break or something like that, because I was focusing on graduating. So over the last year, very little that I, I but here we are, and it, it's the same. He's just doing the same thing. Ain't nothing changed. That's incredible. You would think that that well, anyway. See, life is really about progressions. It, it really is. And, and it's it's not so much about where you're at. I think where you're at in life is important to, to understand because you have to figure out if you're not happy with where you're at, 
how did you get there? Because however it was that you got there, that's what you should not be doing. You got to let that go and you start doing things that will get you to whatever your next level is. You would think that over the last year that we would see Umar progress in his life. But when I'm seeing this, and this is just me seeing it after, you know, I spent a lot of time in the past focusing on, on his, his uh, progression and regression. What I see here is it's the same thing and it's just more regression. And he hasn't improved the quality of his life whatsoever. That's sad. See, no man should want to live their life that way. We all make mistakes. We've all been down and out. I'm a perfect example of that. I'm not proud about it either. Trust me. Okay. Plus, I got I got five kids and a wife and to have that too. And, and just to see where I was at, let's say six years ago, five, even five years ago, let's say six, seven years ago. Uh, it's it's hard to grapple with. But however, it doesn't mean that that's what defines who I am as a person. That's who I was, but it's not who I am. And so with Umar, I would like to see him think about, OK, who do I want to be as opposed to doing the same? It just makes no it's insane. It's insanity. You're doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. But the result is the same. He's talking about the same thing. He's still uh, uh, sniffing and blinking. He's still not. Well, look, look at him. It's the same thing. See, this is not the way. See, and this is for all. This is another lesson I think that we can learn from as we analyze Umar is that just in life, this it's as an example. This is not the way. This is why I think if Umar decided to get his life together and, and just went through this transformation process, that what that would show to people, it would be so powerful and it would be such a inspirational story of how miracles can happen and, and miracles do happen. You know, they do. I'm not religious, but I, I do know that that uh, for my family to be where we're at today, uh, it, it's it's a, it's a minor, at least a minor miracle. I know I haven't talked about it or shared it with anybody really as members. I've talked a little bit about it, but uh, it, it miracles do happen. Okay, but but we have to be we have to work towards those miracles, but we also have to be prepared for them and to make sure that we take care of those miracles once they do happen too. But see, but Umar, that's not what I see. That's kind of the sad part about all of this are done brothers and sisters so make sure you go to natturnerland.com and get your tickets make sure you go to natturnerland.com and get your tickets brothers and sisters know the frederick douglas and marcus garvey academy renovations are done brothers and sisters. how can he say that the renovations are done but he hasn't done anything on the other side of the street I wonder, does he Sisters. show it? So make sure you go to natturnerland.com and get your tickets. Make sure you go to natturnerland.com and get your tickets. Rochester is free. Atlanta is free. Petersburg is, is this, free. How's it going, Casey? It's good to see you. So the difference, Lenny, is that you are an actual seeker of truth. Along the way, there are bumps in the road, but you get to the right place eventually. I agree. We do get to the right place eventually. It's just that in my pursuit of truth, I got so sidetracked and I, I was focusing on on the wrong thing, especially with the conspiracy theory uh, paradigm. And it, it, it totally shifted my, the direction of my, my life. And it just, it really messed me up. I mean, it messed me up emotionally, messed me up mentally. And when I got to the spirituality stuff, that was just an extension of the, the metaphysics, uh, the, the uh, conspiracy theory stuff. And it wasn't until much later that I realized, wait a minute, th this, this whole path that it was, I was still pers uh, pursuing truth, but Ultimately, I was uh, focusing on the wrong things, believing it to be true. But that happens in life. You know, that, that's true. This is, a, this is a good point. It happens for all of us. You know, there's things that we, we may have believed in. For instance, there, there's people who because I've been doing a lot of study and uh, dealing with people who've been in cults. And there are people when they're in these cults, they actually believe that that, that what they're following, that it's true and that it's justified. I mean, there is this case of, of this. And I was talking to my wife about this uh, this morning. Uh, that I've been uh, researching of there was a this man and this woman and the, when when they met the man had a wife uh, I think the woman had a husband I can't remember if the woman had but the man definitely had a wife but the mysteriously the wife dies and these two get together she has two children and then those two children come up missing and some of you guys may know the, the case that I'm talking about but this was all based upon this book that they were reading in fact, there's a video of when the police pulled up on these and these two, and they're vacationing in Hawaii, and she has the book. It's some metaphysics book, you know, because I was there deep in the metaphysics for, for a while too. Just, just all out there. My mind was, I mean, my mind was out there. And um, that they serve, a, I think, a, a warrant to there or something. I think it's a warrant or something like that. I can't remember what it was. 
and uh, they say in, in it, they the, the courts, they say that they have they want the, this these two, this couple to produce the children because everyone's wondering where these children are at. Well, come to find out that the, the man had come to believe in his progressions in life and he believed that it was a truth. But he, he gets into this metaphysics stuff and he comes to believe that he's a prophet and that he has these spiritual powers. And that he's able to see uh, the auras, because I, I mean, all of this stuff, I, I can talk about all this stuff for days, but the, the, he can tell if someone is of the light or of the dark. And then he had a scale system of rating their darkness and depending on the, the, where they rate in, in the darkness scale and the darkness scale had uh, decimals in it, too. So 5.3 through 2.1, whatever, that if they if they're at a certain point in, in that scale, that they're 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 unredeemable, that there's nothing you can do to bring their light. So the, that justifies murdering them. Well, guess what? The woman believes that she goes along with it. She actually uh, enhances his sense of, of uh, I don't know what you want to call it. And, and those two babies that were missing, they murdered the babies. And they, they and then it, it's crazy because they actually had her when she was sentenced, convicted and sentenced and stuff. She was able to make a statement. And when she was talking, she still believed that what she did, murdering her own children was the right thing to do and that it was the truth. One of the craziest things I said, man, and we it's true. People, we get lost. I've been lost, so forth and so on. But it's about get, being found and finding where you be, where you belong, finding where you need to get to, focusing on the right things. And we believe that something is true and we go whole, whole, wholeheartedly. And, but to come to find out it, it was false and we believed it. But this lady believed it to be so true that she ended up killing. And it wasn't just that, that uh, they killed the, the, the babies. They also killed, I think it was two or three other people. That was one was the wife that we remember I said the, the, the man's wife that he was dealing with. She uh, and they and they all of it was justified in their mind. It's just crazy. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Is it Debbie Vallo? I think that that name sounds familiar. Yeah, and there was a book that they were reading. Um, I wish they would. Do, I don't know if there's a documentary in it because a documentary on it or not. But but I, uh, someone said also send me another cash. Thank you so much. Um, but the, it would be a, a, a documentary. I think they should do one on it because it, it's really, really deep. Yeah. Doomsday mom. Lord, because th th these are preppers, because I was kind of into that, too, when I was like, you know, into conspiracy theories in the world, you know. The world is a horrible place, and at a certain point, the Illuminati and all this kind of stuff, and then you it, the whole prepper mentality. She was a part of that. Yeah, that's her right there. Yeah, that, that's her right there. Y'all want to look her up? It's just a, a crazy, uh, crazy uh, what, what's going on with that. And there's videos, uh, current videos that are going up about her, but I, I think they should do a documentary on that because it just gives another example of how people can just, just get so far. And I've been out there too, but damn, that's crazy. Welcome back. Oh, thank you, D. That is all. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, we'll be back live for you more consistently. I, I'm, I'm promising. I, 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 I've got my schedule uh, worked out. We getting settled in. Finally got settled up in, in this. It's a beautiful house. The neighborhood is really nice. Definite upgrade from where we're at before, and that was a blessing too. But my daughters, they look out their window. There's a lake over there, and it's, it's just, I just all I can say is God is good. You know. Uh, oh, Lo oh, Lori. Is it Lori? Yeah, Lori. Lori Vallo. That's what it is. Lori Vallo. OK, so anyone you want to look her up. Yeah. Yeah. OK. All right. Let's let's and we still got about 900 people. Y'all hit the like button. We're almost done. I know I keep saying we're already three hours, but it is what it is. I know it's been three months. Uh, I want to get through this video. Then we're going to play the video of ENJ going up to the school and then we'll close out with uh, uh, Umar and the Tupac thing. Rochester is free. Atlanta is free. Petersburg is free. Get your tickets for Harlem. Get your tickets for Nat Turner land. Get your tickets for Harlem. You're good. Get your tickets for Nat Turner land. Get your tickets for Harlem. Get your tickets for Nat Turner land. A few more things before I let y'all go. A few more things before I let y'all go. We got to get the HVAC inspected. They finished the HVAC today. We got to get it inspected. Once the H. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Critical thinking. Why do he already said that the renovations were done? If they're done, wouldn't that include that the inspections are all done too? Maybe not. I'm just I'm just trying to figure it out. Back is inspected. I'm talking to my donors right now. If you're not a donor, keep it quiet or hop off the live. I'm talking to FDMG Academy donors only right now. 
to my donors from the, around the African diaspora. To my donors no across the African Please diaspora, not. the HVAC has to get inspected. As soon as that's done, we are applying for our certificate of occupancy. Four and a half years later, this is crazy. But I told people, though, y'all remember I told people, it doesn't matter, you get a brand new HVAC system. You have to get all the duct work in place. And, and it's, what's crazy is he's working backwards. You do the you do the, the duct work all fit. You get that all fixed first. Then when you install, you can test it right away. I think he got the HVAC, what, about a year ago, something like that? So it's just, why, why purchase the HVAC to accept to give the illusion of progress, put it up on top of the roof, and just let it sit for almost a year? It makes no sense. Why not get the, the, the duct work prepared, get it all uh, fixed up, and then you get the, the HVAC unit. It's brand new. You know it's, it's going to work. And you, you, you tie that on into the system, and then you test it, and then you have inspection take place. You don't know what he's doing. It's crazy. I don't know because I don't know if he shows that that the renovations are done. It just doesn't. None of it makes. Uh, it, it doesn't make any sense. Is it two years ago? No, Malik. I thought it was a year ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it's, it was a year ago. Two years ago, he said that it was going to be there, but then it took him like a year. <laughs> That's what it was. So you're right. Okay, <laughs> you're right. Okay. Uh, how's it going, Alicia? Oh, please, if those minute races were done, Umar would broadcast. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It, he would be doing videos about that every single day. He would be up there jumping around and, and people would ask for money. Yeah, no. Yeah. He didn't even apply for inspection. I, I don't. I have no idea. I have no idea. I haven't been looking into him. Okay, let's go. We, I've just been running my mouth. Certificate of occupancy. Certificate of occupancy. I am also setting up three very important days of preparation. There will be a FDMG donors only paint day there will be a fdmg donors only paint day there will be it's the same it's it's the same thing over and over and over again ain't nothing changed he already did paint day that that was that was what in 2020 or 2021 but what are you talking about well, this, this is crazy. Y'all know this is so crazy. <laughs> they gonna paint it pink. Someone said they're gonna paint it pink. <laughs> they should have painted rainbow. That's what they need to do. <laughs> yeah, FDMG donors only paint day. Who so you gotta pay in order to paint? He's already done this before. This is ridiculous. coming to paint. Who coming to help us paint yeah, know, the 15 is. classrooms inside of the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey, Marcus Garvey Elementary School? Who coming to paint? Who coming to paint from Carolina? Who coming to paint from Africa? Who coming to go. paint from Canada? Who coming to paint from Haiti? Who coming to paint from Los Angeles and Oakland? Who coming to paint? Haiti? You got to donate and then you got to get buy a ticket and fly from Haiti to Wilmington, Delaware, you have to fly to do You got to donate first, though, to go pay for, for pay for free. From Brazil in Bermuda in Bahamas <laughs> in Honduras, who's coming to paint, brothers and sisters? We're going to have a paint day. We're going to okay. have a paint day. We're going to have a paint day. <laughs> paint day doesn't have to wait for the uh, occupancy because donors, investors are painting. Investment. Donors, investors are painting. If it's an investment, there should be a return on the investment, huh? Donors, investors are painting, not the public. Donors and investors are painting. If you are interested in painting on paint, day, right. shoot me a text. If you are interested, if you are a donor <laughs> who wants to come and participate in paint day, and I plan on having paint day before summertime ends, or should I say before, yeah, before it gets chilly, we're going to do it in September. We're looking at a paint. Between summer, we, you go, what? You're going to do it in September? We're in October, bro. What are you talking about? Am I missing something here? Wait a minute. September. We're looking at a paint day in September. We're looking at a paint day in September for brothers and sisters. There he goes, sniffing that. Rubbing on that nose. What month is this? It's October. August, September, October. 
Then we're going to have a cleanup day, and then we're going to have a furniture day. We're going to have a paint day. Marcus Garvey, Marcus Garvey Elementary School. What? Who coming to paint? Who coming to paint from Carolina? Yeah, this video has to be from August then, right? Let, let me go make sure, because I, I got to make sure this timeline is important. I, I don't want to misrepresent this. I have this marked as, yeah, August 12th. So, so I misspoke. August earlier, because someone said, well, when was this video from? This video is from uh, August, excuse me, August 12th. You said March, April, May, June, July. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. So let me just correct myself because I was confused by that. This video is from August 12th. So what this means is this video is two months old now. Yeah, this video is two months old. So two months ago, again, I haven't been following Umar for, for like eight months, but so two months ago, he was saying that the renovations are done. That's that's what this is. Okay. Who coming to paint from Africa? Who coming to paint from Canada? Who coming to paint from Haiti? Who coming to paint from Los Angeles and Oakland? Who coming to paint from Brazil and Bermuda and Bahamas and Honduras? Who's coming to paint? brothers and sisters any, any we're going to have paint? a paint day we're going to have a paint day we're going to have a paint day <laughs> paint day doesn't have to wait for the uh occupancy yeah. because donors investors are painting donors investors are painting donors investors are painting not the public <laughs> donors and investors are painting if you are interested in painting on paint day shoot me a text if you are interested, if you are a donor <laughs> who wants to come and participate in Paint Day, and I plan on having Paint Day before summertime ends, or should I say before, yeah, before it gets chilly, we're going to do it in September. We He's just making this up. Did anyone know, did he have a Paint Day? I doubt it, because September's passed. Anyone know? Let me know in the chat room. <laughs> Bruh. Brazil. <laughs> It didn't happen. Okay, I'm not surprised. He just be making stuff up. Just making stuff up. <laughs> it's, it, it's always that's the deadline. That chilly weather. We know why. <laughs> We're looking at a paint day in September. We're looking at a paint day in September for brothers and sisters. We're going to have a paint day. And then we're going to have a cleanup day and then we're going to have a furniture day. We're going to have a paint day, a cleanup day and a furniture day. Three different days, brothers and sisters. A paint day after we paint and the paint dry. We're going to come back a week later. Cleanup day for those who want to help us clean the bathrooms and clean the floors and get the school nice and clean for that grand opening. Get the school nice and clean for that grand opening. So if you don't want to paint, you can clean. If you don't want to clean, you can paint. Or you could come on Furniture Day, day three. Furniture. What's Furniture Day? <laughs> no, if the renovations are done, shouldn't it be clean? I, wouldn't, I don't get it. Um, what's a Furniture Day? What is he talking about? I think he's just making this up. So there's going to be a paint day, a cleanup day, and then a Furniture Day. But I thought he said that the renovations are all done. Maybe he just sees this as being separate from the renovations. But if that's the case, there's more work to be done. A lot more work to be done. Yeah, maybe that's what he's talking about. I don't know. You get the five five thing to get them queens up there. We're gonna do a, a body paint day, family. We're almost done. Today, that's when we move all the school furniture into the school. We're gonna need men for that. We're going to need okay. unapologetically African alpha males for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're going to need unapologetically African alpha males for the furniture day to move the school furniture into the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. Let me ask my sister something. I want to tap into the divine feminine, but Here brothers, feel free to give your input. I want to tap mm -hmm. into the great divine feminine, but brothers, feel free to give your input. I want to tap into the great divine feminine, but brothers, feel free to give your input. What colors should we paint the classrooms? Should each classroom be a different color? Such each he already asked this years ago. Hit the one. This is crazy. Classroom be a single color? <laughs> should each so what kind of what kind of furniture y'all anticipate? Huh? I'm sorry, I don't want me to put my foot up on the legs up, but it's comfortable in here. This house. That was real comfortable. Chairs, tables, pictures, pillows. 
<laughs> what are pillows for? He don't need no pillows. It's cool. I can see chairs, tables, and a couple of pictures, but pillows. <laughs> you know, then he gonna have a grand a grand jury day. <laughs> okay. Uh, what other furniture though? Moving day. <laughs> you know, they gonna move the big rock inside. That's what we need the men for. We need the brothers to come through. The we gonna move that rock inside. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, they ain't going to old women up here, but they old women go. <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I really wanted to know what kind what kind of furniture is a plastic chair you can buy. <laughs> we going to we're going to the dollar store family. <laughs> right before the for the for, for the furniture day, he gonna see them at, at the dollar store. And we get we need them no Asian family. We gotta get this furniture. <laughs> yeah, get this furniture for these for these kids. <laughs> Brandon, you you wild. <laughs> I got some extra ones. I'll still send it, donate them to them. <laughs> All right. I don't know. It's just, it's just the same. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. MDMG pillows. I'm sorry. I just spit all over the place. MDMG pillows. That's what he was talking about. Okay. I forgot. I forgot about that. <laughs> He about to talk about no, he ain't gonna don't he ain't gonna talk. He ain't gonna get into that that, that shrine and talk. <laughs> if anyone who makes me FWG bean bag family, do we need bean bean bag for the kids? Okay, <laughs> let me get out of this. Let me get out of this. <laughs> it's gonna be red. It's the desperate brew gonna be red <laughs> with a black stripe in the middle. That's what's gonna be. He's gonna paint it butter. Because <laughs> bean bag chairs with real with real beans in them. <laughs> and he pinto. He gonna be real pinto pinto beans. He gonna be real pinto beans in the bean bag chairs. That way, when the, when the bean bag chair gets punctured. We gonna go ahead and make some some bean patties. We can make some bean patties, fam, and with the butter biscuits. <laughs> Tyreek gave butter biscuits a bad name, fam. Ain't nothing wrong with no butter biscuits. <laughs> we gonna <laughs> water receipt. That's gonna be a furniture. Gonna be a water receipt. <laughs> okay, let me get out of here. Y'all remember that chair? Oh my, that chair was a wow. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you got this cookie crunch. It's crazy. <laughs> it's true. We go ahead and pin Toby. You know, you know, this is, okay. What <laughs> we wild it out tonight. Let me get up out of here. <laughs> they don't bring furniture, gonna be brooms. All right, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. This is too much. Okay. <laughs> Boy, that took me out. Okay, here we go. <laughs> classroom have a separate color from all the other classrooms. This is a boys school. I want your input on the color scheme inside the school. What color should we paint the bathrooms? What color should we paint the teacher's lounge? What color should we paint the computer room? What color should we paint the main office? What color should we paint Dr. Umar's office? I want your input on the color scheme. I want your input on the color scheme. I want your input on the color scheme. 15 classes. Go ahead and put your notes on paper and text it to me. Dr. Umar, I thought about this and this is my. Put your notes on paper and then text it to me. <laughs> I 
type out type out your suggestions and then text it to me. Color scheme for the 15 rooms. I think your main office should be this color. I think your hallway should be this color. I think your library should be this color. I think your office, Dr. Umar, should be this color. And I think the regular classrooms should be this color. And I think the teacher's lounge should be this color. So let me know, ladies. Text it to me. You know my number, 2159. Real quick, I have to say this because <clears throat> if you guys really look at this, uh, the how this has gone with Umar, the, the incorporation of women is always on the periphery dealing with things that are, are not leadership based. In other words, he doesn't ask your suggestions for like, okay, what should be our curriculum? He doesn't ask you for the suggestions in terms of, okay, um, how many children should we plan to have attend the school he doesn't ask you for suggestions on budgeting or anything like that he asks you i'm talking about the women he asks women for things like okay well what type of furniture should i have in this room what what should i how should i paint this build this wall what color should i the color scheme for this and the color scheme for that and i think this speaks to a deeper issue with umar and that is simply the the level of sexism that he has which is quite profound but even we, I talked about this earlier, that the idea of polygamy is deeply rooted in sexism from the vantage point of black men here in the United States of America. And, and, and Umar fits into that category of men who look upon women in such a lowly way to where you guys are, you guys are good for the mundane things. You, you guys are good for making suggestions or I'll have you come out and do the manual labor. Because when he did the, the previous paint day, it was mainly women, older black women and mainly, and they were the ones painting out there, which makes no sense. Because if you big papa, you should have, and you the most requested, you should have plenty of black men who will be willing to come and do that work. In fact, I, in my opinion, you can call me sexist if you want to, but in, in my opinion, manual labor, uh, it, within the scope of what was taking place up at that school and it's cold out there, freezing outside, that should have been done by men in the first place because you don't have women exposed to the elements like that. You know, that's just not something that you do. It shows a lack of respect and lack of care. Now, you, women, you want to get out there and do it, that's fine. I'm not saying that you can't. But what I am saying is that traditionally, that is, should be the job of a man because if, it's, if the conditions are such where it's 30 degrees, 40, 50 degrees outside, the men should be the ones, the majority, I would say, should be the ones that go out and get that work done. Okay, call me sexy if you want to. I'm just that's just how I, I see it. But with Umar, when it comes to the manual labor, yeah, women, I'll have you do that for free. In fact, you have to pay. You have to be a, a donor in order to have uh, the right to be able to do this manual labor. But the other thing is that anything that's dealing with, uh, uh, you know, uh, painting the walls, uh, you know, furniture, that's your lane. So stay in your lane. This speaks to Umar sex. And again. People, you, people can call me sexist, too, because they can flip this and say, yeah, but you're saying that women can't. No, that's not what I'm saying. If y'all want to get out there and get exposed to the elements and be cold and paint walls on a moldy building, you're welcome to do that. But as a man, if I'm going to if my wife was compelled to go do that for somebody, I'll be like, oh, first of all, that's not going to happen. But if, you, if it's going to if it needs to be done and I believe in the person, I'm going to go do that. Okay, I know I get backlash. People say, Lenny, you're outdated and sexist. Okay, that's fine. 989 I got a question. Who the first sister in New York City who gonna give me a completed renovations hug? Who gonna be the first black woman? Here we go. See, now we get to it. Jay Morrison is mainly focused on money. I also think he likes the attention. Umar likes the attention. He's focused on money, but he's also focused on them draws. So that's why he has to infuse this into it. Okay, He shows no proof of the renovations being done, but this becomes a new uh, point of gravitation for him. Then in other words, this will, this will compel women to, oh, wow, he finally got this. Now this face is done. Okay, well, guess what? I deserve a hug for that too. You gonna, Who going to give me a hug for that? Not one child has been educated yet. The school's not open. He hasn't even shown proof that the renovations are done. And yet he he twists this in his own mind to where it has to be some sort of a physical interaction with black women. 
Y'all see what this, see what I'm saying here? One of the things that I, I've learned, because I've been studying this with, with these different cults and, and high demand, what they call high demand religions, is that oftentimes the leaders of these institutions, the men, that, that the power isn't enough. The power over the people is not enough. That then that the power begins to express itself in the sexual exploitation of the women. And that's why polygamy is such a, a big problem, too, because traditionally you see these men, they'll they'll go into the polygamy thing. But it's not so much about the sex. It's more about sexually dominating women. It's about power and control. How can I have more power and control? And that's what this speaks to right here. It's subtle. But it speaks to Umar using a manipulative attack, the manipulative tactic in order to gain more control over black women to where, OK, I'm deserving of your hug. Which one of you is going to give me a hug because renovations are complete? This is this is the subtle manipulation aspect of this. That's, that's why I think that, that the critical analysis of Umar is important because he, he provides a primitive example of, of, of someone who has a predacious uh, nature when it comes to black women. Everything is about predation. And if he can twist the, the even the idea with no proof, you know, the idea of renovations are complete. He can twist that into which one of you are going to give me a hug. That speaks to Umar's character and how he sees black women and his need to exploit them, whether that is financially or sexually or otherwise. Woman in New York City next Thursday, August the 17th at the Alhambra Ballroom, Marcus Garvey Day. Which one of my sisters going to give me the first Papa Bear hug? Who am I giving the first Papa Bear hug in New York? Who am I giving the first Papa Bear hug in Rochester, New York? Who am I giving the first Papa Bear hug in Atlanta, Georgia? Who am I giving the first Papa Bear hug in Petersburg, Virginia? Who am I giving the first Papa Bear hug at Nat Turner Land on Monday, August the 21st? We talking about history right here. We talking about history right here. This, this is crazy. Uh, that guy down there, too, in, in uh, Nat Turner Land, he's a scammer, too. I got all the receipts on that. I just never talked about it. Okay, what he was doing was he was the people who would come down, he would tell them, listen, I, I have this land and I, I have it forever. Uh, and uh, but I can I can sell this uh, a, a parcel to you. Okay, and then he would go through this process of, of selling it to different people. And then the people at a certain point, he would ghost them after they he would send the money. Sound familiar? Just just like uh, Pena, Caesar, Caesar Pena. They, they couldn't contact him, but but then ultimately, when they try to get back down there to to you know claim their land and, and you know start I guess figuring out how they're going to build on the land or what have you, come to find out that there were liens on this property or liens on this parcel, liens on that parcel. So it was a scam down there too. I got all the receipts on that. One th one thing you'll find is that a lot of these people they they run in the same circles. See, that's why I'm saying people who still defend Jay Morrison or hang out with Jay Morrison, stay. You got to steer clear of these people. Okay, same thing. People, anybody who's still supporting uh, Pena, well, there's probably nobody, but who still support any of, any of that, or even DJ Envy to, uh, to a degree, you got to steer clear of these people because anyone of integrity, they're not going to defend that type of behavior and the scamming and all that stuff. Nor are they going to put themselves in a position where they're hanging around them, or because it's just not good PR to do that. But there are people who still defend Jay Morris, and there's people who I'm sure are still defending DJ Envy. There's people who still are uh, defending Umar. But these people tend to hang out and they, they kind of coalesce amongst each other and they get into these beefs and all this stuff, but they're still connected. And if you go back five years ago, 10 years, they used to be buddy, buddy. We talking about the first school in American history built exclusively by the African diaspora. We did this ourselves, brothers and sisters. Against the hate, the slander, the sabotage, the YouTubian slander, yeah, right. brothers and sisters. I want to know your color scheme. Listen up. If you know how to lay towel and lay carpet, please send me a text message. I thought you said the renovations are done. That's part of innovations. It's such a liar. If you know how to lay towel and all of this sh doing all of this, that's because of the guy who came up earlier talking about I'm 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 live streaming right now, brother. So come on back on hip, come on buzzing you when you get a minute, family. That's what this is all about. Towel and lay carpet, please send me a text message. If you know how to lay tile and lay carpet, because after we paint and after we clean, we have some classrooms that need fresh tile laid down. We're going to keep the floor the same color. We got a few classrooms 
that need fresh tile. Who knows how to lay tile? Who knows how to? Four and a half years later. I mean, I could have learned how to do tile myself in what? Four, two, three months and just did it myself. That's what a real man would have done. Or he would have just, you know, real talk. Men out there, if, if you, you, it would it take you four and a half years? Lay tile and two rooms are going to have carpet. Who know how to lay carpet down? I need two rooms. Two rooms are going to have only two rooms. Well, then you couldn't get that done. The red, black, and green. I need the Pan African Marcus Garvey no flag fans. in one classroom, and I need <laughs> no. carpet in my office. My office is going to be carpeted. The principal, CEO, CAO's office is going this to be carpeted. Crazy. If you know how to lay carpet, if you got a carpet company. Dr. Umar's office will have carpet and then the FDMG temple. What is the FDMG temple room? What is the FDMG temple room? Oh man, this is what I'm saying. I've been studying these cults. I've been studying and this is weird. All It goes to this. I'm going to tell y'all something else. Did y'all know that there's a hip hop Bible? I want to do a series on this right here. Try not to curse because, you know, I've been, we've been, we've been so blessed with our, but damn, uh, there there is something called a hip hop Bible, and there's a hip hop uh, shrine or something, church or whatever it is. Shrine. I don't know if it's a shrine or a, a church or a temple or something like anybody. See? See, this this is where where all of this goes to people's heads, and they start to think that there's like a god or something. KRS1 is an example of that. He way out there. I think he's the one that wrote the hip hop Bible. L let me make sure I, I got this. Let, let me just make, I know we, wow, it's, it's almost three, three and a half hours. Uh, hip hop Bible. The, there's something called a holy hip hop Bible. That's one of it. The holy hip. No, that that's a Bible written, I guess, for hip hop people. It's still the Bible. No, it's called the Gospel of Hip. <laughs> it's called the the Gospel of Hip Hop. First instrument presented by KRS One for the Temple of Hip Hop. Y'all out your mind. I try to warn people about this foolishness a long time ago. It all went to your head. It's just, you know, you think that hip hop, even to this day, people hip hop this, hip hop. Listen, people, uh, it's not that serious. When it's turned into a religion now and there's a hip hop, a, a temple of hip hop, it, it's just gone, it's just too much, it's gone too far, too much, too far. Then he gets on there defending Africa. But I want to do a video review of that because it just goes to show you the mentality of these people. It's not about having ethics or, or morals or, you know, it, it's about the illusion that somehow hip hop is uh, really it's it's like a cult. It's like a religion. To, in, in some people's eyes, but but that has a lot to do with. Uh, young black men being raised without their father and being misguided and having to hold on to something that gave their life meaning. And then they put their life into it. And so they at a certain point feel their life is it. And so they have to make it into something greater so that their life becomes greater than what it really is. What you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a rapper. OK. Why? And can you be something else? But see, if you frame it as a religion and how it's just some, it's this great thing. I tell you, it's one of the most sexist things. How about that? Most degrading things, too. But yeah, it's called the gospel of hip hop. You can get it on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. 
You can even get a copy it up there at FDMG, family. They, no, I'm just like, Simon and Schuster's got it too. Now, is there a hip hop temple? Let, let me let me see. There better not be no hip hop temple. You guys don't 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 do that. The temple of hip hop. There be, don't, don't, uh. There's a membership on the website. Boy, this, there's a website called the temple of hip and no, this can't be no. no, no. Are, are, is this serious? Boy, th th this is crazy. There is a hip hop temple, and, and, and Tyler says there's a hip hop temple in New Jersey. Oh man, yeah, that, that's this some cult stuff right here. I mean, I'd be interested to look into and there. Look, there's some videos with people sitting in the audience and all that stuff. Y'all, y'all lost your mind anyway. But what I'm getting at though is that uh, what often happens with these individuals, a lot of it goes to their head. Umar is another example of this, but then they start to think in terms of religious indoctrination and they'll, they'll take in religious concepts and ideas and begin to formulate it around their worldview, which I guess is hip hop. And then that becomes the drawing power because you quote unquote spiritualize it, but then you also elevate yourself to some sort of a prophet. Okay, the Carol Russ one is not no prophet. He was a rapper. Okay, people like this rap and I get it. That's fine, but he's just a rapper. Run his mouth. Okay, fine. Umar is, is someone who living in, well, I don't know if he's still living in Mama Claudia, but but in the bigger scheme of things, it's inconsequential, but but to, to present yourself as some sort of prophet, but so you got to have a temple. You got to have a, a gospel of hip hop. Boy, I tell you, people, boy, this some crazy, it's wild. It is, it's brainwashing. There's people sitting in the audience right here. Maybe we need to look into this too. What is the FD? The FDMG Temple Room is where our sons will learn African spirituality, African oh, culture, crazy. ancestral mm -hmm. veneration, libation. This is where they're going to pray to the Most High God. Oh, yes. We're going to have a temple room, a spirituality mm -hmm. room. And I want that spirituality room laid out in red, black, and green carpet, brothers and sisters. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. If you don't want your son learning African spirituality, don't enroll him in this school. Every black boy at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy will learn the ancient ways. See, this is what I mean. It's like a cult. Very dangerous. You can't force children to learn some religious, if you want to call it that, but some religious doctrine. You can't force them to. It's crazy of spiritual communication with the most high. If you got a problem with African spirituality, this is not the school for your son. This so it's is, is he saying that it's a it's a African spirituality school? That's not what he originally promised. He said donations for a school for black boys. It ain't got nothing to do with all this other stuff. Uh, truth of your life. Thanks for the super, super sticker. Super sticker. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Anyone else who sent a super status and super uh, and uh, cash apps too? cash app information down list, list in the description of the video as well as the PayPal is listed down there too. This is not the school for your son. This is not the school for your son, period. Unapologetically, if he can't learn his mm -hmm. ancient mm -hmm. systems, brothers Spitting and sisters, all over the place is no need. No need for him to be enrolled at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. Let me talk to my truck drivers. And I want to talk to my educators and my principals and my building custodians. Because he needs y'all help for free. I need to get up off here because these kids can come down there and get something to eat. I can already tell. I hear them running around. Upstairs. Listen to me. If you work at a public school or charter school anywhere in the United States, if you work at a public school or charter school district anywhere in the United States, <laughs> If you work for a public school or charter school district anywhere in the United States, we need school furniture. We need school furniture. We need school furniture. He already asked for this years ago. Where's the progress? A lot of schools have closed down since COVID. 
a lot of public schools Real quick, he shouldn't have did a he shouldn't have did a brick and mortar anyway. This should have been an online university. And I already did the, the I have a degree in cybersecurity. Uh, he should have did a, an online school and easily with the right infrastructure in place. Um, have the the website designed professionally. Um, he could have. Easily, he could have been bringing in anywhere between forty and fifty thousand dollars a year, just doing it online. And it doesn't even have to be accredited, but it could be as a service to to black children. It doesn't have to exclude it to the black boys. It could be for everyone. Then you can have stuff on there for adults. And then all this could have been done, uh, and and with, with there would have been expenses, but it wouldn't be two million dollars. And if he had done it the right way and he'd been consistent with it over time, he could have built that up to where, you know, he's making $60,000 a month, $70,000, $80,000 a month, subscription-based, and then have a donation button on there too. This could have been done with modern technology, could have been easily done in his heyday. Now, if he tried it today, it wouldn't be as easy, but in his heyday, he could have done that and he wouldn't have to go through all this stuff. And then he'd pay himself, you know, pay himself $100,000 a year. Okay. And, and just live off of that. But no, the, the criminal mind doesn't think within the scope of what can I do legally that may take more time in the long run to put the infrastructure in place versus what can I do illegally and justify it somehow that's going to get me quick money, but may even take longer, which is actually a good thing because the longer it takes, the more money I can receive. And the criminal mind thinks that way. And that's where Umar Johnson is at. But he could have done this. It, it, it's, it's not. It's, it, it would, I mean, it would have been work, but there would have been people who could, would have done this and helped them to get the infrastructure in place for free. Our uh, brother Darren, rest in peace. He's the one that got me to go for the, the degree in, in cybersecurity. Uh, rest in peace. He's, he offered Umar to help him with that process and Umar denied him. People, I want you to understand, online, brick and mortar is not the way to go, but he could have turned this into a, a, a financial venture that would have generated close to a million dollars a year. And it would have been, um, he could have still used his tax exempt status as a nonprofit, paid himself eighty, dollars $100,000 a year um, and wouldn't have all this overhead. And then he would be able to provide services to children and they just would do it from the comfort of their own home. And they would have stuff on there for parents, too. I mean, I could see him even doing this and expanding it to where he would have different people who had different expertise. And then you have an area on the website that, OK, if you're into, let's say uh, you want to learn about real estate, then he'll have someone who's legitimate, have a series of videos, an online course for, for real estate. And then he would pay them out. OK, I'll give you ten thousand dollars. You can produce this content. And they produce the content, put it on the website. He owns the content and he generates money from people signing up for that content. OK, if, if let's say someone. OK, there's people who want to learn how to uh, I don't know, whatever, just think how, how to put tile down. <laughs> you have someone, someone who knows that they do. Anyway. But no, he wants to do it, do this, and, and it's it's have it's, closed down yeah. since COVID. I need y'all to do some research in your public school and your charter school. I'm talking to everybody in America, everybody. Do some research, principals, <laughs> teachers, school <laughs> district right. employees. Is Where true. is this the is unused yeah. furniture <laughs> kept at? I want you to talk to <clears throat> the proper now hold on, because Lord Jamar's father in law already did all of this getting furniture and lord jamal was trying to hook him up remember that then what did umar do and here we are years later i don't know how many years later it's been two years authorities at, years. at your school your charter school your public school district and tell them there is an independent school in wilmington delaware that is tax exempt so you can write it off tax exempt yeah the criminal mind in him he'll see the eighty thousand coming in and think it's it's all personal income but see that that's what i mean by the criminal mind if he if he did this legitimately and he didn't have a criminal mind in this way if he brought in eighty thousand dollars a year from an online subscription-based website and it could be expansive it could, just, it could be teaching african history it could be teaching uh, uh african-american history it could have music classes on there can you teach flute on here Lenny? okay yeah i'll do some classes for, for flute here, I'll pay you five thousand dollars. It's going to put produce the, the fundamentals videos, maybe have made 10 videos, 15, 20 videos, five minutes, each, 10 minutes, whatever each uh, and go ahead and do this. But he would own it after that. 
And yeah, he could build that up to $80,000 a month. Dealing with all these different areas, you know, he, he could just make it expensive, but he would. He would see all of it as personal income. But if he didn't have the criminal mind, he approached this legitimately. OK, what he would simply do is say, OK, $80,000 a month. We'll just project project that over the course of uh, a year. Uh, we're at what? Uh, uh, $960,000 a year. OK, let's just round it up to a million dollars a year. OK, and then I'll pay myself $100,000. He can live off $100,000 a year. Ain't nobody tell me that you can't. But see, the criminal mind. It, it, and, and, and in his, yeah, yeah, it's true. It, he's, he's just entitled. He feels entitled. That's the narcissism. He's just entitled to everything. Cookies, money, everything. Who can use this furniture? Wow, we still got 900 people in here. And it's, it's we're up here late. We're going to come back tomorrow and do part two. We not doing nothing with these desks. We not doing nothing with these tables. We not doing nothing with these bookshelves. We not doing nothing with this equipment. We sending this. Listen, Kishan, he the the, the, the options are endless when you're going online. You just scale it. But he could have contracted and bring in yoga and meditation classes to help kids learn how to uh, de-escalate appropriately. You're absolutely right. You don't think a parent would pay, wouldn't pay for that? You can just have a monthly subscription and just have it tiered. And in the ultimate tier, you get access to everything for the kids. You're right. I mean, we could come up with all sorts of ideas, but that that would be great. And then, you know, listen, we'll also uh, have Lennon. Uh, he'll put together some meditation music for, for that class and we'll play the meditation music while they're doing the yoga and the meditation. And then what we'll do is if you sign up for this class for, for your child, we'll also give you a free download of the music so that the child can play the music at, 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 at home. They can just put it on and it can help them with their peace and calm and, you know, that type of thing. But Umar is not thinking like that. He's about the money grab and it's not just about the money. Again, it's about gaining access to black women and exploiting black women sexually and otherwise. Thing. But there's all types of things that we can come up with. I mean, just even you mentioning that, I mean, that, that would be wonderful for, for, for children, in particular for black children, if you're dealing with situations where de-escalation is, is uh, of prime importance. And we know that in many of our communities, that is of prime importance. But see, even Umar, he don't de-escalate things anyway. He can just escalate anyway, so, no. To Wilmington, Delaware. And I need my brothers and sisters who got the trucks if you are a truck driver who don't mind driving school furniture from your state to the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy, please send me a text message. Dr. Umar, I'm in Georgia. I got a truck. If you get some this school so furniture crazy. in Georgia, I'll bring it to you. Dr. Umar, I'm in California. I got a truck. If you get some school furniture in California, I'm going to bring it to you. Dr. Umar, I got a truck. I'm in Detroit. If you get some Detroit school furniture. Does this sound organized? This is just him just ranting and just throwing stuff, whatever he can. Uh, we got 800 likes. That's awesome. Let's try to get to 1,000 before we get done. Okay, am I being greedy? Okay. Because there's probably about 200 y'all, probably about 600 y'all still here ain't put the like. But that's okay. I'll that just be gone for a whole eight months. Can't give, come back, get your like. That's why y'all be doing me dirty. See, that, that's why my hair fell out. Okay. That's exactly why my hair fell out. Because y'all just be hating. <laughs> My hair started falling out when I was like 19. <laughs> I was like, huh? Yeah, okay. I'm bringing it to you. Dr. Umar, I'm in Chicago. Dr. Umar, I'm in Florida. Dr. Umar, I'm in South Carolina. I got a truck. If you, you get any school furniture that? donations from my <laughs> state, I will drive it to the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. I need some truck drivers, brothers and sisters. And I need my nine? educators and my school district employees to find us some school furniture. We don't want to buy it if we can get it for free. We don't want to buy school furniture if we can get it for free. We don't want to buy school furniture if we can get it for free. This is we crazy. don't want to buy school furniture if we can get it for free. Next topic I want to bring up. If we do have to buy school furniture because we don't get enough donations. If we do have to buy school furniture, if we don't get enough. <laughs> Here we go. Donations. School furniture donations. I need y'all to help me find school furniture companies school furniture companies so we can create a registry just like you do when you do a baby shower we need to create a school furniture registry 
So brothers and sisters who want to help us buy school furniture can go on the website and buy some desks, buy some <laughs> chairs, buy some bookshelves, buy some this tables, is, right? This is wow. He said bookshelves. Uh, this is wow. <laughs> I said, man. We need 19 more to get to 900, 119 to get to 1,000. I want 1,000. That was a nice round number. <laughs> Old Southern Cooks uh, said, uh, I, I, I have never seen any footage of this man with his own children being a leader in over a decade. The irony of him wanting to lead. Yeah, I know. And there's reasons for that, though, too, because he's admitted. I can pull up the, the video. It's an old video. And, and I'm, I, this, the thing is that this this time around, I don't want to get into Umar's personals uh, like, you know, like I, I used to. I don't want to do that. But I, I will. I'll just at least say this. I don't want to be talking about him living in his mama claws and none of that stuff. It's just sad. But there's a video and I could play it for you. I would rather just play it for you instead of speaking on it. But he talks about how he uh, he was complaining about how court ordered he didn't have visitations with his one of his children unless he was supervised. And there's reasons for that, because the court won't put that into effect unless something has happened. Or is if he's a threat to the child somehow, or has been a threat to the child, or a threat to the mother, or both. So he had supervised visitations. This is what he said. Okay? And he was complaining about it and going off about it and, and talking about all this. And he's on, I don't want to get into all that, but the, the point being is that there's reasons why um, we don't see Umar with his children. Um, and he's not an active participant. Uh, and maybe things have changed over the last eight months uh, or so, but I highly doubt that because he's all over the place and I don't think he cares, uh, to be honest with you. I don't think he cares. Um, it, it's a problem in the black community because we accept absentee fatherism as the norm. Okay, And it's one thing to say that we have a problem with fathers not being active participants, but it's another thing when we accept it as the norm and we say, okay, it is what it is. And, and you know, it, it's okay. What I'm saying is that normalization is the, is a process of accepting something as being okay. That is standard. And we have as a community, as a whole, we've accepted the standard, but that it has ramifications because if that's the standard, then there's no incentive or no force of inspiration for younger men to recognize that if I do become a father, that I need to be present. And so Umar, Umar becomes problematic because in his, his sense of, of leadership and people who may put him on a pedestal of leader of the black conscious community or the black community, what have you, you're also accepting someone who normalizes absentee fatherism. And so if your leader represents absentee fatherism, which is a problem, then what do you have to aspire towards? You don't have to aspire to anything greater than that. You normalize it in your own mind, because if my leader who I put on the pedestal is that way, then I don't have to be anything greater than that in order to be great. I just have to be at least that to be great. And what that means is, I'll, no, it's okay. I can just be uh, uh, an absentee father and it doesn't matter because I'm still great, just like Umar. That's a problem. So the, the, the idea of people seeing him as a leader, it's problematic in and of itself. But I think part of it is that we have accepted as a normalized uh, cultural aesthetic that black men are not fathers to their children. And if they decide not to be fathers to their children, that somehow it's OK. It is what it is, as we say. That's a problem. Oh, and thanks for Super Chat, too. I appreciate it. Everyone else, thanks for all the Super Chats. Y'all bless me today. That's me and my We family. need that, brothers it. and sisters. So if you know of any companies that would be a good company for us to create a school furniture registry so brothers and sisters can go on there and support us by buying the necessary furniture that we need, <laughs> please send me the information. So we got to get an HVAC inspection, paint day, cleanup day, furniture day, certificate of occupancy, we need the floor tile laid. We need some carpet laid. If you know how to lay carpet, if you know how to lay floor tile, please text me. And then we got to furnish the school and then we got to decorate.
I want to tap back in into the divine feminine. I want to tap back in into the divine feminine. Decorate. I want to tap back in into the divine feminine. Okay. Divine feminine. How should we decorate the school? Told, didn't I okay. tell you? I want your ideas on colors and I want your. Now, again, I, I get it because women are in general. Y'all just got that thing down. Okay. I, I had to go all out my way. I mean, it took me a couple of days just to get that set up over there. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to put this right here. I'm going to put this right here. I don't. But, but you know, y'all y'all pay attention to things. And I'm not saying all y'all. And I'm not saying that they ain't men that can't do it. I'm just saying that in general. But what I'm getting at with Umar is that he he boxes y'all into that to where you can't contribute anything beyond that. And that's a problem, too. But the truth is that it doesn't really matter in the scope of this school because it's never going to open. It's never going to be a legitimate school. But I find it fascinating that in all of these years of him running this school scam, it's been 13 years. You don't hear him talking about, OK, women, I'm going to need you guys to think about what, what the curriculum, what type of curriculum we need to have here, um, what type of a, a, a structure, corporate structure, if you will. OK, OK, well, if we're going to have the vice principal. Should we have uh, two vice principals? Should we have three? Um, what what level of inclusion are we going to have? Do we want to make sure that we have uh, equal representation, men and women? OK. We're going to have counselors. Should we have women counselors? Because uh, uh, it's all only boys. But should we have women counselors, too? Should we have, he doesn't include y'all in that conversation. But when it's time to decorate, come on. Okay. And, of course, it's cookie time. Yeah, of course. Ideas on decorations. Do we want statues in the school? Do we want posters in the <laughs> school? Do we want painting in the school? Do Four and a half years later, he's talking about this. Thing. We want plants and flowers in the school. I'm talking about decorations. We want FDMG to be Africa in America. I said we want FDMG to be Africa in America. I said we want FDMG to be Africa in America, brothers and sisters. If you have a piece of art you want to donate, take a picture and text it to me before you send it. Do not send it to me without me seeing it. If you have a statue, you have a piece of art that you want to donate, take a picture of it on your cell phone and text me the picture. Dr. Umar, I would like to donate this poster, this painting, this picture, this statue. My number is 215-989-9858. My number is 215-989-9858. My number is 215-989-9858. Peace and love, ladies. Hi, right, good to see y'all, baby. Good to see you. All right. You Here we go. Okay. I think she wanted to come get a picture with King Kong. <laughs> this guy hilarious. <laughs> yeah, somebody said. They even bolder day. I uh, know. Here we go, Erica. You know what's going on. That was one of my lady supporters. <laughs> I think she wanted to come get a picture with King Kong. Mm -hmm. You can get all the pictures you want, ladies, in Harlem, New York. You can get all the pictures you want, ladies, in Rochester, New York. You can get all the pictures you want, lady, in Atlanta, Georgia. There you, go. you can get all the pictures you want, ladies, in Petersburg, Virginia. <laughs> you can get all the pictures you want, ladies, in Nat Turner Land, Virginia. It's you true. can get all the pictures you want, Let me ladies. Just ask in... a quick women, do you want your man to be to get King Kong? I mean, really? Are you... I don't, I don't get it. I baby, could you call me King Kong tonight? <laughs> uh, any of you women, is, I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I was just relaxing. <laughs> King Kong. St. Right. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands, August the 26th. Where my U.S. Virgin Islanders at? Where my St. Croix, my St. John, my St. Thomas, where my U.S. Virgin Island is at? We got a lot of donors in the Caribbean, and we got a lot of donors in the U.S. Virgin Islands, and I'm going to see you all at the Agricultural Fairgrounds in St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands, Saturday, August the 26th, and I'm coming with the good news. I'm coming to St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands with the good news. Renovations are done, brothers and sisters. We here no, now. Not. We here now, brothers and sisters. And then we're my Tennessee. We're my Nashville, Tennessee Africans. Nashville, Tennessee. I'm going to see you Friday night, September the 15th. Nashville, Tennessee. I'm going to see you Friday. 
I have to show you this. Someone he said that it's done, but someone had posted this, and I think it's apropos. Let me let me pull this up real quick. We don't, we really almost did. okay, really close. Uh, this was two weeks ago. It says H HVAC has to be inspected. Okay, this applies to the video that we're watching right now. Number two, it has to uh, has to apply uh, for a certificate of occupancy. Number three, FMG donors only paint day September, so they got to donate and perform free labor. Uh, number four, cleanup day. Number five, furniture day, uh, day. Number six, needs help designing color scheme for 15 rooms, hallway, library, very teacher lounge, and offices. <laughs> Seven, solicits random women to come hug him from different states. Eight, request someone to lay tile. <laughs> Nine, request someone to lay carpet. Ten, FMG temple room, African spirituality prayer room, red, black, and green carpet. 11, request truck drivers, 12, educators, 13, principals and staff, 14, request school furniture from closed down schools. <laughs> this is true, though. 15, request school equipment. 16, ask for school furniture companies to create a furniture registry. <laughs> 17, ask a woman to help decorate the school. 18, request people to text photos of art before sending it <laughs> in as a donation. <laughs> Does this sound like it's done to you? And that's exactly the point. It'd be different if he went in there and showed it. I don't know if he shows it more recently, but we'll get into the other video, uh, the more recent video where he's up there at the school that people told me we should uh, take a look at. Victor said, before we close out, Victor says, uh, uh, but there are no desks or chairs. Forget the artwork. Get the whiteboards first. We'll actually start with the electricity, then the white. Yeah, what this speaks to and what Vic Victor is alluding to here is that the, the uh, Umar doesn't know what he's doing. There's no timeline and there, there's no logical process to all of this. He's just throwing random things out there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll do it right now. Yeah, I'll be back in just a second, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm, you can come uh, come down. Uh, and I'm, I know I keep saying I'm almost done, but I'm almost done. Um, I was making this point uh, and I was, uh, well, Victor really making this point, And that is that Umar doesn't have a strategy to any of this. It's like, any, let me throw whatever I can at the wall and see what sticks. But if you think about it, a lot of, of what he's saying that he needs to do or he wants to do next should be done last. And, and the things that uh, should have already been done, they're still not done. He should have start with he, some of these things he should have started with in the first place. I, I give the example of the ductwork for the, the HVAC system, that, that you should get the ductwork uh, fixed first and have that renovated before you actually uh, purchase the HVAC unit or at the very least organize it to where after the ductwork is done, shortly thereafter the, the HVAC unit comes in, uh, arrives and you just go ahead and tie it into the system and you, come, you have them come out to inspect it because they're not just going to inspect the HVAC unit, which would be brand, brand new, but they would expect they would inspect everything tied into the the H work uh, the HVAC that would include the electrics electricity all the depth work so forth and so on, uh, but with Umar he doesn't have a plan and he never has had a plan and it just it as, as longer this goes on the more you realize that he doesn't have a plan, uh, and this speaks to the other issue of if we project into the future how much longer would this take to actually have a school up and running well uh, at this this with this trajectory it's going to take at least another decade, okay. So this is a good point. Thank you, Victor, uh, for bringing it up. And also thank you for uh, the super chat. OK, I'm, we're going to finish this up now. I'm not going to say anything else. September 15th, Nashville, Tennessee. I'm coming to Nashville, oh, brothers okay. and sisters. I'm coming to Nashville Friday night, September the 15th. Pull up season. It's going to be pull up season. It's going to be pull up season. Tulsa, Oklahoma, September the 11th. Tulsa, Oklahoma. What are you talking about pull-up season? Oklahoma, that's September the 11th. I'm coming with the good news. They said Jesus brought the gospel, and the gospel means good news. Well, I'm black Jesus. I'm the black Jesus of black consciousness. I said I'm the black Jesus of black consciousness. If there's anyone more worthy of the title than me in this day and age, call his name. I said I'm the black. See what I mean? We were talking about this earlier. See what I was talking about earlier with the coat stuff? See, a lot of this goes, it's gone to his head. Just like with Karras one hip hop has gone to his head. I mean, he's what? He's got to be 50. And then, then he, he, he writes a the gospel of hip hop, which is basically a hip hop Bible, and then he has a temple for it too. It's just, it just goes, and it just gets out of control. And they really believe this. He really believes that somehow he's special. Umar, he really believes that somehow he's special. 
sitting up here ranting. I don't even want to get into all that. But the, the, the point is that this is what I was speaking to earlier. And, and people have to be careful about this because the idea of someone sending your child to, to someone like this, it's just, it's, it's just not it's not safe. That's that's the point I want to get to. But see, oftentimes with these cults, it's not about people thinking about, OK, is this really healthy? Is it safe for me? Is it safe for my children? It's about turning over your sovereignty, if you will, to someone else. And then whatever they say they want you to do, you do it. That's why Umar feels so entitled that you're going to pay him so you can come out there and paint you ladies. You're going to do this and I need this and I need that and I need this and I need the sense of entitlement. And then here he is talking about the, the, the Christ and all this type of stuff. It's just crazy. It's going to be pull up season. It's going to be pull up season. Tulsa, Oklahoma, September the 11th. Tulsa, Oklahoma, the September the 11th. I'm coming with the good news. They said Jesus brought the gospel, and the gospel means good news. Well, I'm black Jesus. I'm the. You see what I mean? And you see how he says gospel? Well, there's the gospel of hip hop with Carol Rest One. It's the same. It's just, it's the same stuff. That this. Because I've been saying this thing, like I said earlier, I don't want to say too much uh, any more about this, but what I found is that um, oftentimes what these individuals do in these cults is, in high demand religions, is what they do is they put themselves on a tier as a god or a deity because that gives them the ultimate authority. Because if they can present themselves as such, and they may even write a book called The Gospel of Hip Hop and have a, that's so crazy, a hip hop uh, temple, whatever. But what it does is it legitimizes them as the person who has the ultimate power because they're right there next to Jesus. They're right there next to God. They're right there next to some deity, et cetera. And so whatever they say, you should follow as a follower of this quote unquote de deity, but it's a se they're self-made in essence in these regards. There's nothing spiritual about any of this. There's nothing that is sacred about any of this stuff. There, there's nothing that is uh, life uh, uh, affirming about any of, of this stuff. It all pays tribute to the individual who is now in charge. And in this case, now here we have Umar talking like, but I told people about this anyway a long time ago. It's, it's dangerous. This is where you get into the cult aspect of all of this. See, high demand religions function this way. And see, Umar is also high demand. That's why he's always demanding things. I need you to do this. I want you to do this. If you're a trucker, I need you to do this. If you're a woman, I need you to do this. I need, I need, I need, I need. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. You do that. Well, that's no different. It is if it's a high demand religion. That's called a cult. Black Jesus of black consciousness. I said I'm the black Jesus of black consciousness. If there's anyone more worthy of the title than me in this day and age, call his name. I said I'm the black Jesus of black consciousness. And I'm it's amazing. Eight months later, and it's the same thing. I'm born on the same day as the original Jesus, August the 21st, brothers and sisters. The prophet. So now Jesus is born on my birthday, but you see that ties him and makes him feel as if he connected to Jesus because he's he's some sort of a Christ figure. See the see the delusion here too. The prophecy is coming to fulfillment. The prophecy is coming to fulfillment. The prophecy is coming to fulfillment, brothers and sisters. Where my Cameroonian Africans at in West Africa? Where my Cameroonian Africans at? Cameroon, Africa. I'ma see you September the 21st through the 25th. Cameroonian Africans, West Africa, I'm coming. And when I get to Cameroon, we got to go to Burkina Faso. When I get to Cameroon, we got to go to What's Guinea. Up, when I get to Cameroon, we got to go to Niger. When I get to Cameroon, we got to go to Mali and check in on the revolution. We got to check in on the revolution. We got to check yeah, in on right. the revolution when I get to Cameroon, September the 21st to the 25th. <laughs> Where my peace and love? Where my Ghanaian Africans at? Where my Ghan I wish I could find that video where he said Jesus was born on his birthday. Ghanaian Africans at. I will be I in in I'm University of Ghana, Accra, Thursday. What's the date? November the 4th? That first Thursday in November. I will be at the University of Ghana in Accra. No, I don't have University that. of Ghana in Accra. University of Ghana in Accra, first Thursday in November, and then I go up to the Volta region. There's two festivals in the Volta region. On yeah, the first Saturday and first Sunday in November, I will be in the Volta region of Ghana. Where my Ghanaian Africans at? Where my Ghanaian Africans at? Where my Ghanaian Africans at? King Kong is coming. Few more points and I'm gonna let y'all go. Few more points and I'm gonna let y'all go. Yeah, Any brothers and down. sisters out there, master painters, I need you to be the captain 
of painting a classroom. I want to assign you to a classroom as a captain. If you are a master painter, I want to little rock Africans. This is so juvenile. Good company for us to create a school furniture registry. So brother donors in the Caribbean and we got a lot of donors in the U.S. Virgin Islands and I'm going to see you all at the agricultural okay. fairgrounds in St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands, Saturday, August the 26th. And I'm coming with the good news. I'm coming. I'm sorry, my wife, she, she lived in St. Croix for a while. Black Jesus. I'm the black Jesus of black con. We got to go to Guinea. When I get to Cameroon, we got to go to Niger. When I get to Cameroon, we got to go to Mali and check in on the revolution. We got to check in on the revolution. We got to check in on the revolution yeah, when I, I get to Cameroon yeah. September the 21st to right the 25th. They already painted that. My, peace and love. Where my Ghanaian Africans at? Where my Ghanaian yeah, Africans at? I will be in University of Ghana, Accra, Thursday. What's the date? November the 4th? That first Thursday in November, I will be at the University of Ghana in Accra. University of Ghana in Accra. Thank University you. of Ghana in Accra, first Thursday in November, and then I go up to the Volta region. There's two festivals in the Volta region. On the first Saturday and first Sunday in November, I will be in the Volta region of Ghana where my Ghanaian Africans at. Where my Ghanaian Africans at? Where my Ghanaian Africans at? King Kong is coming. Few more points and I'm going to let y'all go. Few more points and I'm going to let y'all go. Any brothers and sisters out there, master painters, I need you to be the captain of painting a classroom. I want to assign you to a classroom as a captain if you are a master painter. I want to assign you to the classroom if you are a master painter to make sure the painting is done right. We don't want sloppy painting. We don't want to cause problems. I need somebody in each classroom who can show other people how to paint. I need somebody in each classroom for paint day to show people how to paint. I need somebody in every classroom for paint day to show people how to paint. Oh, yes. And then I need a few brothers to come out a few days early so we can tape everything up. We got to tape up the doors, tape up the windows, tape up the electrical outlets, tape up the baseboards, tape up the furniture. I don't want paint nowhere it's not supposed to be. So if you are a brother in Philly, New Jersey, Delaware, Northern Maryland, you say, Dr. Umar, let me come on up a few days before paint day, brother. We're going to lay down the drop on all the floors yeah. so none of the floors get no paint. We're going to tape up the outlets. We're going to tape up the windows. We're going to tape up the baseboards. I need some tape brothers, some tape brothers and some tape sisters <laughs> to come and tape everything up. He said tape brothers and tapes is wow. Before we paint, it's about service with me. Yes, I'm the greatest orator of my race in go. this day, but it's about the service. Yes, I'm a better speaker than every other person you know in the black conscious community, but it's not about that. It's about service to the people. I serve the people. I live for the people. I will die for the people. I will honor the people. Yes, I'm the greatest orator of my time, but this ain't about public speaking right now. This is about building the institutions. Okay, someone sent me a cash app, and thank you, uh, X. It says uh, that uh, they failed the HVAC inspection. Okay, we we don't we'll get more deeper into this tomorrow. Maybe that's in a more recent video, but we'll we'll get to it um, tomorrow. But I'm going to talk my talk in Harlem on Thursday, and I'm going to talk my talk in Rochester on Friday, and I'm going to talk my talk in Atlanta on Saturday, and I'm going to talk my talk in Petersburg, Virginia on Sunday, and I'm going to talk my talk at Nat Turner Lane on Monday, August the 21st, and I'm going to talk my talk in Tulsa, Oklahoma on September the 11th, and I'm going to talk my talk in Nashville, Tennessee on September the 15th, brothers and sisters, last thing. Last thing, and I'm gonna let y'all go. We're almost if done. you want to reach me, 215 989 Vicky Dillard is not allowed at the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. That uh -oh, woman is a happened? hater. I don't even know why you mentioned her. I'm gonna block you for that. Don't put haters on me. We celebrate. What happened? Did I miss something? What anyone know? Did something happen with Vicky Dillard? I haven't watched many of her videos, but I know that she had she was selling prayer cloth or something like that and i said no uh -uh, i'm good and let me know in the chat room did something happen between her him and vicky dillard 
hating right now. Let me block this person. Block. Goodbye, sister. Oh, Vicky Diller called Goodbye, him out sister. We celebrating right now. Okay. Don't mention no haters while I'm celebrating. Don't mention no haters while we celebrating right now. He don't, don't, don't mention no haters while we celebrate. Don't do Dominique, is this a recent video? Or is it something from the past? Because you know how he'd be mad at people for like years. <laughs> he, he was he, he was mad at uh, Tyreek for a long time. Do that, but that's that negativity. I understand. The coon in you couldn't help it. I understand, sister. Don't worry. We're going to baptize you back into blackness. We're going to baptize you back into blackness. Don't you even religious, worry about it, my sister. Before you know it, I'm going to have that weave off your head, and I'm going to have some common sense in your head. I said before. Whoa, wow. Dang. This guy, boy, he writes, Ragonito. He is so sens he's sensitive. He's not sensitive. He's sensitive. Vicky called him Wally Wall. <laughs> Dominique, can you send me the video if you know it? Just send it to me. Send me a link, man. We'll, we'll I'll, I'll pull it up. I don't know. <laughs> he called him Wally Wall. <laughs> Are you serious? I done missed everything. I, I want. I, I want to see it now. It sure did. It triggered him. He don't like her. <laughs> he got. He got mad real quick. <laughs> she probably disagreed with him on something, <laughs> which is unforgivable. Yeah, yeah, that's something happened. <laughs> yeah, he went off on Seti. That was the ultimate right there. I was like, wow. She asked the question. Okay. <laughs> Did she call him really call him <laughs> Wally Walnut? Okay, let me get that. Before you know it, I'm going to have that weave off your head and some common sense in your head. I said in the name of my African ancestors from here, back there, and everywhere, before you know it, I'm going to have that weave off your head and some common sense in your head. Don't you name no haters while I'm celebrating. That woman ain't built no institutions for the people. She ain't built a single institution for the community. I don't know why you throwing her name up. I don't know why you throwing her name up while we celebrating wow. FDMG. Don't bring me no damn haters right now. Damn, he really made uh, Thanks, Dominique. Dominique sent me the video. So um, maybe not tomorrow because I want to stay on track. Well, it depends. If the video is short, then maybe we can watch a little bit of it. But tomorrow, I, I, we got to get pushed through this. We got a lot of catching up to do. Thank you all so much for being patient. It's been four hours and 20 minutes, but it's the quickest four hours and 20 minutes I can think of. Um, we got about maybe three minutes on this particular video Then I'm going to play the outro, which is the uh, Tupac thing, and then we'll be done uh, for this evening. But we'll come back tomorrow and do part two. OK, but here's the last thing I want to say. Thanks, Dominique. Here's the last thing I want to say. Here's the last thing. While we are painting on paint day, cleaning up on cleanup day and bringing the furniture in on furniture day right here in the Harriet Tubman Ida B. Wells Park. Right here inside the Harriet Tubman Ida B. Wells Park, I want to have a community cookout. Is there anybody willing to come or free and man one of the grills for the community cookout? Is there any brothers or sisters who are willing to come and man the grill at the? Did he do a block real quick? Did he do a block party this year? Is he planning on it? I know it's, it's later on in the year now. Community cookout. This is not a block party. This is not the FDMG festival, but we want to have a community oh, okay. cookout while oh, we are cool. painting on paint day. We're going to have a community cookout while we're cleaning up on cleanup day. And we're going to have a community cookout while we bring in the furniture in on furniture day. I want about four or five grills out here, some chicken, some wings, some ribs. And then I'm going to ask the sisters to bring some vegetarian dishes and some vegan dishes. And we're going to he's just he's just making this up put some chairs out here I, I need a dj who got the portable music i need a dj dj envy will do it who who got the portable speakers who got the portable speakers brothers and sisters we need some music out here we gonna fellowship with one another and build unity and network and socialize okay, inside of the off. harriet tubman <laughs> Ida B. No, Wells no Park party right here, brothers and sisters, <laughs> on your campus it is a of FDMG. <laughs> Who got the portable speakers? We need a portable DJ. <laughs> speakers and turntables, nothing but conscious music, no gangster rap. Nothing but conscious music, no gangster rap. If you want to DJ the community cookout on cleanup day, please text me. If you want to DJ the community cookout on paint day, please text me. If you want to DJ the community cookout on furniture day, please text me, brothers and sisters. <laughs> oh, yes. If you want to cook on the grill, I need to know that. 
Come on over, beloved. If you want to cook on the grill, I need to know that. If you the DJ, I need to know that. We're going to put some tables out here, some chairs, some music, some food, some spring water, some vegan drinks, and we're going to socialize while we paint the school. Vegan drinks? We're going to socialize while we clean up the school. We're going to socialize while we bring the furniture in the school. I just wanted to go live one time and let y'all know renovations are done we need an hvac inspection we need a paint day we need a cleanup day a certificate of occupancy we need some floors tiled we need some floor with some carpet if you know how to lay tile and carpet let me know and then we got to furnish the school and decorate and it's time for the grand opening oh we hear that where them haters at i can't hear them where the haters at i can't hey umar, umar don't do that bro don't do that I've given you all the attention that you going to ever need. Don't do it, bro. See, one of the reasons why I went at you for so long and, and listen, blew, I blew up the spot. Okay. And I don't mean to be arrogant, but the re one of the reasons why is because of you running your mouth like this. So don't, don't do that. Okay. I'm not a hater. I'm just a man who feels like, and I know that you're doing the wrong thing and I want you to stop and I want you to get your life together. It doesn't matter. It's not about how low we fall because I've been there myself. It's about how we pick up the pieces and start moving in a more positive direction. And you can do it. You're, you're a grown man. There ain't no excuses, bro. There's no excuses. So don't get up here and do that, man. Don't, don't do it. Okay. Look at him. Where the haters at? I don't hear them. Where, 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 where them people who was running their mouth for four years, brothers and sisters? With it. All right, you done did it. Jay, I told you, you done did it. Okay. Okay. Told you not to do it. Okay. Where the haters at? Where, where they go? Where the haters go, brothers and sisters? Seriously, where they at? Where are the haters? Where are the YouTubians? Where are the conscious people who was taking jabs? Where they at? Where they at? And we're going to donate. You see, I, 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 out of grace, and it was, it was grace. I said, let me just let this guy. You see, it's easy to go to your head and then, now, okay. All right. One of the rooms inside of the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy is going to be a Pan-African Museum. We're opening. This guy don't stop. There's going to be a Pan-African museum. This is going to be the Pan-African hidden history museum. He already going to have the black vegan sports bar up on the second floor. And they're going to have the chili cheese fries. The, it's going to have uh, the, 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 the transatlantic tater tots as well as a Mahoma X chocolate cheesecake as well as the Mahalia Jackson chicken dumplings and as well as the Martin Luther King Kingfish with RGB sauce, family. Now we're going to have us a black conscious vegan museum. <laughs> this guy don't stop. I can't believe it. It's the same. It just don't stop. We got to stop. Well, I stop, but you keep going. We, it's, the thing is, if I stop, you stop. If you stop, I stop. Okay. You go make me take these shots about the YouTube and the four. You talk about me. You talk about. Because I, because I, I, I grace, because I was asking God for grace. God bless us. But then, then you know, I, I said, okay, I'll stop doing it. But I'm gonna give him some grace too. But now here we are, and then you running your mouth, and now look at you. Okay, I'm, here we go. Good question. This, this is not a reunion. This is we back. 
Okay. Now I ain't gonna be up on here today for three, four hours. Wait a minute. It's already four and a half hours. I'm not gonna be on here for five hours tonight. Okay. And I'm not gonna be up on here every day. And that's not because I'm gonna get into other some other stuff too. We got the we got the the, the pina thing, the senor pina, as well as the DJ Envy. We got the, the Jay Morrison, and we we got uh uh what's the other guy? Uh Polite, we still gotta get caught up on all of that stuff, and there's plenty of stuff to get into that. But Umar, you can expect more videos. Uh, of me, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have more grace when I do these videos, and I'm not gonna get into you know uh, uh, y your personal stuff. I'm not gonna do that. We're gonna stick to just the school, and that will be my act of grace, and that allow me to justify doing videos on you. But see, the thing is that if if you would either stop doing what you're doing, I would stop, uh, and I know I have stopped for like eight months. But the other thing is, if you didn't talk that talk and get to running your mouth, see the reason why you you would say something like that is because you figured, okay, Lennon ain't doing videos on me, so I can run my mouth. But it's only through the grace of God that I decided, hey, you know what? I need the grace of God, so I need to give this guy some grace. But instead of being humble enough to accept that and say, OK, well, then he's given me some grace or at least at the very least, he's decided to let me do my thing. And and, and OK, and just be appreciative of that. And just keep you can still do keep doing what you're doing. No, but you got to do all of this stuff. But see, that's the arrogance and the running of your mouth. And there's still no school. And I highly doubt that the renovations are done. And based upon what you're saying, evidently, the renovations aren't done. But you can expect more videos. But this time around, I'm going. I'm gonna still. I'm gonna still give you some grace, okay? I ain't gonna be clowning you and talking. You know, I'm not gonna do all that. We're gonna try to uh, be nice, except for the quick cuss chat, because you know, <laughs> all right. there's probably about a minute left on this video. Then we'll be done for tonight. Being a Pan African museum inside of the school. Oh yes. This guy uh, is going to be, we're at in the school, Pan-African Museum. I already told y'all what he should have did was just put his uh, school inside of, of uh, Tyreek's museum. That's what he should have did. He could have asked him. Tyreek will let him do it. Tyreek is nice about them things. <laughs> I'm like, okay, come on, Omar. You can go ahead and put your non-functioning school inside the museum. Yeah. Oh, yes. There will be a Pan-African <laughs> Museum know, inside of the Marcus Garvey Elementary. Oh, yes. There will be a Pan-African Museum inside of the Marcus Garvey Elementary. Wow, I'm taking over the whole damn movement. I'm taking over the whole damn movement. This is why I'm is taking crazy. over the whole damn movement. He, this is him taking a shot of Tariq Nasheed. Just leave Tariq alone. Goodness. I mean, again, I'm, Tariq's content is not my cup of tea. It never has been. But at the very least, I can say that that in general, overwhelmingly, Tariq delivers on what he promised. Again, we talked about this earlier. If someone takes money and doesn't deliver on what they promise, that that's a problem. Yeah, that is a problem. But if someone uh, takes money and delivers on their on their promise, okay, it is what it is. People don't like uh, Tariq's. Uh, there's people don't like his business model, and I get that too, because they would say, "Oh, well, well, he made money all this money off of off of the documentary. Why should should he fund uh, fund the documentary, the next documentary?" Yeah, I, I mean, if I was in that position, I would do that. But that doesn't mean that he he has to. And just because he doesn't doesn't that doesn't mean that that it's un, it's unethical per se. That's just his business model. I don't necessarily agree with the business model either. Okay, the difference is that with Umar, he'll he'll collect money. He's collected millions of dollars, and there's still no school, and he still continues to collect money uh, money. And then he, he's making up all this stuff. But be, now there's going to be a museum inside school. We're at inside this school. There, first of all, where's the school? We're looking at September. For paint day is going to come quickly. Please text me your color schemes. Please text me. Okay, that paint day never happened. Your color schemes for the 15 rooms. Please text me your color schemes. Teachers lounge, girls bathroom, <laughs> boys bathroom, computer room, main office, Dr. Umar office, hallways, and regular classrooms. How should we paint them up? Give me your breakdown. How should we decorate? Give me your breakdown, brothers and sisters. You know how to reach me. Harlem, New York, Thursday, Garvey Day. You know how we do. It's RBG, Garveyite Grenade, Gangbangers, Unapologetically African Alpha. What did he do? What?
I don't heard it all. Boy, in this one video, I don't heard it all. I, I have no word. <laughs> I, I, I just keep saying to myself that I didn't hear what he just said all throughout this video. I said, did he really just say that? I, I, what? Hold on. There's like literally one minute left. On this. Give me your breakdown, brothers and sisters. You know how to reach me. Harlem, New York, Thursday, Garvey Day. You know how we do. It's RBG, Garveyite Grenade, Gangbangers, Unapologetically African Alpha Males, 215-989-9858 215-989-9858 and last but not least thank you to my donors thank you to my donors from around the african world thank you to my african family from around the world because without you there would be no school i didn't do this you did this Thank you for hanging in there with me. There's still no Thank school. you for hanging in there with me, even when they were slandering me, hating, <laughs> sabotaging, undermining. Y'all hung in there, and the victory is yours. Black August 23 and 23, Harlem, Rochester, Atlanta, Petersburg, Nat Turner Land, Nashville, Tulsa, St. Croix, King Kong is coming. Cameroon, Ghana, King Kong is coming. Peace and Pan-Africanism. Okay, final thoughts real quick. Okay, we'll be done in a minute, literally a minute. Uh, he showed no proof of the renovations being done. We're going to get into more videos, more recent videos of Umar dealing with specifically with the school. There's another video that he did more recently. Uh, and, I, and we'll see if he goes into the school, what we'll do, and he shows it, what we'll do is we'll go back and we'll go look at older footage and we'll, we'll compare comparative analysis. Okay, that's what we'll do. Uh, for tomorrow. That'll be part two to this series. I may name it something totally different, but just know that this is all this all being sequenced. We still also have, we need to get to the plain video and then also want to delve a little bit into the whole thing uh, with uh, whatever the lady's name. I keep forgetting her name. Uh, I don't watch her videos. So I can't even think of her name right now, but obviously there's something that was her name right here. Uh, uh, Fly new being queen lady. Uh, Vicky Dillard. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that too, but that may not be until like maybe maybe uh, Wednesday, but I plan on live streaming t uh, tomorrow and on Wednesday. I want to thank everyone for tuning on in. Thanks everyone who decided to click crush that. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I really do. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I, I, and I'm going to tell y'all, I need y'all too. I, I really do. That's something my wife and I, we talked about is, is uh, it's not just what I, I bring to the table in terms of these uh, live streams. It's also what you guys bring to my life too. And uh, some of you guys, you've been with me, uh, in some very difficult and rough times. And I, I want to thank you guys for that. Uh, I want to thank you all for all your support. Uh, we have been blessed and um, God willing, we'll continue to be blessed and, and we're grateful and thankful. And I'm thankful for you all. And I'm thankful for the opportunity to, to get back with you all here after about eight months. Um, thank you guys so much. Okay. I also want to thank everyone who sent in uh, super chats uh, during the live stream. It does help. I appreciate it. You guys, I, I, I say that all the time. I always take the time to thank people. It's the right thing to do. I don't take anything for granted. Uh, I appreciate your blessings. I also want to thank people who sent in PayPal and also uh, Cash Apps. I appreciate that as well. If you guys don't mind, if you if you haven't, hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe because I'm thinking about changing the format to where comments are only allowed for people who subscribe. I'm not going to do that right away, but I want to let people know in advance so that you are subscribed so that when you have these live streams, um, you will be able to, to, to comment because that's a very important part of um, the cookie crush chat. It always has been. And I thank you guys so much. Love y'all. Um, and so what I'm going to do now to close out, we'll be back tomorrow is I'm going to play because people requested someone send the super chat for us. So I got to do it and we'll play this and then we'll play out the outro and then we'll be done for this evening. I hope y'all enjoyed the show. Okay. It's West Side, so you know that I'm bad out the no man. So the man, put it up on me from Dre. Let me see the roof of the lane. I'm open the West Side. The back down. Show me love. Inside the body. 
All right. Thank you all again for tuning on in. Make sure y'all hit that like button as you exit the building. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Love y'all. And we'll be back tomorrow night. Or tomorrow evening. All right. FDMG is coming. FDMG is coming. FDMG is coming. It's coming. FDMG is coming. It's coming, FDMG, it's coming, 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 it's coming. MG is coming, thought it's personality be twerking, it's twerking. Mm. All right, thank you all again. I appreciate it. Uh, please enjoy uh, the rest of your evening and have a good night rest. And we'll be back tomorrow. Okay, love y'all and take care. All right, peace.